Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon. Everywhere in every time zone, we are here for the one-year anniversary edition of Toast to Toast AM with my co-host of Toast to Toast. It is my good friend Dave. Happy anniversary, Paul. Happy anniversary, Dave. The co-host with the most on the Toast to Toast from coast to coast. From coast to coast. Who would have yes. thought when we started the show that we would get a year in and uh, and and still be interested. And still not be sick of the sight of each other. Well, yeah, actually, and, and frankly, the, the, the topic, the subject matter is still interesting and riveting. Yeah, it's you. It's yes. whether we could stand each other. Yeah. I mean, we all know Art Bell's great. This is going to be great. That's, that's exactly. Yeah. This is going to be great. We have a very special, listen, we shouldn't do too much preamble because we have Mel's Hole Part 4. Mel's Hole is the Fast and Furious of yes. the Art Bell sagas, the multi-part sagas. The each Just keeps each getting increasingly banana one. pants. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very excited for this one because... Well, we'll get into it in a bit. Um, but first of all, well, should we start? Should we start start with a toast? We should start with a toast. Let's to I mean, one year. To one year. Thank you for everyone who has joined us. I got my tequila today. What Ooh. do you have? I am drinking an old fashioned with old granddad bourbon. All right. Well, cheers to toast to toast and everyone watching. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, I'm not just drinking that because it's three uh, ounces of good bourbon. No, that's I, gross. I, You're gross. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it's my tequila shot, and I'm. <laughs> that's my Hornitos Black. Love it. Um, you should have done the whole the salt and the the lime, like the salt the whole, and the lime things. Well, here's yeah. the thing, Dave. Yeah, we are currently. Let me see if this is actually working. Yes, Paul. So, tell me before you you go down to it. How are your hatches? <laughs> They're battened. They are batting good. Good. I'm glad. That's what you got to do. Exactly. So uh, what we got here, let's see what we can get. So we got here the, the Hurricane Lee. Yes. Uh, Hurricane Lee is currently sitting right here. So it was supposed to be much closer. So yeah. in a few hours, it's going to be just just here. I right. live up, uh, up here-ish. Right. So it's going to... It looks like right now it's actually the heart of it is going to pass by, but as you can see, look how you can see how. Well, let me get this. How big this thing is? Uh, mm. It's bigger than my whole province. Yeah. So that we're not not getting it. To be fair, you live in a tiny province. It's yes. I mean, it's no, no but, PEI, but it's but, it's still. But, it's, but it's, this little hope that hey, look, it's gone further east yeah, and might somehow, might swing around. Gonna swing and just miss you. Yeah. No. So anyway, I'm expecting. Nova Scotia's power grid is made of uh, MacGyver-esque materials. It's chewing gum and mm -hmm. chicken wire and things of that sort. And so our power grid goes out if anyone... For example, this is not a joke. Uh, someone, a town over, just had a minor car accident and hit one of the poles. And like four That's towns it. were down for a couple of days. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, anyway, if the show goes off the air, uh, this it is related to this. But I don't think it's going to happen tonight. I think we're gonna it's going to avoid us, and that will be a tomorrow problem for me. That's a problem. That's a problem for tomorrow, Paul. It's a problem for tomorrow, Paul. And, and that uh, son of a bitch never bought me a drink. So who cares exactly. what happens to him? So we got some we got some super chats already. We do already now have here's, some here's the thing. I think I think I put my one year anniversary thing. Well, so far so good. Thank you, skeptics and scoundrels. <coughs> oh. A toast, a toast, a toast, and a toast to you for toasting toast to toast. Toast to you, skeptics and scoundrels. Long time friend of the show. Mm -hmm. I noticed that uh, my uh, my good friend Evolution, who I've never met, but I know him <laughs> through mutual people, commented earlier, and Brain Cramp had a very good line there. I wonder if anyone has ever attempted to batten up their hatches. Ooh. 
so here's a thing I'm going to try and fix while while we're uh, I'm going to need my glasses. Yeah, that's it. He's getting his nerd. The his one nerd year, like we got on. the one year party thing, Dave, and it's over mm -hmm. top of. I don't. you guys should be making more videos. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I mean, there are a couple of things I've been thinking of that would be, and this might be fun to do. So I'm not saying it's not impossible. It's not okay, impossible. Panel to frame. I don't well, know. Uh... I know you're often lamenting about how bored you are and how little you have to do. Correct. It's, it's, it's how to fill the, how to fill the time is my, yeah. Big and you're like, Hey, a, a no longer monetized YouTube channel. That's what <laughs> I want to start sinking <laughs> time and effort into. Mm. you know every you got to start somewhere right yep um yeah i'm hoping that your voice was still going i realized i put i, I put it on a scene where maybe your voice was not caught so if oh, anyone missed well, it somebody, the people are saying the did they uh okay so maybe nobody heard any of that anyway <laughs> <laughs> hey well if we get it out of the way now yep right Every trivia night, something gets completely cocked up. That's so true. If we can get it out of the way in the first eight minutes of the show, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. So in the chat, did you guys hear Kyle's uh, super chat? Uh, I'm going uh, to read it again just in case people... Read it again. That. Just happy one year. I never catch live and I've already got to go put the kids to bed. Love you guys. I speak for everyone when I say bring back panel to frame. And uh, yeah. That's uh, they missed our conversation about bringing back panel to frame, right. which we're probably which not going to repeat. But that's nope. fine. Okay. Oh, this beer is really very good, Paul. I like it. Um, Shannon's making fun of where I was yeah. pointing. I actually don't have my glasses on, and I was just Dave said a swear, and that's then YouTube shut me down. Mm. Yeah. Shannon, if I was pointing at the wrong place, you know, I, I don't have my glasses on and I was pointing roughly around clouds. So, you know, good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. Okay. Um, Ooh. Oh, man. Jay Victor. Frick, I wish I'd thought of that. Shit. <laughs> I'm legitimately <laughs> angry now. <laughs> Not that's. Brought... This toast to Toast is brought to you by Toasters. Why have we never been sponsored by Toasters? That's such a perfect idea. We need to reach out to the good people at Toast. Yeah. Now if I do it, Jay Victor's going to sue us. Mm. Yeah. No, no, you but know? you still have to make the deal with the people at Toast. I guess that's true. Yeah. Toast that's just toast. A, this is he may be he might be more in a finder's fee situation where it's like, oh yeah, good good job on. And uh, the Ronin for two dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you, and frankly, thank, thank you, you everyone for all yes. the super chats that have really kept the lights on here at Toast to Toast Studios. We appreciate yes. you. However, uh, the the super chats alone, as generous as everyone is, and I hope you know, I hope that continues into the evening. Super chats alone don't keep the lights on, Dave. No, they do not. But we do have a sponsor, as always, lined up for the show tonight, Paul. Okay, uh, well, uh, let's someone let's, new. Let's get to the sponsor. Fantastic. Paul, I know I say this every show, but I really am tremendously excited about the sponsor we have lined up this week. Uh, as Toast to Toast enjoys a year of success after success, dancing from mountaintop to mountaintop as we climb to ever greater heights, I've started to take my role as the VP of Corporate Relations a little more seriously. Uh, it started as a joke, but I've come to realize, no, this is a real thing I've got to put some effort into. And... Uh, According to that, Paul, I have watched no fewer than three videos on YouTube about advertising and why companies sponsor shows. Paul, did you know that companies sponsor shows like ours so that they can hopefully generate new customers and sell them things maybe? Uh, and seems, I got to say, Paul. That seems shady. Well, I mean, that's business. That's capitalism, mm -hmm. baby. Okay. Uh, and I got to say, this was a complete paradigm shift for me. I realized that we had one of the most valuable assets in marketing that you can have, Paul. 
a defined demographic. Armed with this knowledge, I was able to go on the hunt for sponsors that would pay top dollar to reach out to the particular Polygia audience. And okay. I found them. And I'm talking about serious cheddar here, Paul. We're we're making some real bank on this. <laughs> wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. Finally, no mistake. It took a year, but okay. Yeah. So much money. Uh, it, it turns out today's sponsor feels that our audience is the perfect customer for their product. Um, so enough of me rambling, Paul. Let me get it out of my own way and take a moment to tell you about the wonderful sponsor of tonight's show, Organized Religion. Paul, it's hard for me to overstate the ways that organized religion can impact your life. For pretty much all of human history, recorded or otherwise, they have been there, ready to help. Where does the sun go during the night? Why? He's battling the dread serpent Apophis in the underworld to keep us all safe. Why are the clouds so high above us, Paul? Because Pangu is holding them apart with his hands and feet after yin and yang separated from the egg of chaos that he hatched himself from. Who guards the gate to the outer dark? None other than Shub Niggeroth, the black goat of the woods with a thousand young. Why are my gosh darn Thetan levels so high? Well, Paul, it's because that scamp Xenu went and threw a bunch of aliens into our volcanoes during dinosaur times. There is no question you can ask that organized religion doesn't have an answer for. Sometimes that answer is because magic. And everyone loves magic. What fun. <laughs> now, Paul, everyone has their little things they believe in. It's human nature to believe. Some put their faith in fellow humans. Some believe in a particular political leader or economic system. Some of us have a real thing for cat girls and plaid skirts. I'm not here to tell you what to believe. Myself and Paul are both just here trying to lower the amount of randomness in your life. As someone who famously hates clutter in all its forms, I'm sure Paul would agree with me. If you're going to have beliefs, they might as well be organized. <laughs> so Paul, if you're a heathen, an apostate, or a defiled one, then don't wait another day. Find the closest church, temple, mosque, or circle of megalithic stones today and get started with organized religion. And that's not all. Viewers of this channel can use promo code toast to toast that's T-O-S-T, -T, the number two, T-O-S-T, -T, when giving a significant percentage of their income to an organized religion to get a debilitating guilt complex at absolutely no extra cost. So why wait? The good people at organized religion are ready to tell you how to live your life today and every day until the end of days. Organized religion. So much money, Paul. <laughs> it made so much money. Did. Mm -hmm. did... This... So did you get. Wow. Uh, did they. Did they look at the channel at all before they agreed to the. Yeah. I mean, I don't really, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't watch your main channel, but they were, uh, they seemed very interested and thought that this is the perfect avenue to reach. They said an entirely, uh, you know, demographic that they really want to reach out to. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say now, except no, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, it's pride. Mm. It's pride catching you in your throat mm. and how good a job I'm doing, isn't it? <laughs> I can tell. You've outdone yourself. Thank you. Um, mm. Mel's hole, huh? Mel's hole. <laughs> so... I, 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 uh, well, uh, uh, do not go to tonight's sponsor. I don't know what, to, I don't, wow, I, 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 mm. okay, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. um, clip that and make a short out of it, Paul, I dare ya. <laughs> so, money is good, I guess. Yeah, see, mm. there you go. Money is good. Okay. We got some talk about a Christmas special coming up. I think you're well, going to be really excited right. about it. So we got some of these things out of the way. Um, tonight, well, we got some super chats. We could, that's we something some, you can let's, do to, let's, while you get your head together. Yeah. So uh, what do we got here? We got which ones? Uh, how far back we got to go? 
So. How far back do we? Is this the? Did we do. One? We did the J Victor. We did the is Ronin. We did Scuzzbopper. And then, oh my goodness, uh, Quasi Meow 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 Meow. Mm, I feel like that's bad. Mm. Who's been a member for one month, Paul? I see. And uh, they say, OMG, best sponsor ever. Agreed. I will say, so mm -hmm. a lot of people who visit my channel have used that product. They're mm -hmm. familiar with the product. This isn't like an introduction. Yeah. Mm, to the product. A lot of my, a lot of my audience um, has stopped using that product for one reason or another. Well, then I can understand why, you know. They'd be interested mm. to try and reach out to this customer base and try. So get... uh, there might be a bit of an uphill climb, but oh, but yeah, but uh... like when I got you know went from a um, you know an LG dishwasher mm. right to like um, what's another dishwasher? I have I'm uh, blowing my dome because I can't think. Of it. <laughs> yeah, right, mm. and they're like there's like you get the survey on you know your thing. Oh hey, why have you uh, changed brands or like an exit interview? That kind of idea. I see. Well, I feel like. Man, if if uh, if our sponsor wanted to actually survey some people and get some feedback, yeah, I don't think they're so interested in that. Mm, I see. They had lots though. Mm. <laughs> uh, Jay Victor is super chat at five dollars, five R dollars. Ruby and says organized religion. We answer all of life's difficult questions. Accuracy not guaranteed. Well, so. although we have a similar policy here at Toast Toast. <laughs> <laughs> Accuracy is no longer not guaranteed here either. I just make shit up all the time. Mm. I'm pretty upfront about it, I think. Uh, tithe, tithe to organized religion? Thank, yes, thank $2 you, Ember, from Ember. The, thank you, Ember. Uh, we appreciate your tithe coming this direction. That That's uh, awesome. If we can become an organized religion, Paul, I mean, mm. the tax uh, that's true. pretty uh, that, uh, it's that considerably famous... harder in Canada than it is in the United mm. States, though. It is actually very difficult to be... <laughs> recognized as a religion in Canada. That's why Scientology is not a uh, uh, recognized religion up here. Uh, Knee. Right? Took a break from the shrubbery. Compromise Come. slash Team Ottoman. Put your feet up and relax. Hashtag Team Ottoman, Paul, not slash. Mm. Come on. That's true. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still thrown by the, the uh, amazing magnitude sponsor. of the sponsor. Paulo thinks uh, is super chatted ten dollars just to just to smile, send an just emoji. to brighten the world we a little appreciate. bit. Isn't that the best? Uh, we have skeptics and scoundrels. Mm. <laughs> oh. I hope it's not. I hope you don't need that money back to uh, to that it that it goes back to the organized religion. We yeah, we for your money, stay here. No refunds. Web. Writes organized religion, I shall buy it thrice. There you mm. go. That's what we want to hear. There you go. This is exactly the kind of feedback that's really going to help mm. us in our contract negotiations. <laughs> uh, and oh, boss super chat is knee. Uh, you like segs and money? Segs and money too? We should hang out. <laughs> I mean, I do like both those things. Mm. Let's. Uh... <laughs> Oh, I'm not a, sure. It's so, it's it's so rare it's a, to find people that are that have that in common. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the that's the wonderful thing about the internet. You get all these special interests. That's groups. right, all those specialized interests. Uh, okay. Michael and, is uh, suggesting your volume might be a little low and a little low. Chat. All right. Yeah. Try that. Bang bang, bang bang I, bang. I, and okay. then some awe five dollars. First time catching the show live after months of trying. Thanks for all the fun. Hope tonight's sponsorship doesn't cause any issues with falsehoods. I don't see how it could. Mm. Well, this show deals with a lot of things that we were coming in thinking they may not be true. So we're at least entertaining the notion that they might not be true. We're not saying see, they're not. See, Paul, I come in thinking everything here is true. But sometimes, mm. sometimes some aspects of the guest stories mm. don't quite add up, you know? Fair enough. Sometimes it's like, wait a minute. How could he answer the door if he was in the parlor just 30 seconds ago? That's right. Doesn't make any sense. Mm. Twin brother scenario. Know what I'm saying? Mm hmm So you'll see up in the corner over yonder that uh, that it's trivia night. Mm-hmm. And so 
we should probably get, because mm-hmm. you have many questions. We have 10 questions tonight. Tonight is Toast to Toast trivia. So the answer to every question is in a previous episode of Toast to Toast. So if you've watched all the episodes, you should be able to know all the answers. I will, as we do a count on timer, explain the game for anybody who is maybe new. We clearly have a few people new here tonight. Um, It is multiple choice trivia. There'll be a question and four answers. All you have to do is type the number of the answer into the chat. If, If the answer is number three, just type a three and nothing else. And Paul's amazing CompuBrain script rhythm that he's written will take those numbers and tabulate it. And at the end of the night, we will have a winner. And the winner will get one of these. We'll get to join the, the Toast Tumblr to Toast Club. Tumblr Club. And we'll talk more about that. Here's the first question. In episodes three and four, we listen to William Henry explain how Jesus used stargates. What Stargate is he referring to? Is it the gate to Zeta Reticuli because Jesus is an alien? The gate in the temple controlled by the Ark of the Covenant? The gate connecting Bethlehem with Jesus' secret citadel on the moon? Or none? He talks for three hours and never mentions a single bloody fucking Stargate. I feel like well, my mm. diction may have given <laughs> a hint to the correct answer. Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, we we'll get uh, just a few more seconds. Get your answers in, and then the and then the tabulating will begin. Still I'm angry also, about that one. I'm noticing. I'm noticing my one year party thing is going to be blocking some. Anyway, whatever. Ah uh, well, our party decorations are. We amazing. read them out. You know, it's good. We're good. It's good. everything's well, good. No, no, it's, it's, yeah, I think we're. It might just interfere some tabulations, but we're good. Oh, and we got some super. We just got all kinds of stuff going on. We got all kinds. We're we got a bunch of. Oh, but well, I think most of the people managed to get the uh, get the correct answer here. Looks like they did. They did remember. I'm gonna remind somebody to you know pause the game after the question. Yeah, could be anybody. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Oh, yeah, so uh, we'll pause it right now. It's at 32 seconds. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. The questions so do get a little harder as we go on, but. It's so not too Congratulations. Hard. So you're never out. We have 10 questions, so you're not out of it yet? No. No. And as a, so the winner will get a wonderful toast to toast tumbler mug. There's a few winners. I don't know if we have any other winners. I don't think Vishanti's here tonight. She's the, in the club. We've got a few people. Uh, I think people. Uh, Michael Mes- Messeros won last night. Michael's time. in there. Yep. Uh, if you do win, either you can uh, email Paul. Or you can comment on this video or just message him in Twitter and you know say hi one and get your address details to him and he will he'll get you hooked up. Exactly. So um was a lot of stuff up on screen. We got the now we have the trivia timer for the next question. Yeah. We do have so we got a couple I'm, super chats now, or at least oh, one. Man. Okay, well let's get the let's get the super chats because that's important. We got two super chats. Okay, we got. We'll uh, get those we done. Get, uh, so we got one from Knee. We got Knee. We don't have. We don't time have time for a latte. For a la- <laughs> There's always time for a latte, Knee. Just relax, man. And then uh... Artemis brain sample. Remember hey, my offer to perform as your angry side. I'm gonna be honest, I do. Artemis. I actually, I, do you remember it? I don't remember that. Yeah, Artemis. Artemis and I go back uh, not as long as you and I, but but a long as. Most of my YouTube career, yeah, Artemis has been. Uh, oh dear, been around. Okay, Here, we have vicious and sick. Well, best wishes, Vishanti. I hope she sees this sometime. That's terrible to hear. So here's the thing: we got mm-hmm. this this episode. I'm very excited about get actually hearing the content and letting everyone be engaged in the yes. content. Paul and I are both. Very, very excited about this. So yeah. we're going to get it going, but here's the thing. So it was like a two hour sum, like in total, if you looked at the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but a large portion of it was sort of recapping for the audience what had gone before. Yeah. And I thought we didn't need to spend 40 minutes because you and I, 40 minutes is sometimes all we even cover of a show. So we need we needed to, to cut that down. So... The, we have uh, more the, super chats, Paul. We do. We have at least one. Do just yeah. more than one. 
Just one. We got one from J. Victor. That's what we have. Go ahead. The correct answer is five. The 1994 sci-fi action that made James Spader reconsider his career choices. I actually really like that movie. I, have, uh, I like the movie, and um, it's uh, as far as I know, it's the best Kurt Russell movie that's ever been made. That Paul. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, somebody asked. We do have a Big Trouble in Little China theme shirt on here. It is. Mm-hmm. It is probably in the top five Kurt Russell movies ever made, though. <laughs> um, and then. Um, Anyway, we have we we don't want anyone to here to feel left out. Also, we we have done three Mel's Holes episodes ourselves. This is part number four. Yeah. Um, but we don't want anyone here to feel left out. Hmm. So we we don't want you to have to pause this and go watch twelve hours of other stuff to to be caught up. So we have prepared, with the help of um, very smart people. Uh, yeah. So. The previously on, so we got a previously, previously on, on that will oh, catch man, got... everyone up, and everyone will be everyone will be. We'll all start at the same place essentially. So before right. you play this, we want to just do. We got one more super chat from one me. more super chat from me. Appreciate you. And knee. then and then we'll do our uh, your your wonderfully edited. Knee says never gamble with a Sicilian and never give a Canuck your address. That's not true. We're very nice people. Also. Uh, it seems like wherever you're going, kind of, people don't really use addresses. They just kind of know where you live. And up here, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. My address is Dave's house. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I, uh, I, I was at a, at a thing today, and the, the directions I was given for was, hey, do you remember where so-and-so used to live? Well, it's just <laughs> past that. Just past yeah. that. It's not, even, you go. it's not even where they do live. It's just, yeah. Where, so that was, yeah. Anyway. Will be previously uh, or oh. before. Oh, we got one more super chat. I'm gonna try and catch that tomorrow, Kip. I will. Uh, I have some stuff going on later in the afternoon, but I should be able to hopefully check that stream out. That'd be cool. Oh, Denonymous. Is that? Yep, Denonymous. Denonymous. Don't like the scriptural organized religions. Prefer oral sects. Ooh. Very well done. Mm. I like it. What a cunning linguist. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We got to get everyone. <laughs> I didn't. So I missed it. But the, now that you pointed it out, yeah. Well done. I'm well laughing done. at Chad and throwing shade at you. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm guessing I know who gave you the directions about where such and such <laughs> used to live. And you know what? Okay. She's right. You did get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Previously. Here we go. Previously on Previously on Art Bell. Mel Waters first contacted radio host Art Bell in 1997 to discuss a mysterious bottomless hole on his property in central Washington state, which he claimed to have measured at over 80,000 feet deep using fishing line and weights with no deep. sign of a bottom. He described paranormal aspects of the hole, how animals avoided it, a deceased dog being thrown into the hole and resurrected, and a mysterious beam of black light. After Mel's first interview, government agents arrived at his property the next day, claiming that a plane had crashed, blocking him from accessing the hole. They threatened legal action related to drug charges unless Mel backed off. Mel resisted and spoke publicly about the hole. The government then offered to lease Mel's property indefinitely for $250,000, paid monthly, allowing him to relocate to Australia. Better than religion money. Mm. In Australia, Mel lived well, rescued wombats, and researched the various properties of native plants. He received regular payments as promised. In late 1999, Mel returned briefly to the United States to help his nephew move. During this visit, Mel was abducted, beaten, and left unconscious in an alley in San Francisco, losing his back teeth. When Mel regained consciousness 12 days later, he learned he had lost all rights to his former property in a disputed divorce settlement. His ex-wife had made changes to the lease that voided Mel's rights to the land. His bank accounts were emptied, 
his Australian wombat facilities shut down, and his employees paid off. Essentially broke, Mel returned to Washington State and reconnected with Native Americans he had worked with previously during his research into native plants and herbs. We'll now rejoin Mel on the journey through his holes. <laughs> Oh, my fucking God. You guys are weirdos. Weird <laughs> weirdos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. All right. Random narrator, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I, must say, I, must say, I don't know where that last bit came from. I didn't write that part. But um, <laughs> all right. So yeah, now everyone's caught up on on uh, the three the previous also, three episodes. Also, scroll through the chat, Paul. You or Victoria made a funny scripting joke that you'll appreciate. Oh. Now you got to go find it. <laughs> anyway, well, <laughs> I thought that yeah. would tickle your funny bone. It does actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I enjoy that one. Mm -hmm. um, I also like somebody warned me not to dox myself from mm. announcing my address on. <laughs> true. You just right, straight up, yeah. straight up, and now everyone in Saskatchewan knows where <laughs> yeah. I live. Like, oh shit, he's at Dave's house. <laughs> <laughs> um all right so I, unfortunately one one little bit i would just add um mel mm -hmm. of, of mel's hole uh one of my favorite parts about that was apparently he looks enough like willie nelson that when he woke yes. up in the back alley with his teeth yep. on people were trying to give him money to sing uh yep. sing country road or whatever i don't know yeah, willie nelson's uh, song on is. the road again on is the uh again. there yeah. you go yeah uh, anyway, so right now John Denver, Paul, you Philistine. <laughs> John Denver is full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Paul. I'm not gonna let you get political on the street. <laughs> no, that's a line from Dumb and Dumber. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. So now, are we ready? Now we're gonna go part four. We gotta get. We're. I hope everyone's got uh, lots of beverage. They're ready to go. Because we. I'm already long, done too. Long haul. Just... <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Mel's hole, part four. Here we go. Here he is from, uh, you know, I don't know where he is right now, Mel Waters. Mel, welcome to the program. I'm here in the Pacific Northwest. Somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. Um, uh, that'll do. I uh, contacted my nephew, and he uh, managed to get me a, a bus ticket back uh, back north. Brother, talk about going from being a whole baron to absolutely. Yeah, I had nothing. I, nothing. And, and uh, I, I, I kind of, that's kind of where I left, I, where I left everything when, when uh, you know, we, we laughed, last talked. Now, I, I know that you've had contact with the Native American community since you've been back, is that right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. In fact, that we, we we will get into that because that leads to part two of all of this. But yeah, I know, I know. Kind, of, kind of wrap things up. I wanted to to bring up some things because you probably noticed I was pretty. Uh... Um, but technically, it's part four. This is the fourth call that yeah. Mel does. Uh, part two. I guess he what... means part two of his life story. Of his life story, because the, yeah, in part one, two, and three, he had a hole. <laughs> Now he's holes. Now he has no holes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just to get less anyone's wondering uh, what time period this is, this is 2002. Yes. So he had first... And the original was in, 1996, I think, right? I think seven. But in that ballpark, 96 or 97, somewhere in there. Uh, so this is several years later. That this extremely is, attractive narrator probably just said, and I don't remember. Mm, it is... Uh, so this is actually two years since his last call. So right. all that yes. stuff where he got left in an alley. So he, he got left in an alley for dead and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff with no teeth or no back mm -hmm. teeth. Uh, that was two years since hence. So now we're, we're past that. And now he's working with the uh, with Native Americans on something, on a, on a project. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Ticked off that they stole my belt buckle. Oh yeah, I remember that. I, I mean, and, and 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 you know, monks working with uh, with herbs and stuff. I'm kind of a an itinerant jeweler as well, and I make things. And uh, didn't he make a belt buckle of uh, spoons? Yes, I think. Yes, was it spoons and forks that he was? I think it was just spoons. 
Or maybe it's spoons and forks, yeah. It was cutlery of sorts, anyway. I, you know, I went back to Ellensburg, and because I I'd sold a number of these similar belt buckles at the uh, farmer's market and through little consignment jewelry stores in Ellensburg. Right. And so, sure enough, when I'm there, I run into a guy who's wearing one of my belt buckles. Now, and they were made with a silver fork. And I had, and, uh, fork. yeah, you'd know your own work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean they, they were very unique, and this, this was kind of a little folk art thing, and I had, uh, what is the point, though? Well, well, the point is, is that. <laughs> we're going to talk about freaking holes, Mel. <laughs> Why are we talking about belt buckles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I like that. <laughs> why I, I kept on thinking, why would they take my belt buckle? Yeah. That, that was that was the thing. I mean, this this was very personal personal item there that would you know I had a, another belt buckle on my belt. See what I'm saying? Why 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 take a man's belt buckle? Makes no sense. Yeah. So so anyway, I run into this guy and I says, Hey, you bought one of my belt buckles? He says, oh yeah, I love this thing. Anyway, so we take a look at it, and we're looking at it, and basically the motif on there is I had three coins, you know, that I had affixed to it in bezels. Right. There was a coin with Winston Churchill right. on it. There was a coin with Joseph Stalin, and there was a coin dyed with Franklin Roosevelt. Rather distinctive, yes. Well, this this was folk art representing the, the great... You had a Joseph Stalin coin? I mean, it'd be a Russian... Coin. I'm sure there's yeah, many, many, right. many, many coins with uh, very, Joseph very, Stalin's face. I guess on yeah, that probably yeah. wasn't rare. You're yeah, probably right. Yeah. Conference that they had. Gosh. Yeah. So we're looking. We're looking at the coins there, and we're noticing there it is a 1943 Roosevelt dime. Yeah. Franklin Roosevelt was still alive in 1943. Point, in 19- uh, you're sure? Yeah. You're... Absolutely sure. Absolutely sure. It was a 1943 dime. Well, that just makes no sense whatsoever. I right? found a. You know, on my property, you know, I cleared a land. You know, I found that. Uh, uh, Nazi sort of gun there. It was a P38 that I gave to the landlord as a deposit. All right, what superpower did the gun have? Uh, was it that it, you shot it? It didn't make sound. I think it was. Yeah, there was it something. Had, it, it had a there, superpower. Yep. Yeah. Mm, it was definitely an object. As everything on, yeah, it was an object exactly. Everything yeah. in, everything at Mel's hole near me of Mel's hole has a power. I recall. Yes. And we dig up all kinds of things, bits of. What what power do you think the dime has, Dave? Um, I believe that, uh, if you put it by any sandwich you're eating, it becomes the best sandwich you've ever had in your life. That's, that's almost redundant. Whatever the latest sandwich is, is always usually my favorite. Oh, it's, uh, I wish I could say the same. <laughs> I don't want stuff like that. Well, I found when I went one time I was digging around there and just rooting around. I found one of these red Chinese lucky money envelopes. You know the. Kind of I thought he was going to get racist there for a second. I'm glad it. Did. The Chinese give it to each other on yes on uh, New Year's. Yes, yes, yes. And it had ten of these dimes in it. Well, I got ten dimes. You know, I'm making you know these belt buckles. I put one in each one there. So we're examining this dime here with uh, this fellow in Ellensburg, and it struck us at the same time. I mean, when I told you 1943 Roosevelt dime, you thought, okay, okay, well, you know, it couldn't exist. We had a dime that there's no way it could exist. Right. But it looked just like your normal dime. But from Why can it not exist? Is this, is this a law that all coins must ha- can, can't have alive people on the coins? Well, they... I assume, so I'm not American, but I assume that dimes have the current president on them. Is that correct? But, Somebody. But, but oh, he wouldn't have. It is but, trivia time. I know, I see the trivia time, but I want to get and to And there's a super chat. I want to figure out this dime. Suit. Okay, we'll do the super chat. Someone in the chat, let me know. I'm just, I'm just going to Google a 1943 no, but, American dime. So I know American stamps can't, they can't have living people on their stamps. That's a rule. Oh really? Well, di- coins often have living people on well, them. Well, this is why. So, but this is why I'm confused how uh, this how this dime can't exist. Anyway, we should re- knee. Thank you, knee. Continues yeah, at eighty thousand feet deep, twice as deep as the Kola borehole. Kola borehole which is the actual deepest hole in the world, by the I way. See. If you well, the, yeah. if if you are impressed, so we're we are now we, Mel no longer has possession of that hole. So we won't be going into the, the, the phenomena that is the first hole. 
Oh, okay. So the Roosevelt dime mm -hmm. um, was first struck in 1946 and has been stricken continuously since then. So it was after his death. So there. So that's just straight up dime trivia that I'm supposed to know off the top of my head. I don't know. I guess if you're into, you know. But so stuff, it's not but... necessarily a rule that because I thought maybe it was like the stamps where you have to wait till someone dies before they can be on the. Because <laughs> I know well. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? <laughs> All right, the Kenneth. <laughs> Thank you for your contribution. Right? Is Mel setting up an? ARG to hype the flea market. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. And this is, and this was in like 2002. So this, he was ahead of the time. This was, mm. he was ARGs before ARGs were That's even right. called that. You know, That's Mel was a trendsetter. All right. Let's Anyways, come on down. We got cop popcorn for the kids. There's a corn maze. You're going to love our flea <laughs> market. Right. Mm. All right. All right. So let's get back to the uh, let's get back to the trivia. You guys can't see that, but there's I have a Shanti's here throwing out amazing cultural references. This is why I like Shanti's here so much. She gets all the stupid shit I say and I pick up on hers. They've gone plaid. <laughs> My favorite movies. All right. Uh, oh. Where are we, how are we doing here? We got the what five, are we at? Four, three, I can't two, see one. the timer on your thing. Yeah, you can't. There's three, two, one. Here we go. All right. We listened to discredited creationist Carl Baugh mm. appeared on Coast to Coast, typo, to discuss what? How quantum algebra explains away the observable age of the universe, his sightings of living dinosaurs in Papua New Guinea, his hyperbaric chamber that recreated the conditions in the Garden of Eden, or four, all of these, all of the above. Those are all pretty crazy, Dave. Mm hmm. Doesn't seem like, doesn't seem like anyone would say those kind of things. <laughs> we never say any of those. There's also another hint that I gave, if you watch longtime watchers of this channel and my trivia game, we'll pick up on. <laughs> What uh, what is quantum algebra? Do you recall? I don't recall. It was gibberty nonsense. I remember listening, and I'm like, "What the hell is this guy talking about?" I took university level math. I do not understand what he is saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the answer. Here's the, my my tip: is anytime I put all of the above, the answer is yeah, always all. It's of pretty the much done, Dave. <laughs> yeah, it's just, he's excited to say all the words. Yeah, these are. There's too many crazy ass things. I can't. <laughs> I can't choose just one. The truth is better than any lie I could make up. I'm That's just right. gonna, yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna pause the game. As hey, you should, should pause that game, Paul. Yep. What, as that's what good should. games do. And now, if we are, are we? Do you have any super chats we gotta get to before? Uh... Congratulations, Sean. Uh, I don't think we are currently right. behind on right. any. Well, so, nope, we're good. So Last we one was a, the ARDP market. Got More mel. We got dimes that shouldn't exist. We got impossible dimes. 1943. <laughs> Anyway, this guy is really curious. He decides to go see a big-time coin dealer about this coin. And uh, he goes in there, and the, the uh, coin dealer takes a look at it. He just... Those big-time coin dealers, Dave. It's time to get an appointment. Yeah. This, like, mouth is hanging open. This, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm relating the story from my buddy. Okay. He looks at this thing, and he's just flabbergasted. He's just, I am, but what I don't understand is how all this relates. Well, well the... It, it ties into why my belt, belt buckle was taken. Because oh. it had the same coin on there. Oh. But, you know, he took it to a coin dealer, and uh, the coin yeah, dealer was just that amazed. Clear. He had no, I mean, he couldn't even begin to grasp uh, what, what he was holding in front of him. You know, he, 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 he started telling him, I, I don't know, uh, uh, this this could be a prototype. Well, I can't be even in the grasp. This is a coin with a slightly different date than I'm used to. Yeah. What, How, what is even is this? Nobody else on Earth has the technology Not to make nothing. dimes like this, <laughs> except the U.S. Mint. <laughs> what would you even uh, call? We should maybe make a word for some money that isn't real. What is? Would there be a word? <laughs> yeah. Explain. <laughs> Did you ever watch the Antiques Roadshow, Paul, oh, or yeah. like any of those? Well, I my mother 
Uh, yes. Anyway, everybody's mother. Yeah. Yeah, I love. Yep. But it's it's one of those things where it's like legitimately that might be you can get a thing where it's like oh yeah no they accidentally did a run of like three hundred oh, times sure. with the nineteen forty three and then then you'd be like holy shit you have one of the you know yeah. blah blah yeah. blah there's only five of these known to be in existence and you're yeah like there absolutely are those but it's not it's not like but then like. But those are known cases that are like well, those are known cases where you get the no. This is there's this is just you just made your own novelty <laughs> coins. <laughs> right, you made yeah. a dime. Yeah, that has a slightly different date. Yeah, or yeah. Did I but have you seen now? my Captain Kangaroo dime, nineteen sixty two, from a alternate reality where Captain Kangaroo what became I, Kemperor of America? What if I showed you this coin that is good for a subway at Dairy Queen, a, su a Sunday at Dairy Queen? <laughs> <laughs> did the uh, did the American Mint ever make one of these? I did not. <laughs> not in our reality. <laughs> not in our reality. Uh, that would explain but, but something created before Roosevelt would have even died. You know, when they created that dime, they went to you know they, they sped up the uh, process to get a, a Roosevelt dime after he died. But there's nothing that explains it. The guy offered him a huge amount of money, the coin dealer. Here, I'm going to write you a very substantial check. You give me the dime. The guy says, let me think about it, okay? I'll give you my number. You give me a call, and, you know, and I'll let you know what I think. I mean, make a long story short, uh, a day or two later, this guy is visited mm -hmm. by Treasury officials there who said they have to confiscate this coin from him for some legal reason or another, so they took the coin away from this. Should have made the deal the day before. He should have made the deal. <laughs> well, so, well, so no, so <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know what's more ridiculous about this story. This absolutely true story because this is all true, Paul. Of course. The the thought that a coin dealer, like we just discussed, would be like, here's a completely unknown, miscast coin or whatever. Yep. That like, well, I'm just going to offer you a bunch of money for this, even That's though right. I have no reason to think that this is real <laughs> or in any way legitimate. Mm -hmm. This isn't a known flaw. Um, that I presume in this scenario, the because it's pre, you know, Amazon Echo listening to us all the time or OK right. Google. So this coin dealer. I said, now nah, my phone just woke up because yeah, I was say you just woke up. You just, uh, I just everybody's a lot phone of on all our too. listeners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this coin reseller, and I suppose, um, called the Treasury Department and is like, "Hey, do you know anything about 1943 Roosevelt dimes?" No, no, Dave, <laughs> it's not that, not at all. The Treasury no. Department. They got ears everywhere. You don't call. Oh, uh, okay. They just, yeah. They so just, that's you. I know you're. You. That's what I now understand what your allusion was to. But no, no, no. The Treasury Department has long had I'm spies. A, I'm they hopelessly their, naive, is what you're trying to they, tell me. That I, got their, if their, I don't little, think, little birds, yeah. as they say, little birds. Yeah. That are, yeah. The, the Treasury Department doesn't have little birds in every antique mm -hmm. coin dealer in uh, in uh, America and beyond. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's you know maybe this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shannon. Well, sorry, Shannon. That's I, I get it. Am I, yeah, with your shenanigans. Look, I apologize, and now everything's okay. Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, Mel's Hall. Here we go. Do you remember where you got these coins? Yeah, they were on my property. They were you on know, the or, property. Uh, just yeah. showed up laying on the property. No, I was actually dig digging around there. You were know, in the red. I you were know, in the red a lot of dirt over there to plant stuff and like the, and, and, like and grow Chinese things there. And, well, you know, it's strange that you would mention all of this now. I remember in your. I remember you're telling the story of your belt buckle being gone, but you didn't go into the detail about your belt buckle before. No, now. no be because I didn't know the significance of it. I I just looked at it as uh, a couple of old silver times. So I, now I didn't... suddenly you relate it back to the hole exactly. in the property. Exactly. I see. Exactly. So I, I got see. I got this, uh, you know, so that, that, that kind of explains why the buckle would be taken from me. I yeah. suppose so. Uh, it, it might be proof of something other than who it knows be. what, yeah. But that, that, that. <laughs> That's right. It's proof of who knows what. Who knows what. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, mm -hmm. he explained he described his belt buckles at length. I was making fun of him for talking so much as belt correct. buckles last time. I do not Never remember once there being... the dime. No, or like, no. It, apparently there was like a, a an array of coins. Yeah. 
the three coins to, to recognize the conference of the great powers. Yeah. And it was just four. Hey, no spoons. Yeah. A, it was just. Here's an envelope uh, of coins. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make time travel out of this. <laughs> Darren Marsh in our chat. <laughs> this is just proof of dime travel. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Uh, uh, good yeah. job, Darren. Um, so I'm now fearing, Nave. I, I fear that maybe these coins aren't actually going to have powers, other than not being, re other than not being able to exist. I thought maybe well, you know they were going to be able to. So as you and I both know, Paul, that's the tricky thing about objects. It can be very hard to oh, figure right. out what. Because their power might be, you know, sublimating brass to to it's straight true. to gas from solid to gas. So unless right. unless you happen to be around brass and notice, you're never gonna figure That's it true. out, so, right? Or, oh, so you're telling me don't not to lose hope. These coins may have powers. Yeah, absolutely. Right. All right. Just wait. Other than other than not being able to, other than that they shouldn't exist. Other than they shouldn't exist. Okay. Yeah. yeah also. Today. Everybody in chat hasn't watched the miniseries The Room. You should go immediately try to track down somehow, some way, and watch the miniseries. Well, not the immediately. Room. Once this stream is done. Yeah, the only stream on YouTube. That's right. Um, anyway, so that that was some. You know, that's kind of like you know bringing you know bringing this into focus here. Okay, it brings us uh, certainly up to date. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I got a I got, had a couple of other interesting things. These things are kind of loose ends, but they're not loose. Ends. All right, you're going to have to hold on because uh, oh. we're at the top of the hour, and then we're going to shortly get to the next hole. Mel has a new, apparently, endless hole. Early oh. the program. Ooh, yes, then they... we went back to Georgia. Even though the timer's only half done, we had a commercial break. We do have ten questions tonight oh sure let's sure let's i agree with you let's uh, i feel like we should have a do you know why we can do that paul why can we do that because there are no rules <laughs> there are no rules right there are no rules we can do whatever who's the who's the host here you and me we do what we want that's right this is our show so we'll get the, we'll get the the countdown going we we'll get the countdown going it's not the final countdown but it is catchy no do -do -do -do. Do -do -do. uh so yeah, I've been tempted to go back and rewatch season one of Arrested Development lately. Oh, I feel like like season one, two, three, just put it start again. Art famously loves talking about his private tour of the Great Pyramid. How many stones make up this ancient wonder? Eighty nine thousand blocks, four hundred and fifty thousand blocks, two point three million blocks, or one point eight million blocks. To point out the average block is between eight and fifteen tons. How many of those blocks make up the Great Pyramid? What do you think, Paul? What's your guess? I am guessing number two, and I just have literally no idea. Yeah. Oh. And really, this, that's this, I'm pretty much sure everyone's just kind of pulling this out of their ass. That's not a good way to answer multiple choice questions. You usually want to go high or low, but mm -hmm. but I'm Trixie. You are Trixie, so it probably is one or three. But I went with two. You know what else is tricky? To bust a rhyme. It's right on time. But, Paul, you probably should have followed your gut. Uh-oh. It's probably probably three. Yeah. That's, I had to, like, double, double check. I'm like, that can't be right. And I looked it up. I'm like, <laughs> holy shit. 2.3 million, nine ton on average <laughs> That would that's be insane. A... That's ins looking at that. I'm like, okay, I guess maybe now I kind of see why some people are like, no, <laughs> aliens built this. <laughs> that's, that's a freaking. That's a that's a lot of stone. That's a lot. It's a lot of giant blocks of rock. You know what I mean? Exactly. Two point three million. Good night. Good night. All right. Well, we got the timer back up. Congratulations, everyone got that one. There's still seven questions left. Everyone's got lots Fun of time fact, to catch up. Roughly 25% of those stones were carried by Moses himself. Really? I mean, I don't have any um, data to back that up, but I feel mm. that it's true. I feel like Moses didn't actually carry any because Moses was... Uh, well, you've just seen some Steven Spielberg-related propaganda to that mm. effect. <laughs> it's Falling true. for Hollywood lies, Paul. It's true. You sheeple. The DreamWorks, they they mm -hmm. the, the DreamWorks mm -hmm. animation, they got me all. Yeah. Yep. 
Before you got on, Mel, uh, somebody fast blasted me, and I consider this a really good question. Okay. Um, it is, what are the odds of any single one person uh, finding two apparently bottomless or endless, endless holes in one lifetime? The odds against that have got to be gazillions to one. But oh, then I... Oh, oh, oh yeah. In, in, in fact, so you don't even... Don't be, don't be flashing re <laughs> stats at us now. Well, so, but here's the deeper question, Paul. Mm -hmm. So... The odds that somebody finds two quasi endless, possibly interdimensional rips in space time, strange property holes, mm -hmm. as Art pointed out, infinite. In, like, essentially so high as to be right. um, zero. So, is it then that Mel's finding the holes, or is there something special about Mel? This is, this is actually, I'm, I'm with you. I feel like this is the. That he's essentially there's some kind of magnet to he's drawn to, yeah. Um, yeah, it makes more sense that there's something that he's drawn to the holes as opposed to that he's finding them. Right. So, like, what there's you're something. trying to say is that Mel is the prime object, and Mel is the prime object. That's I understand and I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't. Need, you can't even consider odds. You know. That's, uh, that's right. So right. out of outlandish. Uh, and, and oh, by the way, one other thing before before we even get to that, uh, Richard Hoagland called uh, at the top of the hour oh. and said, "You know what, Art? You're right. Normal time travel could not explain what he just talked about, but there is one thing that could, and that is a parallel universe." Hmm. That you know, Art. Say, normal you know, time travel <laughs> doesn't just create straight doesn't coins. Just create random coins. All of the methods of time travel that we are currently familiar with would not generate these coins. But, but, <laughs> Art, lest you get discouraged, we, there is a natural phenomena we know of. That absolutely Luckily, I have degrees in both timeology and time nishinisms, <laughs> and I can tell you. Dimensionism. Dimensionism, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, uh, both so, and I actually beg to differ. so just like you know if one looks at like back to the future or whatever where you know the the serious time travel documentary that you absolutely like so there could be a different timeline within our dimension where it's sounding like he's saying that the person must be dead to be on the coin and i'm just going to go with that it seems to go it, if it's true for stamps, it might be true for coins. That uh, it was a Roosevelt. We're talking about Roosevelt. So we're there, talking about Franklin Roosevelt. So there could be a timeline where Roosevelt dies in forty one or forty two to allow this to happen. But something, you know, butterfly effect, Dave. You know, some time travelers mess some things up, and he, you know, he dies later in a different timeline, or, or you know, depending on which one is the prime timeline. So Do you know what my favorite thing about Franklin Roosevelt is, Paul? What's that? So. As you, even probably you, who is not really a student of history or aware, Franklin Roosevelt served four terms. He died during his fourth term. He served four terms as the, U, the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. Only person in history to serve more than two terms as president. Right. Yes. After he died, they passed the whatever amendment to make it so like you only can serve two terms as president. Right. Because of his depression ending, World War II winning reign of terror. Someone was like, we can't let this happen again. No, this, this cannot <laughs> stand. <laughs> yeah. That's the, uh, <laughs> this tyrant. <laughs> we, we never again. Uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, the super chat, Stephen Luttrell. Uh, no, you can't see my Mirror Universe Terran Empire coin because Carl and his KGB agents beamed in. Time KGB agents. Time KGB agents beamed in and phasered it to death thank you yeah that's a i love it yeah this is that's pretty much that's a recurring theme in mel's story yep it's like oh yeah i've got all this physical evidence oh man mm. this but then the government the, the guys showed up they took their it. black helicopters and you know mm -mm, just gone mm. she gone yeah uh the, extending tendrils extending even to the the treasury the treasury department's like wait Someone of the Treasury Department had to be saying, why are we confiscating a belt buckle? Yeah. Because <laughs> it has some kind of fake 1943 <laughs> Roosevelt coin in it. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, exactly. It's a dime. Even if it's counterfeit, it's a dime. 
<laughs> the hell do we care who's about making this? money? That's right. Who's making money counterfeiting dimes? Like yes. it is going to cost us five thousand dollars to <laughs> confiscate and arrest this counterfeit ten cent piece. Uh, oh, the court costs alone mm. will be egregious. As, it's, it's well established in in lore, though, that uh, you have, the, the Treasury Department is lead on all matters time travel related. So. Well, I mean, they protect the president, too. You don't know what they do. First, in not which you've read similar the things yeah, have occurred, not. but uh, with very different outcomes. And uh, a lot of our best scientific minds now, Mel, are saying that, uh, indeed, that uh, that could w very well be the case. Uh, you know, there could be a universe in which the Nazis won the war. Um, all right, uh, listen. Uh, anyway, in view of time here. Okay, uh, let, let's, 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 let's look at King Alexander Bob's poll is here. This is, I'm just excited. This okay. is a fellow D and D enthusiast who showed up. Perfect. Anyways, moving on. Mel's trying to no Mel. Art's trying to get us on time here. You're interrupting. Yeah, I know. You we're, we got a lot of show to get through tonight, and I'm fucking it up. Well, we got it before we get carried away. We got another. Mm. We got another super chat. Even Art, like Art, was mid sentence there about how how maybe Hitler might have won the war, and then he's like, "Wait, we're here to talk about holes." <laughs> like, yeah. Can I? Let's just stop. Timothy Harmon, thank you for the super chat. Writes T Man, I got the dime. Did you get the teeth? <laughs> Did you get <laughs> teeth? <laughs> oh, we're getting some really good super chats tonight. We are. This is a this mm, is a good night. Quite the. Quite the conspiracy for this poor, poor Mel. Connected, is, obviously, because I guess of the uh, plans that you grow. Some hurricane times, Paul. Mm -hmm. Hurricane yeah. news and all the rest of it with Native Americans, right? Yeah, yeah I, and and uh, all I'm going to tell you about them, I don't want to give the name to try because I don't want a bunch of people running down to meet there. Now, this is in Nevada, right? In Nevada. Okay. okay. Here in my state. Uh, and uh, there are uh, tribes uh, up there uh, that... Oh, well, because of you. Are we? Nothing so far is going to send everyone going to bother the tribe. Well, anybody who wants to score some peyote, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I mean, medicinal herbs for research purposes. <laughs> Plant. I assume Wombat marijuana plants. is... Let me know in the chat. Is marijuana legal in Nevada? It's got to be. Everything's legal in Nevada. Yeah. yeah. I feel like... If it's not, that's fucked up. I'm yeah, just going to go weird. ahead and say it. It's like, oh, yeah. It's broth we got brothel. Like, everything. That's yeah, right, yeah. Nevada. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, you want to fight homeless people or maybe hunt them? Sure, we can let you. Sure, do that. that's fine as long as everybody agrees. <laughs> as long as no one's smoking marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! You get the devil's lettuce Wait. out of here, <laughs> communist. What's in What's in that brownie, buddy? Yep. The kind of work you did, uh, the metallic work you did in belt buckles and the herbs you grow, I can easily understand the connection you would have with uh, some Native Americans. So you, you connected with these Native Americans. Well, famously <laughs> wear, wear belts. Yeah. Famously, famously in yeah. love with belt buckles. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Everyone knows about the, the classic and quite valuable Navajo belt buckles of the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 15, 16, and 1700s. Yeah. Ugh. What the hell are you talking about, Art? <laughs> that's Art realizes, like, oh, I get it. If you're doing a bunch of drugs, why are you being? He's trying yeah, to yeah, realize like, that's terrible wait, to say. I better not say that. <laughs> right. Trying to somehow switch mm. tracks mid <laughs> mid train ride. I mean, you know, yeah, folk art, yeah, metal working. Uh, yep. Oh. Claire Ooh. says, yay, I'm watching y'all live finally and drinking strawberry white claw at the same time. Hi, Shannon. Hi, I, we can't. We're, we're not Shannon. No, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just respond just on gonna, behalf of Shannon. I think that was that was a sure a y'all. That was that's all y'all. Okay. Well, I'm also. Even though you didn't say anything to me, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm still glad you're here, Claire. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you did say something to me. You just didn't tell and, me. And and Claire was petty. generous. Generously, it was a super chat. So it was yeah. a super chat. I'm being mean spirited and dismissive, Claire. Right. I am absolutely delighted you're here. You're fantastic. I'm so glad you're enjoying this time with us. And thank you so much for the super chat. And you look marvelous tonight. 
All right, back to Mel Gold. actually contacted me through oh. email oh. And, and said, look, would you be interested in coming down and discussing with us, you know, what you're doing, the research that you're doing, and, you know, talk about, you know, I, I have no, believe me, Art, I have no commercial interest in this at all, but they do. Okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. I'm, you know, there's not going to be a patented bottle of Mel's. Oh, oh. just calm down, all right. Bye. But also, what, re so he was... Was it wombats he was rescuing? I've now he was rescuing that. wombats. Yes. Was so is this? <clears throat> there's no way that his obscure research from the before the first hole caught the attention of some First Nations tribe in Nevada. Uh, and it can't have been I the mean, wombats. They can't be excited. Anyway, I, I'm just you know I'm going to be honest. I don't <laughs> think it was the wombats that caught their attention. I yeah. I feel like this must be hole related research, and they're. This is this well, is all a this is all a, a ruse. <laughs> it's a bait and switch, Dave. It's a bait mm. and switch. Magic elixir here, okay? <laughs> okay, fine. This is this is their thing. But we you know we swap notes. We talked around a lot, and there are some specific. Uh, they knew who you were because of my program because and because of the show yeah. coverage. And yeah, okay. Um, and, and yeah, so yeah, they didn't <clears throat> they didn't become impressed with his herbology based on his previous. <laughs> no. Coverage on uh, on Art Bell. I don't. I, but. And uh, so I, I went down there, and this was in early September of uh, last year. Oh, okay. So this this was actually before nine eleven. Right. Okay, but uh, shortly before that. Early, right? was, early I, September. I was uh, pretty much incommunicado basically during that whole time, and strangely enough, so <laughs> a lot of this stuff is news to me. All right. Uh, so you know, we're over there, and um, you know, they they had done a lot of good work. They had cataloged a lot of plants. You know, we talked plants. I'm sure all this plant stuff is boring. And I asked them if they knew, uh, look, uh, and, and I told them, I, I said, the plants that seemed to work the best were the plants that I had been growing on my property. And I described to them which ones they were. And uh, uh, this was it, the hole near Washington, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. The hole was inventing drugs or inventing plants? Improving them. Improving Altering them. them. Paul, I see. making them better, mm. faster, stronger. <laughs> And they'll get you fucked up <laughs> so much. <laughs> you will see entirely new dimensions. <laughs> you think you got a dime, dude? <laughs> you don't even know. That's not a dime, man. That's just a button. But okay. That's just a button. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 uh, and so obviously you unraveled the story of the whole to them. Well, well, they they were they were aware they were they, they were all right. They, they were. All right. So uh, I says, can you in your gathering and in your research and your studies have you found this specific variety? And I said because this was the variety that grew by the property. And that's where I ended up at the second hall, is because they took me directly to, not for the hole in particular. Well, then it's obvious to me that they knew your reputation. Right. They knew uh, the whole story of the hole, and the real motivation for inviting you down there, aside from the herbs and the rest of it, was that they had a hole of their own. Well, the, the hole itself, and we're, we're going to get into the hole. All of us are just trying to get... You, you told us, you teased us in the opening that there's a second hole. I'm going to tell you right now, Paul, and I'm going to say it right here on YouTube. Yep. I have... I would be delighted to get into Mel's hole. I'm <laughs> incredibly curious about what's going on there. Okay, so... We got a super chat. Hold on. Just, so, so King Alexander's God-shaped hole. Given the chance, you would use your body to fill Mel's hole. That's what you're saying? Absolutely. I mean, I would try. I hear it's bottomless. So whatever, whatever I got, I would, you know, it's, I'd it's not about in. size. It's not about size, Dave. Yeah. I feel like I would use what I have to the best mm -hmm. of my ability. I would just push on through, try to do what I can to plumb that hole to the satisfaction of everybody involved. You are, you are surprised. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Read this, Paul. <laughs> we have King Alexander's God shaped hole. <laughs> it just holes everywhere. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, he we're writes, good. Hey, Dave, if you feel hey, so King kind, Alexander? ask Paul for my email. I'd love a chance to speak with you as well. 
Paul and Shannon are awesome. You likely are too. I, I agree with that. Dave's awesomeness is independent of my awesomeness and Shannon's awesomeness. Yes. But all equally verified. All right. I'm fine with that. Uh, by all means, if, um, if, if you and Paul correspond by email, I have absolutely no problem with Paul giving you my email, my personal email, or, <laughs> uh, or um, throwing anybody. I, uh, I'm, I'm very easy to talk to. But yes, or I will ask him for your you know email. I, and, to do. And I think if, if we remember, and some we should. Um, I should actually set up a Dave or a David at Paulagia.com just so that you, and then forward that to your other. Oh, we don't have that kind of technology. <laughs> okay, All right, fair enough. But I've seen from some of the comments that uh, King Alexander has left below some of the uh, the videos that uh, he is. A man after my own heart mm. into some old school RPG and different yes. things and going. I think uh, we would have a lot in common and would probably. Uh... King Alexander is a uh, patron of, of mm -hmm. mine on on the on the Patreon. And, I feel like uh, we would enjoy having a beer and together. We've had some we've had some lovely conversations. So yes, there you go. Uh, player one. Yeah, Lights. my address is just Dave at Dave's House dot net. <laughs> just dot ca. Dot <laughs> ca. <laughs> That's not a real email address, or if it is, it's not mine. Please don't spam <laughs> that person. <laughs> Someone at tastehouse.ca is yeah. going to get some yeah. weird email. All right. Yeah. Happy birthday, Toast to Toast, Toast. Thank you, Player One. We appreciate it. We'll see if we ever get to year two. It has been pointed out, our actual la anniversary was oh, last show. It was. But August, August 27th. But whatever. You know what? Fuck it. Also, We're doing the best we can. Also, it's, uh, it's trivia time. So You know what, Paul? This is our anniversary. Do you know why? Because we make the rules. Because there are no yeah, we make the rules. There are no rules. We make the rules. This is the matrix here, man. Trivia time. Right. And I get so nervous now. Now it's just, you know, now we have we're getting a few extra seconds on each one because that's just the way it'll go. I think that's probably better. Yeah. Gives everybody a chance to relax, crack their trivia and absorb, absorb what Mel has been telling us and take it Warm all up. According all right. to Dave, who is the CEO and founder of longtime sponsor of the show, Pants? Is it Sanford Slackwise the third, Patrick Pleadington, Levi Strauss, but he's a different Levi Strauss, or Barry <laughs> Blue Jeans? Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be upset if Paul doesn't know the answer to this question. You will be, because you know. Oh, he good. Signs because he signs the checks. He signs the checks. Yeah. I believe he's been featured in two mentioned in two sponsorship ads. Yeah. I wish it was three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, that was my favorite answer. That was your favorite answer. <laughs> it just happens to be his name. It's not. <laughs> That's like uh, Office Space. What's yeah. the? Um, like a, oh Michael Bolton, right? That's the. Yeah, right. <laughs> the really good name to that no talent <laughs> ass class started pumping out albums. All right, so it was Patrick. Uh, Patrick Cleedington. Yeah. I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I thought you were saying Patrick. I thought I know. it was Patrick. I had to I, uh, I had to correct you at the time. Yeah. I believe. It was Patrick. Patrick Pleadington. Well, we appreciate the two sponsorship we got from Patrick. Um, maybe. Well, if you're answering blind, Vishanti, you got it correct. <laughs> so good job. Vishanti right. is playing catch up on yes. the show. All right. We're moving at a snail's fucking pace. We are here, not. So we're not doing a good job. You're not doing a good job. I'm, I'm going to disappoint my friend here, my friend Paul. We need to get. We need to get to a certain point in the show. People, stop distracting us. Mm -hmm. Off we go. But absolutely, do keep super chatting us because, Easily for lack people, of a better term, but uh, that's more fun. Um, now you're interacting with you I'm is sorry, more fun. Art, uh, it is. Uh, but they, basically, the hole is not on their property. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, basically, they're connected. <laughs> It is traditional. <laughs> oh, we talked about this before. <laughs> Please, Paul, go ahead and read this. <laughs> Melly writes, 
Can't wait for the traditional someone forgot to pause the trivia game segment of Toast the Toast. Yeah. It is traditional, yes. It is traditional. <laughs> you never know when it's going to happen. Usually it's when we're very deep. Actually, it's often when we're no. deep into the game and it's, can't even restart. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, usually it's like when we're six questions in. So, it's, mm. uh... yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it is. It's like a, it's like a Thanksgiving tradition. It's like, there you yeah. go. And, you know, to get from the reservation. Hey, where, good where job, baby. Love happen. The, Somebody uh, picked up my very oh, blue weapon. They know but you're, you're telling me this hole is in my state? In the state of Nevada. In the state of, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, if you looked at the picture of uh, uh, of where the Manasseh is in Washington, and right. you try to find similar pictures in Nevada, you probably find it there, too. We have very similar looking terrain. It to be really sure. is. That's why I love That's why I love, I love the high desert. That's my, my kind of land. Uh, so, anyway, um, so I'm up there. You don't just stumble across something in Nevada. Nevada is huge. Also, I've been to Washington State. Yes. I have been to Nevada. Yep. Nothing in that, nothing particularly jumps out of my mind as like, oh, yeah, these things. Is, oh, yeah, you need to the timer, Paul. Um, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, this is just like Washington State. Or, yeah, <laughs> this is just like this dense coniferous forest is just like the fucking desert that I remember seeing. <laughs> Are we in Portland? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, whatever. Uh, anyway, you know. they cut to the chase, and now we're finally at least talking about the second hole. Yeah, I'm, I'm cutting them off, yeah. This land is used by members of the Basque, B-A-S-Q-U-E community. All right. Was it not like four minutes ago when he said, I'm not going to give you the name of the tribe because you're all yeah. just going to bother them. But here's now how I'm going to spell it for you. Aren't the Basque like uh, like a part of Portugal? Something? B-A-S-Q-U-E. Well, I'm seeing Basque Cheesecake. Basque or is it Basque people? France? Something? It's it's very much European. I know that much. I thought it was maybe like Portugal or northern Spain or something like that. Somebody tell me. Basques? They are a southwestern European ethnic group. Yeah. Characterized by the Basque language. Definitely yeah. not like... Well, maybe there's a Basque enclave in Nevada. I don't know. But it's definitely not Native American. Okay, so so he was consistent. That wasn't. This wouldn't be the name of a tribe, but it's okay. Yeah, All right, the Basque people are using the hole for their Basque activities. Well, Basque, there you go. Or, yeah, yeah, I don't, the Basque are interesting people. In it, they basically Paul. came out to uh, uh, your state and a couple of other states, basically for uh, raising sheep of all things. Okay, and so they are shepherds, and so I am introduced to the what is now the second hole. All right, tell me about this. I mean, they. Good news, Eddie Dean. Eddie Dean yeah. wants to know, am I a bad parent for choosing Mel's Hole over watching across the Spider-Verse with the kids? Yes. I guess the kids will forgive me. Not sure about Mel. Here's the thing. We are clearly into some multidimensional stuff happening here. Yeah. So there's a lot of crossing the streams here. We've got coins from other dimensions for right now, at least, at that, at very least. And uh, we don't know what powers the second hole has mm -mm. yet. They have yet to get yet. us there. I don't. Well, so uh, we'll see, but you may well be, this might just be as multi, just as multiverse as the other show. I feel like we don't need to keep you the path. They took me there. I, was, oh, I, was not, I did not go all the way up to the hole, but there was I will say Cosmic Spider-Verse is a very good movie. Uh, uh, the Native Americans and the Basque and blah, blah, blah. And they basically uh, uh, agreed that, you know, everything was as it should be, that I wasn't, you know, from CNN or the FBI or the CIA or <laughs> right, whatever. Right, right. Uh, and so I went there and uh, uh, I got to see the hole. Now, all right. What's there? What it is, is that if you, you know, walking up to it, uh, and, and first of all, this is an fairly pristine area okay so there's like uh uh no real signs of civilization around there there's no uh, no roads leading into it there's no uh 
uh, uh, telephone wires, nothing like that. I mean, we're, we're talking pristine area. Right. No, uh, no signs of, except for their habitation, no signs of habitation. Gotcha. Okay, you're walking up to it, and what you see... <laughs> except for the obvious signs of habitation. Yeah. Those All the sheep there. herders, for one. <laughs> All the sheep herders, that's right. Sticking out of the ground is uh, a nine. Well, the hole itself is the same dimension as the one in Elm's Market. Wow. Right. Nine feet nine, in diameter? Nine feet in diameter. This one had a metal collar around it. A metal collar? Metal, solid metal collar. That rose from uh, how? Two feet high and about two feet deep. Metal collar, and it had some notches in it. That... Two feet high and two feet deep. So, like, deep. two feet oh, below gotcha. the... Yeah, yeah. so it's it's four the, feet yeah. total in height. Yeah, two two is above the ground. I gotcha. You could look like, in my estimation, you could make something with it, you know, to lock it in place. And it, it could possibly have been like a locking collar. You mean it. something was? Uh, it looked, in other words, it looked like something intended to lock to it from above. Exactly, something would be lowered onto it. Oh, like a like a it's like a vacuum tube fitting. It's like a, it's a yeah. <laughs> Didn't. Uh... Didn't Mel's hole in Washington have like a big grate over t or a cover? It right, had a, it had a, but it was just someone just thrown pieces of wood over it. What, right? I thought it was like a big piece of metal or scrap metal or something, like or, or like or, well, yeah, like but, but, something well. Like, it, it was it like a custom been, made. This is clearly something custom made, so that the hole can have attachments. Yes, yes. The the one in the one his crap Mel's crappy hole just was just yeah someone. Found a grate that was nine feet across, and here we'll, we'll put this over it. I guess. Yeah, this is this is a fancy hole. And yeah, wow. this, well, if anyone's gonna do a hole right, it's the Basques. <laughs> the Basques they here, they're yeah. renowned for their hole, hole technology. Yeah. Famously, okay. But uh, the Basque tell me that this property or this hole here has been there for all of their experience, and they have been there since the 1800s, just the way it is, but the same hole on not their land. They don't own this land, Art. This is probably government, U.S. government land. Well, the majority of land here in Nevada is probably. BLM. Well, <laughs> probably. So the government already, so the government had to pay him quarter million dollars a month for access to his hole. Oh, sorry, Paul. I just saw right there. Judia posted in chat, the Holy of Holies. That's we, that I feel a little sad. We didn't throw that on mm -hmm. one of our mails, you know, opportunity missed the toast thing sponsored by toasters, the Holy of Holy. We're, we are, we're slacking. We're slacking. We need, we're slacking. Uh, we need sponsorship by puns. I know, right? Mm -hmm. We need a writing. We need a writer's room. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, but the government was leasing mm -hmm. the other hole from him. Yeah. But here, this hole is already on government land, and no one's around. They just let the Basques throw their tubes, their TVs, and their fridges in there. Well, presumably the Treasury Department doesn't know about this hole. Mm -hmm. They're just lands because the bass are good enough. They're smart enough to keep their fucking mouth shut when they're in coin shops <laughs> and not talk that's, about that's the right. hole. First rule of the hole. See, the bass come about. from the old world, from Europe, mm -hmm. where they're used to an overclass. The Uber, you know, like they know that it's like you keep your mouth shut about certain things, right? You. That's right. Kayfabe. Yeah. Let's all Makes... just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. So they they know the deal. The bass are smart. Mel's a moron wandering around <laughs> right. singing if country road, his... losing his bath, <laughs> making his fucking yeah, kept his mouth shut dimey on. belt buckles <laughs> on multi multiple things. Yeah, just letting yeah. his neighbors throw stuff and dead dogs in there. You can't do yeah. That. And it's not even his. It was the, his ex wife owned the land. He didn't. He was just a freaking squatter essentially. That's what it all came down to. Yep. Oh, the Josh! Look writes, at that! Appreciate yeah. you, the Josh. Ten dollars super chat. I don't Thank appreciate you. you at all, the Josh. I've never caught a live toasted to toast. I'm about to pass out, but I'll sleep peacefully, dreaming of Mel's endless holes. Oh, maybe this isn't. I thought I knew who this was in real life, mm, but okay, maybe the not. person I'm thinking of has definitely caught live toasted to toast oh, okay, before. Right. So now I feel bad. Then I do appreciate you being here, the Josh. Thank mm -hmm. you for super chatting, ten dollars, and you know. 
It's there you go. And oh no, Vishanti. Still recovering Still from recovering. COVID. Zero oh out of ten. Do not recommend. Do not recommend. Do you have to write it like that with like the one in there? Does, does I think is uh, that a, one of the words that YouTube doesn't let you? Maybe or maybe just just how the kid how the cool kids refer to it. Is that how the cool kids? Vishanti is cool. Mm-hmm. I'm I am not. We we wouldn't know. We're the last to no. hear. Look at us with our glasses, fucking nerds. Yep. I'm taking mine yeah, off the, now again. The two white. There was a time I was trying to pitch Paul chat, you want to know, that we were going to have a podcast talking about movies and comic books and stuff. And it was going to be called The Two Whitest Guys You Know. <laughs> and it was going to be me and Paul. And I still think that's a funny idea and accurate. <laughs> yeah. The whitest guys you know. <laughs> And management. It's, uh, not, so. it's not, they don't own it. They use the land. You know, they, they graze sheep, blah, 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 that sort of thing. They and do. how long have they known of this hole? Do you know? Well, uh, again, uh, one fellow I know says he, he knew this from when he was a young man and he was well into his late 80s. And so he, he, he knew it from probably for the last 70 years. All right. There you go. And he's kept his mouth shut. Mm hmm. Didn't go blabbing it on national AM radio, tell you that much for free. <laughs> yes, yes, right. Because of what you did, we know a lot, at, at least know. quite a bit, about your hole up in, uh, near Ellensburg. But yes. this hole, what do we know about this hole other than its it's diameter? diameter? It's the diameter. Oh, and apparently, it is lined with that same metal as far as you can see. You're, well, you're kidding. It is, it is solidly lined as far as you can see. So this is not a natural hole by any stretch. So there's, there's nothing wait, natural about so okay, so we we had the metal that was like two feet up and two feet down, but but also it's lined I... with metal as far as he can see. Okay. Okay. So, which actually, honestly, mm-hmm. as somebody who worked as a pipe layer of like large industrial pipes for many years, it's like that actually oddly isn't that impressive because I have seen you know, like 10 meter metal pipelines that are sure, you know, kilometers long. So it's like, Oh yeah, we definitely have the technology to do that kind of shit. And as far as you can see in terms of, isn't that far necessarily? Yeah. Unreasonable. So they may have, someone may have just, you know, the, uh, the Basque people may have just wanted to put a sleeve on the hole here. We don't know. Yeah, somebody might have just had a big pipe and just dropped it down and used that as a, uh, a thing to stop the hole. But also, we just went from two feet up to two feet down to, oh, yeah, oh, by the way, also metal all the way down. I feel like maybe my first thing wasn't cool enough. Um, we got a couple also, super chats here, Paul. We do. Um, yes. Julie. Judia. Judia writes, holy, holy, holy of holies. Me, Brought to you by Sonic Shroom. Brought to you by Sonic Shroom. <laughs> I just had to get new glasses this week, Paul. Uh-oh. My prescription is... Uh, I have now reached the point. I am. I am. Uh, I don't know if you've felt this as a a person even older than I am. So I, when I'm reading now, I have to lift my glasses up. Or oh, you're at that bad stage. But I can yeah. still read perfectly fine without my glasses. That's correct. That's the stage I'm at as well. That's why. And I, I kind it. of. So like the last time we were like, well, you should probably get progressives or bifocals, and I'm just like, nah, I'm not. I'm just not ready to. Yeah. <laughs> to do that yet but it's like i know (sighs) yeah Yeah, my kids tease me because yeah they know that i'm going to use my phone because i take my glasses off and use the phone so yeah yeah yes right i'm i'm not in that boat and hydrox cookies oh you uh yes we're the original oreos with the cheaper knockoff brand don't let them keep hiding the truth Mm mm-hmm what was that? Nabisco Age. Nabisco Age. Have you ever seen or heard of a Hydrox cookie, Paul? I have. I've heard of them. I've not seen one. I've know. heard of them. I'm not. Seen, I don't know what. To, yeah, they're the they're the Betamax of the the cookie world. <laughs> nee. nee says they've known about it the whole the time. Whole time. Yes, they have. Yes, exactly. they have. Lovely. All right. I feel like now that we're in a bit of a break here. 
Let's just do the, the trivia clock's almost it's almost very close. Ready to go. I will say, if you're at the cookie aisle, Paul, this is about, so you got two bags of cookies in your hand. Yes. Okay. One is Hydrox, Hydrox. and the other is Oreo. Mm -hmm. Like, does one not sound like laundry detergent? <laughs> yes. Like, that is not, I don't know who picked that name or if there's some kind of significance behind it. I don't get it, but I'm like, that is not a thing that, like, Mr. Christie's, Nabisco, you know, Necco wafers, all these things. No. Nope. Nope. Tim Tams. I'm like, Hydrox. No, that's soap. <laughs> that yeah. is... That is an industrial cleaning solution. That's something yeah. you use to get blood stains out of nurses' uniforms. That is something Billy Mays is screaming about on late night TV. This is not a cookie. Hydrox rocks. Yeah, there you go. Question. According to the self-proclaimed scholar of the scriptures, Larry Wilson, what will herald the end times? Is it Two giant meteors striking the earth. Microsoft and Google will merge and officially buy the USA. It already began with the assassination of JFK or traditionally a trumpet blown by the Archangel Gabriel. I bet you Paul remembers this one. I think I do. This was but. the guess that... Remember, he was like a late somebody canceled and he came on, and Art didn't know like anything about this guy. <laughs> yep. It was going and was just like, Who are you? What are you here to talk about? <laughs> and just was like, We were shocked. He was like so dismissive and like, What, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> this is nonsense. Everything yeah, you're saying normally, is Art will try to give people their best shot yeah. at things, but that you'll try and steal man people all the day. But uh, this oh, guy, Larry wrong. Wilson, he did not. Uh... I would, oh, it. yeah, fair enough. There we, we tricked some folks with that one. Yeah, it was the two meteors. That was the uh, there will be two giant asteroid collisions. And Art kept trying to press him for like any kind of detail, or, like why he thinks this thing. And I think it was just like some one reference in revelation to like two stars right and he was like can you have anything other than the bible no nope. no and even like kind of an obscure bible verse that like you could read this way i guess and right. like wormwood all right uh super chat from timothy Harmon. there you go in 1908 the cookies creation was inspired by purity and goodness with a name derived from the hydrogen and oxygen elements within the water molecule. Okay, that's still a really shitty name for a cookie. Yeah, no, they, no one, no one, that was not focus grouped with kids. And you know what, Timothy Harmon, I love you, but I feel like you just cut and paste that from Wikipedia. You didn't know that off the top of your head. I'm just gonna well, go ahead. Fine. And if you want to, if you want to give us, the, if you want to give the show ten dollars, yeah. you I guessed. You go ahead and paste any sentence. I hear I am being an want. asshole to Timothy Harmon, who has been a, a very good friend to the show for so long. I now I feel very bad. That's the it's the booze talking, Timothy. I've been drinking. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Timothy. You know, it's just I just get so crazy sometimes. Not the soul at all. Nothing. Can you all. tell what kind of metal it is? No, but I'll tell you one thing, and it was kind of a kind of an accident. But I dropped the box wrench on it. Right. Uh, you know, on the ledge. Yes. Made no noise. Can't bring Mel anywhere. The the good the good Basque people. <laughs> I just realized I have WhatsApp messages on my phone of people texting me the same thing about Hydrox cookies and where it came from. Mm. Apparently, my friends are also watching in there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. The good Basque people said, hey, you're not with CNN, you're not with the CIA, you must be yeah. a good guy, come on down. You must be a good Check guy. Out a hole. And he almost drops a wrench in there. <laughs> yep. And then immediately goes on, you know, like the most popular <laughs> right. radio show right. of the time. I was to, just uh, talking about it again. The same yeah. mistake. Damn it. No noise whatsoever. You know, you drop a box wrench. Oh, I, I talked over the good. It, it made no noise, Dave. He dropped a wrench on it and it was silent. Oh. Mm. John, a metal floor. Clank. Clank. Nothing. Yeah, we repeat the experiment. Clank. Nothing. 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 It makes no... You could pound on that thing with a sledgehammer, and it won't make noise. Okay? Oh, no. This is what I'm telling you about right now, is that this one here is so... Powers. That's what we wanted to hear. We got crazy superpowers. We got... There we go. Now we're into object land. Now we're into it. 
different yeah. from the one that I had in Ellensburg, like totally different. Uh, well, mostly because of this metal uh, around it. But well, when you, when you touch the metal, does it feel metallic? Is it cold as metal? Oh, would... hey, this, this, <laughs> wow. This, this is interesting because a lot, a lot of the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the the fellows that, that oh man yes. art the thing you just said it, that's the thing it does mm -hmm. <laughs> yep absolutely absolutely I didn't bring it up Ooh, before you said no. it but while you said it yes it does that it does that mm -hmm. who boy Ooh. there was there was five of us at the you know towards the end of it and started with two and we ended up with five. But uh, oh, yeah. they say when they were up there, even in the winter time, they can they can like uh, put their uh, uh, tent sleeping bag right up against it, keep them nice and warm. Warm. Yes, it keeps them nice and warm. But it is not. Wait, this is radioactive metal. <laughs> <laughs> also now, yeah. also we're uh, losing our hair yeah. and we're dying. But man, it sure is nice and warm by the. Also, Mel, you now have lymphoma. Sorry. <laughs> It, look, yeah, uh, if you're not touching metal and it keeps you warm, <laughs> probably just uh, get away. Hot, you know, it's not like, you know, like a fire hot, but the metal itself over there. Ra the, radiates? Um, I, I, it, I, I don't even know how to describe it there. And, but it, in other it, words, if you touch it with your hand, is it hot or does it just no. produce radiant heat? That it, 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 There is heat around it, but it itself is not hot. How, how does uh, that sound? This is really weird, Mel. So they, they are, you know, that's what, you know, that that's the thing there. And so uh, we have we have this, uh, you know, hole in there. And they, they, again, from my understanding, they have known about that hole up there. It's uh, for uh, it, it has been known since the 1800s. It has been known exactly the way it is. Uh, well, in the 1800s, uh, a metal hole that big would have been would have been something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Especially if you can bang the side with a sledgehammer and it makes no right. noise. I feel like really at any year that would be uh, that's right. That would be impressive. Would be impressive. Yeah. Hello, Basque friends. Look, we're going out. We're going to go look at the hole. Uh, so what? What do we need? We're on a hole trek. What do we need to bring? You know, a snack, whatever. Oh, anyone, no. who's brought a sledgehammer? Anyone bringing a sledgehammer? <laughs> the hole. Uh, hole. Why? Anyone Why ready to go? A sledgehammer. They don't need it. I can tell you that uh, some of the people that I talked with uh, uh, towards the end of uh, everything on my way back uh, said it was a spiritual site for them up there. Uh, I asked the, uh, the... Is it part of an organized religion? Well, here's hoping. Then, here's hoping. Then indirectly, then that's is that a conflict of interest? If Mel's Hole is an organized religion and an organized religion is sponsoring the show... Because Paul... I guess that's not a conflict of interest. That's just a plug, I guess. That's just a... If you're going to have religion, it might as well be organized. Well be organized. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, you can't just have fucking religions laying all over the ground, all over your coffee table. Fuck you. <laughs> I had him like, how can I frame this in a way that Paul can't immediately? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Compare it to clutter. There you go. I've just given yeah, just given Ken Ham the secret to uh, <laughs> defeating your uh... yeah <laughs> yeah full side. All right, hold it right there, Mel. Good cliffhanger point. <laughs> uh, coming up on Thursday, by the way, I've got Jan Jan Lumbert here, who's uh, an advocate of the hollow earth theory, Ooh. and that may in some way relate to what we're talking about tonight. I have no idea. We'll find out. In the meantime, Mel, so you, you've got this metal around the hole, uh, about, uh, you said, a foot or two high. Two, two feet high, two, two feet, feet high. High, And two feet wide, and then... I've got a two foot ring around my hole. Yeah. <laughs> it goes inside as far as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, you know, yep. Yep. <laughs> and if you um, and if you bang on it, doesn't yeah. make any noise. Doesn't make any noise, huh? That's uh... No noise. That's quite the, the thing. The metal That's that goes the into thing. the hole doesn't know. No, it's, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it hot when you touch it? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Well, how it touch but let me tell you, let me tell you. People come around, and if if you sleep, people come from if you come in, if you have a if you curl up in your sleep, you'll be warm. You'll be warm. But we try not to talk about it. <laughs> hey, you can bang it with a sledgehammer if you want. If you want, <laughs> you come in here. <laughs> you just bang it with a sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say a word. No noise. <coughs> oh. Oh. oh, All right, we got super chats, oh. Dave. <laughs> I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> Timothy Harmon oh. for five dollars. Hey, Thank Timothy. you, Timothy. <laughs> Mel makes belt buckles out of wrenches and sledgehammers. <laughs> well, yeah. from other dimensions, perhaps. Yep. Another dimension, another mm -hmm. dimension, another dimension, another dimension. Savage, Savage Cobra, the cursorial angiosperm. Oh $2. my goodness. Uh, or a hole hanger? Or a hole hanger. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. And, uh, this one's for you. You broke me. Oh. Oh, Vishanti. <laughs> I don't know. Should I? Uh, all right. And I'm the, just gonna. And the hammer was his eggplant. And the hammer was his <laughs> eggplant, which, by the way, is clever euphemism for his penis. <laughs> uh... Wait, what? 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 Is that what those emojis have meant? Wait, this what? Time? I have I have some calls to make. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go kick some people off my <laughs> Discord server. Just a second. <laughs> I, I thought they were talking about gardening. I thought it was about gardening. I have responded very inappropriately. <laughs> <laughs> I find them delicious with a little salt. <laughs> if, you, if you plant an eggplant in your Mel's hole... Yeah. It's gonna grow like you've never it's gonna, grow. It's gonna grow, but you're not yeah. gonna hear a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, this stream has gotten very inappropriate. Brain cramp writes: All holes have an ending. Mel's hole exists. Oh. Ergo, Mel's hole proves the Hollow it's Earth. Hollow Earth. It would be more explainable if the, I if mean the Hollow Earth was true. We haven't done a good Hollow Earth episode yet, and I have not yet. I really love Hollow Earth. I won't. Paul knows this. I won't fucking shut up about Hollow Earth. So, you know, will, that will happen. We there's are, a couple. Uh, Harp's gonna get on here sometime. Hollow Earth's gonna get on here sometime. Yeah. We need to find me a non-boring Harp one. Yeah. Well, that's the trouble. I love the whole nonsense about Harp, but a lot of the people who talk about it are boring as hell. I also love the the moon is a space any spoon and moon is a spaceship. Mm. Stuff, yeah, but Moonfall the movie kind of ruined that whole, that whole thing. Uh, <laughs> we got more super chats. Paul. Yep, Vishanti, two dollars. Sweets. <laughs> if your growth lasts more than four hours, call the doctor. You're supposed, you're supposed to be a moderator, Vishanti. You're supposed to be responsible in guiding this chat. <laughs> Uh, to elevated discussion wow, about this is, I love that, this reference. This is an excellent reference. Yeah, Jay legend has it when Peter gave her pounds Mel's hole. It doesn't <laughs> out as well. That's a deep cut. I like it. That's good. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> All right, we're never gonna get. <laughs> What's coming out oh, of Mel's hole? I'm going to my mic. I'm about to start coughing. I've had a cold all week. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> hole is nine feet in diameter, and as far as you can see, the metal continues down. This is no geographic uh, hole. This is no volcano vent. Or if it is, it's... I think he meant geological. Yeah, <laughs> definitely we know what he means. Been modified oh. by somebody. Well, if it's been modified, it's been modified. Um, I'm going to say <laughs> long before the technology. <laughs> Oh. oh, you can't concentrate for more than a sec. All right. I know. It's just coming. If you give your sixth eggplant to God, you will be blessed with the giant eggplant, which is fun. See, I, what's funny is I get this joke because that was one of the one in 20 of your actual videos I watched was the one 
Oh, the, the guy lemon with one? the giants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sonic Shroom. Clearly a follower of your main channel. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, neat. that was on that was on this channel. That was on the. Oh, was it channel. on this channel? Apologies. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. I get them mixed up because I subscribe to both. Uh, but everybody here should be subscribing to your main channel, which is just regular Apologia, not Apologia Live, for all of your not eggplant related. <laughs> Basically, eggplant. serious videos that don't have my nonsense dragging mm. it down, but it's good. It's good. That's where Paul is shows how smart he is. All right. Knee, a broken eggplant is literally an eggplant. <laughs> sure. Well said, Look, Lee. You know, we all we get older, things happen. It's <laughs> that we know of today. You knew it. <laughs> and it looks like there was something that should be latching to this okay. hole from above. Uh, so, so it, 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 I'm going to call the thing on top a collar, okay? And it, that's, that's, that's we'll call it the collar. All right. And, and it looked like that there is notches in it, and it looked like you could lock something into place or line something up in it. Gotcha. It didn't move. It did have a great video up for your, player one. your whole accessories. Yes, for all your whole accessories. Hit whole topic. To get all the whole accessories you need. What I want everyone at home to do is to Google whole accessories. Yes! <laughs> Just do a search. <laughs> yeah, and then yep. I am... Um... Paul on his Twitter. <laughs> no, every no, I don't. I don't need to know. I don't need yep, to see no, it. No, but... message him on Twitter. He wants to know all the whole accessories you found. He's very curious. <laughs> He's been exploring. He's looking at, mm. you know, branching out. <laughs> or or whole attachments. Probably. Let me also. tell you. Here's a little. Here's a little trick. A little peek behind the kimono for all of you out there who are looking to become professional content creators of any kind. The trick is to diversify. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, one revenue stream, one platform, one anything. You got to branch out. You got to be ready because, you know, trends come and go, things come and go, things get viral and leave. Paul's looking to get into whole accessories. He's branching into a whole new media stream, a whole new revenue possibilities. If you could give him some ideas, he'd be very interested. Just message him repeatedly and vigorously so that you can... Uh, what the fuck's wrong with us, Paul? Remember when we went to Lunenburg? They, they had they had some yeah. accessories there. At that, they that did. Mm -hmm. They did. Whole I really like Lunenburg. Whole tain, uh, whole tain accessories. I yes, <laughs> I deal in whole tain and whole tain accessories. <laughs> and tell you what. Mm. Uh, oh, how many minutes are we in so far, Paul? We are not enough. Seventeen. Keep going. 17, eh? I think we've got a solid metal, but there are down. places where they're but there's not. There's no trivia something. and there's mm. trivia time. I mean, trivia clock. We may as well get to the trivia. We might as well get to the trivia. But we should read Savage Cobra's super chat first. Okay. If Mel attempts whole exploration, protection is advisable. That is very true. Be responsible, everybody. When pounding the inside of your hole to check for sounds, <laughs> protection is advised. In 1973, a man known only as Bugs claimed he shot a Bigfoot while night hunting with a good friend. What was his friend's what name? Was, his name? was it Scooter? Was it Jim Bob? Was it Chetney? Oh. Or was it Bird Dog? Which one oh, was it? Oh, Paul knows he knows this. Oh, damn He's racking his brain. What was it? <clears throat> They're all possible. They're all possibilities. I don't. I remember. was a little devious on this one. I feel like, um, yeah. I locked it in. Well, Paul, I've got good news for you. Mm. Yeah. It was, in fact, Bird dog. That's what I, yeah, I was narrowly on, yeah, there we go. Good, yeah. 
the, imaginary uh, bonus points to anybody who can in I am tell me what Chetney is a reference to, and we'll move on. <laughs> All right. So, we, we, no, what well, the question six? There's still lots of questions question to catch up. Yeah, no worries if you're uh, depends on how you're doing, but we're all good. We're all good. Okay, let's get, let's get the mail done. In my opinion. All right. all right. What did the uh, the Basques or the uh, Native Americans tell you about what they knew of the depth of this hole? In other words, I'm sure they've thrown things into it or oh. have experimented oh. with trying to find out how deep it is or something, right? Well, they're actually, not trailer they, trash, didn't, they like... didn't do anything with lowering um, uh, line it or anything to it, but they they did relate to me the same phenomenon as. Uh, that I had described uh, one uh, the fear of animals going by it uh -huh. uh, their dogs won't do it nothing they, they have nothing to do with it there you did perform some experiments on this hole didn't you okay let, let, let me let me talk about the first one and 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 pause, right I'm not I'm not the the the, the, the game the the timer paused. The and the game paused, paused. Timer, okay timer good needs to be up. the game is paused Yep. Oh my goodness, Melody Kate's making it rain. Oh my goodness. Well, for that. For that. Do I do I do a little more tequila for that? I mean, that's up to you. I don't have. Uh, it's any not more for that because because we we that was how we started. It was where we were. Uh, yeah. We we had made some bad decisions. I feel like this would be the night to. Uh, maybe unlist that, but <laughs> what do you think? I don't have a bottle opener, so I have to uh, uh -oh. use my desk as a. Uh... Is uh, is tonight the night we uh, unlist that first episode? <laughs> I would be super okay with that. Yeah, I'm on the record. Right. If that just disappeared forever, yeah, all right. I'm not yeah. gonna private it, but we might unlist it anyway. If you wanted cheers. to make that your birthday present for me, Paul, I yep. would be. Uh, I would be fine with that. Cheers, I'm so Melody terrified. Kate, thank you. Yep. Thank you so much, Melody Kate. Yes, that's right. I poured for this. Cheers to you. All right. Back to more Mel. Scientist. I mean, you know, I'm kind of a researcher. But the first, the first thing that we did is we had uh, a whole bunch of uh, uh, Safeway or. Uh, 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 7-Eleven bags of ice, uh -huh. you know, the kind that you buy, you know, and we had a couple bags of that. So we had put one in a bucket on the surface, and we lowered another bucket of ice into the uh, hole, 1,500 oh. feet. Why is there a bucket up top? Is it the control ice? I guess. Okay, Paul, I have a proposal for you. Let us, 10 minutes, we got to listen to 10 minutes of this. We cannot stop this for any reason, train? this audio file. Yep. Where I, you you can comment, say whatever you want, but how about how about five? Okay, I'll, I'm willing to compromise. Yeah. All right, because I feel oh. like we normally go about thirty seconds, so ten minutes is yeah, a long. That's it. We're like getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. I still have I still have a church key Ooh. right here. The shanti was asking. So here's the thing. While I deeply love this, uh, the look of this, and everything about it. Um, it is actually an absolutely fucking atrocious bottle opener. It's horrible. It's so hard. I have a really nice one upstairs. It's like a nice wide one that just isn't here with me. Uh, opening bottles with this is an exercise in utility. But I still... Uh, uh, both. This brings back a lot of very fond memories for me, and I also think it just looks cool and is cool. But as a bottle opener, it's an abject failure. All right, five yeah. minutes. Here we go. Yeah, why don't we have feet. Yeah, we, we had access to a nice winch and about that much. We only had 1,500 feet of line, nice and winch. that's what we... <laughs> what was the idea of lowering ice into it? Well, well, first of all... If, if you're going to put ice in your hole, you want to have God damn nice it, Paul! <laughs> if you're going to put ice in the hole, you want to have a nice winch around to help you with that. <laughs> 20 seconds! We didn't get so the, my, my even half a minute was, in. Is that I wanted to know... It was, was it hot or cold down there? Okay. So we basically waited for the ice to melt about halfway on the surface, and we would hoist oh, up the ice. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. So your ice, your, you had test ice on the surface. Yeah. To see there if that is melting. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Of, okay. uh, you know, your, your, your garden variety convenience store ice, right. you know, that you, you buy anywhere, and nothing magic about it or anything like right. that. Right. And so we lowered it down there. We waited for the ice to, to melt uh, on the surface there, and it got about half melty, you know, so it was sitting in a bowl of, uh, uh, in, a, in a bucket of water with a 
few bits of ice floating around. We brought it up. And the ice in the bucket did not melt. It didn't melt. It was not melted. So we said, I mean, this was on. Now, wait a minute. Now, um, the hole had been radiating uh, in some strange way heat enough that people would camp by it. Yeah, they, they did that in the winter time. But it doesn't melt ice? It didn't melt the ice. I'm down, it came up there. It was. We looked in the bucket. We had ice cubes in there. Did anything come back up with the uh, with the ice cubes? We, 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 we had ice cubes. You know, I reached in the bucket at ice cube. I picked one up there. So in other words, nothing else, dirt, water, anything else? No, nothing it, else the, the, stuff, the, the stuff appeared pretty much the way we had sent it down, uh, with, with the exception of when I put my hand in the ice, the ice wasn't cold. It felt like ice. It wasn't said, cold. This you might have missed wasn't cold. You, know, you, you how, pick a piece of ice. How deep are they lowering this ice? Did he say? Oh, I didn't hear. I uh, didn't hear either. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it Anyways. didn't. It didn't melt. It didn't melt. It seems like they lowered it a certain length and just let it sit there because they were doing a temper. They weren't doing a depth experiment. This was yeah. a temperature experiment. So, I mean, you know, like yeah. fifty feet is considerably different than. Uh... Sure, but there's no actual natural phenomenon that like it's colder fifty feet down or anything like that. No, so, it's significantly. Have you ever been down in an actual mine, Paul? No, no, I I have. I've been in a couple. Um. That's a nightmare. It is, I would never do that. I guess that's true. I, I apologize. Um, I love it, but it's hot. Like, you do not have to get that deep, and it starts getting hot. Like, plus 20, plus 30 degree temperatures gotcha. as you start going down and down, right? Like, um, so that's when the first one he was like, "Oh, I went and all the ice melted." I'd be like, "Well, fucking, of course the ice melted." Right? Yeah. Like you yeah. go down, but this is the you, unexpected. Don't, you don't have to go that deep till you start getting you know significantly warm temperatures. Even I guess in Nevada, it's hot everywhere all the right. time. But we didn't make cold. Minutes. Ooh, but he, I don't think he said. I don't think he said. Oh, fifteen. Someone in chat is Mark is Fernkopf saying fifteen hundred oh, feet. So you and I just didn't pay attention. All right. Also, we didn't. That was nowhere. We've had a lot. Yeah, yeah, we are. We're, we're bad. Cold. I don't even know why I bought it. And, and it's cold. In fact, it makes you cold by melting. That, that's how Could cold you it works. Right. I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it, it didn't, it wasn't cold, and in the hand, it didn't melt. So then, it, now they're more like blocks of glass. Yeah, I, I would say so, but we... Ooh, the whole... I, I, I guess I didn't... That, didn't sink in. So now he's touching the ice, and the ice is not melted, but it's also not cold. Ooh, it's like ice nine. Ta -da. Okay, what we'll do here is we take this bucket and we'll stick it on the fire. We have a little place to cook there. Stick the the, uh, the bucket with the unmelted ice. Unmelted you ice. You put on a fire. We put it on like our cooking fire there. Okay. We had a little table and cooking area and stuff over there, and. Uh, uh, so we put it on there, and the ice catches fire. What? Cubes catch fire, and and and, and I guess may, maybe uh, catching fire might be the wrong, wrong word. That the, <laughs> the ice. It, we, we we took it off the fire right away, and so we set it on the on the dirt, and the stuff in the bucket was still burning. And again, burning might not be the right thing. It was given off heat. It was, was it? Given, was there a flame? It was not so much a flame as a kind of a. a ooh, oh. You, have you ever used a gas stove? Sure. Okay. It was like the barest turning a, a gas stove on. It was like it was glowing like that last flicker before you turn it off completely. That's what it was like around all the cubes. And you could you could knock the so the cubes were glowing. I guess, or they just radiating a little bit of heat. But they yeah. So that's it was well they were they were they were on fire. Except you know if you you can't really call it a fire, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cubes around and separate them, and each one of them, you know, would would do things. I mean, I shouldn't poo poo this. This, if this was happening to me, this would be. This seems like a big deal, actually. Mm hmm. They've the same properties. Holy smokes! I, I I will tell you that this bucket, well, some of the bucket there is still sitting there, as far as I know today, still doing what it was doing the day we put it into the ground and brought it up. So, so this this was. September. And this is January now. That's how long it's been doing what I what I call burning. Um, <laughs> the bucket of ice has been burning for four months. I guess. Okay. So he's now they're now objects. 
he's yeah. created perpetual energy. It feels like you could just solve the world's energy crisis right here. <laughs> That's right. Just lower some buckets of ice down. It's just feet. magic, magic heat. Yeah, <laughs> and you got that four free energy. The, well, for at least four months. We don't know. Yeah. What one guy took some of the stuff home. He put it in his wood stove, and you know he's got a cabin out there, and you know it gets damn cold where he is, and the thing has been keeping his place warm. Yeah, in northern Nevada, it's very cold. Oh, it, it, uh, it, uh, uh, well, so so this is like was that was that sarcasm? I mean, I feel like maybe people in southern Nevada think that. <laughs> I've never been anywhere that's actually cold. Yeah. Hmm. Giving off eternal heat. I, I, I you know, or, I, again, or when I, it's, it, if I'm get, I, I'm not sure I've got this right. It, 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 it is, it makes it look. It was neutral when it came out of the well. It was neutral. neutral. In other words, we you, put it on the fire, and it appeared again. My, my terminology, this is very bad because it, it acted like a fuel. It, it, it looked, it will look like if, if I understand combustion, it was like it was doing combustion in a different way than than we we would attribute combustion to mixing air with fuel and creating. Heat and, and flame. It was. I mean, that's was combustion. Doing... Yeah, yeah. I've never started a sentence before with "if I understand combustion." Yeah. Well, you've been you've been in boring circles. Mm. I also maybe I just maybe I over. Uh, I'm over overestimating myself as to how much I actually understand combustion. I guess. Yeah. Kind of the same thing is what I'd like to say. And uh, it's been burning like that since, again, burning is the wrong word, but that's all I got for it. I don't know how to describe this process since early September. Aye, aye. Again, a guy has, he took about uh, a aye, coffee aye. can's worth of this stuff and put it, took it home and put it in his wood stove in his cabin. You know, no wood in there. Yes. And the thing has been going since then. Now, we have tried this experiment of just the lowering of the bucket because we figure we could, boy, we'd like to have a lot of this stuff here. Oh, of course. You know, so, and sometimes we would go down there and we would get the Sometimes we would get melted. Sometimes, you know, uh, not melted, but real ice. But every so often, this process duplicates itself. So we come up with the same thing. But it isn't like, you know, every time you, you throw, you know, you, you, you lower a bucket full of stuff there. That, uh, that it's going to happen every time. doesn't happen every single time. A quarter of the time? An eighth of the time? Oh, um, I'd say one out of three times. One out of three. One, one out of three. And, and I, don't, I don't know if it is, was the amount of time down do, do there. Do you possess any of this yourself? I, I, it sounds like they, should, they thought to have a control bucket of ice. They should maybe be controlling some other variables here. I don't... <laughs> I don't even know what... <laughs> <laughs> Look, you got perpetual... Energy source. You gotta. You gotta. I feel like they should be selling buckets of this for a billion dollars because that's <laughs> that's right. I mean, even if it only works one out of three times, like let's say yeah. all the variables are identical, the same, but it's it's yeah. pure just one out of three. You still got a good business on your hands there. Still got. Hey, you want infinite free energy? <laughs> there you go. Took nothing with me, Art. I I uh, would not. Uh... Uh, what what is the word? I you know, this, this is theirs for now. Um, Let's say for now, okay. What about noise? Did it, it, at any point did it make any noise? No, we 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 never we during this this process that we went through. Uh, it the hole the ice what what we we already established the metal makes no noise even if you bang it with a sledgehammer. Yeah, so I don't know why lowering a bucket of ice down and up would. I just wondering if he's, is the ice squealing for its life? I don't. Yeah. The ice sings. <laughs> it's but you know it's 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 not good. It's not a good singer. They're funny little songs, but they're in spe you know it's it's a little it's hard to understand. It's a little yeah. pitchy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no pretty good for ice yeah. at all. It made no noise, and we did not notice anything from the surface, anything particularly unusual. Okay, at all. I mean, there was you know it just but. Were there any markings on this metal uh, that were discernible? In other words, anything uh, marked or scratched in English or any other language? Well, we, we went, we went, we went at it with a, a, a hacksaw blade. You couldn't, you couldn't hacksaw it. You couldn't even dent it. The Basque people and the native people have been there. They've been watching this hole for at least eighty years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And suddenly, we invite Mel. 
and he first of he drops a wrench. Yeah. And that, then he brings a hacksaw. Like uh -huh. this, and then he goes on radio to talk about it. Like Mel, do not let Mel near your hole. This is my public service announcement. Don't let Mel near your hole. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna try and fucking bring a saw at that son of a bitch. <laughs> what Mel? If you yeah. let Mel near your hole, he's bringing power tools. Yeah, and you don't. I'm gonna you, try and cut that. Look, you <laughs> might want. I don't know if you want power tools near your hole or not. <laughs> I've been experimenting with medicinal <laughs> plants, and let me tell you, we need to cut this. Mm. Oh, uh, the ice screams! Oh, very good brain cramp. The ice screams chocolate. Chocolate. We all scream for ice cream. Scream. Do you remember? Well, you probably don't, Paul. I think they're a little. There was a Christian heavy metal band called One Bad Pig. I do remember. I, so I don't. And then it's called that, Ice Cream I remember Sunday. that they existed, but I, you know. Yeah. Ice Cream uh, Sunday. The cassette, their, their, their cassette tape in the 80s. Mm. And they had a song called Ice Cream Sunday. And a duet they did with Johnny Cash, which blew my mind. Oh, Somehow, wow. for some reason, Johnny Cash did a song with these guys. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the trivia time, Dave. It is the trivia time. You know what, Paul? Yeah. I feel like we should do two questions in a row here. Okay. And you know why? Two questions in a row? Why is that? Because there's no rules? Because there's no rules, Paul. Well, uh, my rule is you got to read the super chat here. Okay. First one. Timothy Harmon, $2. Again, Mel makes, bet bu makes belt buckles using hacksaw blades. Yeah. Apparently, he makes a lot of things. We've got yeah. a real saw three situation going on here. You keep Mel the frick away from your hole. That's all I'm saying. Also, he's gonna blab about your hole all over <laughs> That's right. all over the radio. So, a lot of things you don't want to. Ooh! While working for George Lucas, Paul earned himself a writing credit listed on IMDb for which short film? I feel like Paul should get this one right. Mm. Was it Star Wars: Revenge of the Clones, R two D two, Beneath the Dome? Caravan of Courage, an Ewok adventure, or Binks, the hero's journey. Uh, there, yeah, all uh, all good answers. All good. All, all good all, answers. All good. All good answers. All good answers. Two of those are real movies. Mm. <laughs> do you remember Caravan of Courage, Paul? I sure do. I sure do. I'm, as as most people have seen it. Uh, yeah, I think you can still watch it on Disney Plus. In fact, if you wanted, to. yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, it is something. A lot of it yeah, shot it on something. Skywalker Ranch. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they, they, it was cheap. Because you just you do it in George's backyard. <laughs> yeah, it was in fact R two D two beat the dome. Why don't we just keep it keep it running? We'll just, we'll just keep, keep it running. It we'll do another one right now. Yeah, we'll do no another worries. one. So we're we got but we got we got to fill. Oh, I can actually skip to the next question. Let's just skip. Boom. Let's just skip. You know why, Paul? Because there's no, no rules. rules. Just two weeks ago, David, who's me, celebrated his birthday right here live on the air from time zone to time zone. How old is he now? Am I 45, 44, 37, or 21? Now I'm putting Paul on blast. <laughs> Does one of my best friends remember oh, how old I, I yeah, am? Yeah, well, no, I, I know how this one. I know this. Yeah, one. well, there you go. <laughs> this is a, now we all see really all of this trivia. This all this shit I did was just a trap, right? That's now right. No, Paul. I was just, yeah, you know, I just tried. Was trying to give other people their chance to put their number in before mm -hmm. I did. So you know. See, it's a little tricky because I was drinking a very old whiskey. It's that true. Was, you you actually had me fooled for a second there that I thought maybe yeah. you were referring to something, but you, but it turns out I I, I outsmarted oh, myself as flat, right? as one is wont to do. <laughs> that is entirely incorrect, skeptics. <laughs> it is correct. I am. Most people got it right. Forty five. Forty five years young. Just something old people say to make themselves feel so less old. 
happened to you? Well, that was so we had two questions. One, one about you, and one about me. Right? Yeah. It's almost like I knew what was coming up. Almost like, almost like you did. All right. Well, let's get back to. Uh, oh, we get back to chat. Mel. Well, well we got a super chat. chat. Yep. Trick question. Dave doesn't age, says skeptics and scoundrels for two dollars. It's not a trick question, you. and I definitely do. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you. Uh, if you go back on the community t community tab of uh, this channel, you will see a picture from Dave and I from about eight years ago. I think eight or nine mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. I, was I it the one that the, the Calgary comic yeah, show? Yeah, it was where I had crazy long hair. That's like fifteen years ago, Paul. No, really. Oh, yeah, man. man. I'm sorry. <laughs> eight, I'm like eight years ago. You fucking wish, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah. All right. Fifteen. <laughs> fine. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, but you do have very long hair. Yeah, and I am maybe seventy pounds head lighter in that. Mm. You know, we've we've all changed. We've all changed. That was a really good uh, man. Those first couple of years at the Calgary uh, comic show, those were yeah, those were we good had fun. fun. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. Uh, Jay Victor says yeah. Caravan, <laughs> Caravan of Courage was definitely one of the movies movies of all, of times. all times. It definitely. <laughs> Although yep. it was technically a TV movie, it was. Yeah, it was like a. Wasn't it like one of the like Disney ABC, like Sunday yeah. Night Disney or whatever? Yep. That was things. before Disney yeah. owned ABC, but it was on ABC. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Back in the day. All right. How do we know the photo wasn't no, generated? No, just the because we would have made a much more flattering photo. If you were gonna, yeah, and, <laughs> I, I mean, normally if you have a metal thing that's hollow, you could tap on it and you would hear that it's hollow. Right. But with this thing here, you know, if you're beating on it with a, you know, like a, a tire iron. No, no. Like, Look, if you're beating you know, on Paul, it, if you put some metal in your hole and you're beating on it. Normally, <laughs> you'd hear it. <laughs> no, Art, I don't know if you know. <laughs> if you have some kind of metal plug in your hole and you're beating on it beating. <laughs> theoretically like let's just say for example you know mistress tatiana is upset for some reason and beating on the metal plug in your hole it's gonna make a noise and probably you're gonna make a noise but in this particular case completely silent completely silent Demonetized. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, uh, this actually relates to me. This is Olivia Williams. Yes. Uh. I remember the little girl of Caravan and Courage showing up in EU novels back then. This is actually my fault. Uh, yeah. Sindel. Yeah. Uh, so I brought. Thanks, freaking Paul. Um. I brought Teak back into the universe uh, to actually officially canonize the. So in there was two. There was the two movies. There was um, Battle for Endor, which was the but Caravan. Of, one. Was Caravan of Courage the first one? Caravan of Courage was the first one. Battle yeah. for Endor was the second one. In Battle of yeah. Endor, it has Wilford Brimley. Yes, it does. And Wilford yeah. Brimley's sidekick was named Teak, and I brought Teak back into the universe. And then uh, there was a little thing was, well, what if we brought Sindel back was, was in the story group. And so this was indirectly my fault that Sindel came back. And as I recall, Sindel was uh, a member of the media was that the house that was what she was she was oh, doing. like chorus cant or whatever and yeah like as an adult so shadows she escaped, the empire she or escaped, something um, yeah. indoor. And, in and, some way, we became, don't understand. And became a reporter of sorts, as, as I recall. Don't they get rescued at the end of Battle for Endor? Like another yeah, ship do. shows up or something? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, right. I think, are the parents dead? The parents are dead. Oh, the parents yeah. die at the start yeah. of Caravan of yeah. Courage. Or, yeah. like, yeah. It's just the kids and the Ewoks. The kids and the Ewoks. No, the yeah. Ewoks I think, If I remember right, boy, and no, I Wicked. don't. Feel confident, no, but they, the parents die in the crash, right, or shortly after the yeah, crash. In timeline wise, this is before Return of the Jedi, so yeah, uh, Wick, none of the Ewoks leave. The Ewoks are all there, but I didn't yeah. like that it was set before Return of the Jedi because that totally means that then Wicket comes across Princess Leia. He's already had good experiences with like with these humans. Ewoks have already had positive human experience, and yet they're yeah. still giving them grief, like close personal friends with 
right. humans, right? Yeah, yeah, so I didn't like that so much. But prequelitis yeah. is always a problem. Uh, yeah. Vishanti writes... Mel's well, we missed, an... uh, we missed one from Timothy Harmon before Vishanti. Well, I'm going to read this one because it's on the screen now. Okay. Vishanti writes, Mel's developing a new technique unknown to us, a method involving sounding. <laughs> do, you, do you know what sounding is, Paul? No, I don't, actually. So that's, yeah. I don't even want to. No, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go Google that myself later. Maybe don't. Okay, maybe I'll just won't. Uh, it involves urethras and mm, no. metal rods. Mm. Okay. Let's just... <laughs> um, yeah. Timothy Harmon says, Mel made belt buckles out of tire irons. Well... Yeah, yeah, and, sure And did. whatever whatever spare change he sees lying around. <laughs> whatever spare change he finds in red envelopes. Yep. Well, dig it around. Jesus, Vishanti. <laughs> Uh, knee whole collar, Sid. I don't get, I don't know what's going on here. Is it, are these backwards? Green, why green foe to ped sue us? Depth of, I don't know, I don't know. I don't I feel like it. this is a reference I do not get, but thank and you. I apologize. Thanks, thanks for the super chat. Anyway, now he's probably deeply disappointed in both of us, Paul. That's probably like, true. I have I this amazing joke. I also don't know what sounding is, so I'm just not your guy. Yeah, that's fine. Don't <laughs> just. Uh, so we have Oak City Gamers gave us a super chat for a dollar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Oak City Gamers. Any noise? It doesn't. It, that doesn't give you a gauge as to whether it's I hollow did. or not. So it was absorbing, probably. I promise everyone, if you stick around, if you, I don't know how long we're going to be able to go, but if you stick around, the best part of this is not the entendres. <laughs> no, is, we've got, so, is, so how far, how far are we into this now, Paul? So 24 minutes. I feel like we're maybe six minutes away from stuff starting to happen. So here's we what we can't just jump ahead. Also, we never set the trivia timer. Here's. Oh, damn it. Here's the conundrum now, Paul. Yep. We're two hours and 20 minutes into this stream. Yep. We're like halfway through this stream, and we haven't even hit the good stuff yet. Yeah. As crazy ass as all this shit is, we have not hit the good stuff. Right. Now, I'm fine with a four-hour stream. Well, that's because we, our last several episodes have been four hours, so whatever. I live significantly west of you. So I am only, I, I don't know when I'm losing power. I will be losing you're, power. Yeah, you're probably going to be living in the dark for like. Uh, so I'm fine to just go, but we'll see. We'll see how it, we'll, let's see how it plays out. I, I'm actually r relatively encouraged that we're at the half, we're at least at the halfway mark ish. So, oh, I didn't catch. So I'm going to be honest. With you. I did not catch that. I didn't catch it. I didn't catch your reference. And that is a movie that I deeply enjoy. Now I feel a little embarrassed. And there you go. There's a whole the sounding. Yeah. Now, all right. Moving on. Anyways, so we're gonna. Are you? You're saying we're gonna plow on through this? Yeah. Oh, is this like a wielding reference? Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. But it wasn't called sounding. It was wielding. The wheel. Anyway, off we go. All noise. I mean, there would have Ooh, maybe just sucking no. it up. It maybe hurricane is stuck off of Boston now, moving very slowly north. So maybe. So who knows what's going to happen? Right. Well, I'm, I was already expecting that. Well, I mean, for me, it's Saturday already. Yeah. But I was already expecting that it was going to be more afternoon, evening, as opposed to like first thing in the morning. So weirding way into the ground. I have no idea. That's, that's not my area of expertise. All I know is what I what I could see with my own eyes and ho hopefully uh, by the we end of the night, maybe how somebody will have some... Heartbroken I am that Dune Chapter 2 has been pushed back to uh, sometime next year. I didn't the, actually know that you were break. heartbroken about it. I mean, it's sad. I it's mean, very sad. Heartbroken is too strong and I'm 100% on the side of the you know, it's like, yes, I'm all for the writers and the strike and what they're striking for and, and yeah. the thing. but it's also also I want to 
watch my goddamn Dune chapter two. So just, but also, you know. right, like, so I would have been, I would have been heartbroken if it was like part of, well, I would, I would have been concerned a little bit if it was like, well, we, because we're tinkering or we're doing whatever. Like, I know it's, it's basically locked. Yeah. They're just, have made a financial decision that. Which I mean, to be fair, the first Dune was the same because it was COVID, and um, well, the first Dune they made terrible financial just, decisions because they just put it on WB that they didn't understand anything. We're just going to put it on WB the same day and hope that works out. Like no, yes, but they at least um, why can't I think of his name? Or French Max Canadian Plus. director Villeneuve. Villeneuve, who's like, no, you're not. Yeah, I'm not going to let you only release this on streaming. It has to be in theaters, and it has to be when lockdown's yeah. over. So. They at least he pushed it back what like a year and a half or something, right? Yeah. But, so it ended up being in both places as opposed to just yeah. on HBO Max. But um, because if you didn't see that in the theater, you sold yourself short. The sound design right. is so good. But in they that absolutely movie. neutered their theatrical. Oh, uh, amount terrible! By, yeah, and but they kept they, doing it. And yeah, it's like, they I kept don't... thinking Wonder Woman eighty four, which ended up being terrible. There was a whole string of movies they did this to Godzilla versus Kong, all a lot of those. Anyway. Yeah. We're not here for that. That's for no the panel to frame. I will say I kept there. buying tickets for friends of mine to come see that movie in the theater because I'm like, you have to see this mm. movie in a theater with like, yep, at most surround sounds, and yeah, everybody no, did and was I, like, it's so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did the same priority. It's like we're not watching it on the streaming. We're going to the theater. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, despite the covids, did the despite the locals COVID. believe about this whole? Well, well, I mean, you literally just got back from Nevada, what, tonight or yesterday? Oh, no, or this was last, week. last I, week. I got home the night that you did the show uh, as the replay. That, that's right. You told me. Okay. And, and uh, so it was, it was one of those, uh, you know, it was probably Richard Hoagland say, one of those synchronous moments there where, ooh, you know, I mean, I'm talking to this guy, and he's talking to, talking to Mel Waters, you know, uh -huh. and, yes. and, and in the truck. And, he, and, and then I hear myself, and, and it's like, hey. It, I mean, so it was, it was just too much, and so I had, to, I had to get in touch with you. Okay, well, again, what did these uh, locals, what was the lore uh, that they told you about the whole? What did well, they well, again, one, one, of, one, of, one of the old, older Basque uh, men that I talked to, and this, this was practically as I was heading out of town, uh, it told me that was a very, uh, uh, to him, he felt it was a very spiritual place, but he, he knew the, the thing from his youth, that it was there exactly the way it is. And he was in his late 80s, so I'm assuming he's known it for 70 years. So he's known it at least from the 30s. And from what he tells me, it's been there as long as the Basque had been in that in that part of the country, and that goes well into the 1800s. It has existed like that. Uh, uh, to, to be honest, the, the uh, Native Americans that I talked to were aware of it, but they did not want to deal with it. Uh, uh, they they did not want to oh interact interact with it is that a good word, uh, a word. All, all all they would do is pick some of the uh, uh, the various plants that I needed that were in the general vicinity of it because mm -hmm. I wanted very specific ones that I had recommended and they knew yes. of them. All right, uh, are they now growing some of these plants in the vicinity of this whole? Well, or some where? of those plants are there. They they appear to be uh -huh. indigenous to the area, so uh -huh. they did harvest some you know uh, uh, early on in the season there. So then again, you saw similar vegetation around this hole to the one in Washington. Well, that, that's what that's why I asked them for, uh, gotcha. you know, if they knew, you know, I described to them what it was, you know, and the shape of the things and, you know, the size of the various, and, and they said, oh, yeah, we, we, we know that there, but in, in terms of why why why, uh, why the entree, I assume that the, uh, the Native Americans knew about this all along there. And I assume that they must have had some conversation with the Basque there that, you know, would this be okay? Are you interested in this guy? Blah, whatever. And apparently there was no objection. So I have access to this property. Well, But I want to respect my access, okay? What about an experiment, Mel, similar to the one you did in Washington, uh, lowering some sort of line or better yet some sort of camera on the end of a line or uh, we 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 didn't we didn't do that uh, between between the Damascus and the uh, the native americans and me we we you know we don't have you know too many nickels to rub together but uh uh i will tell you what we did do what one, one of the basque uh, uh uh kind of a wise uh wise acres <laughs> he wanted to lower some uh uh, marijuana into the hole and see if it would improve its uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh 
and uh, you so know, then it would be a pothole, right? Uh, well, I, I guess I guess <laughs> it could be that. That's my that. <laughs> Long setup for a joke. That's, oh, good that's, job, Bart. That's even longer than your jokes. Oh. They get a pothole. Thought of it that way, but uh, oh. uh, he wanted Art to do that, and funny. one guy wanted to be lowered into the hole himself. Ah, uh, well, now you see, in the hour preceding your, I business, heard that. Oh, did you? Uh, two I people heard who that. would actually like to be lowered into such a hole. Now I know that you believe. Dave wants to be in Mel's hole. Well, I don't know about being in Mel's hole. <laughs> Why? Her? That's what I thought you said before. You wanted to. You wanted. You were willing to be inside Mel's hole. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I probably did say that. <laughs> so I guess now I'm going to back that to the fucking hilt. That's nowhere else on earth I'd rather be than inside Mel's hole. Uh, uh, Severage yeah. Cobra. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. You got to get down. You got to get down low to get high. All right. Got to get down low, Paul. All right. I don't know. I don't I don't know references. I don't know things. Well, I was just being basic. Just oh, no. Got to get down low. Get down get high. low. Low to get high. We're never going to get you your late night uh, radio in the powers of the whole in Washington to the degree that in the original agreement, now voided, I suppose, you were to be upon your death uh, buried by being dropped into the hole, right? How I wanted my remains to be dealt with, yes. Now that apparently is not going to happen as of subsequent uh, events. Oh, I... After his ex-wife, man, just he was going to be reincarnated. It's gonna be, or, or it's gonna be resurrected tough. Yeah. like the dog, and now, uh, uh, now I can't. Uh, I've got uh, another place to go now. Would you really want? Better. Yes. Would you really want to be? Uh, I suppose when with, I'm some, gone. with some ceremony, dropped into the hole. Hey, you know, just uh, give me a decent. I don't know what it is when you put someone in a hole. Is that interned or? Uh, I don't know what you'd call that. I, I don't know either. Well, one, one of these guys wanted to go into, you know, li literally, he wanted to be lowered into the hole. Uh, he wanted to, you know, be put in a, a gondola or something and lowered, you know, from the winch into the uh, the hole and, and go down as far as we had line, which, again, was 1,500 feet. Uh, I can assure you, Mel, uh, we could get sponsors for you who would uh, get you all the line you need. Maybe organized yeah. religion would be willing to sponsor an expedition down the hole. I don't know if they would be, honestly. Mm. <laughs> Maybe pants. I don't know. Maybe pants. Mm. Absolutely. I think some we I I mean if Mel Mel's willing to reach out to me. You're right. I don't work for free. I'm you know, Heath Ledger's Joker, Paul. Mm. Good life That's advice. Right. You're, if you're, you're good, good for you something, do. yep. Never do it for free. Right? I'm key at getting sponsorships, but I'm not gonna do it for free. Mel can't just have this expertise, you know. That's right. But that's for the, but for some kind of finder's fee. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm I'm a whore. Absolutely. Mm. I'll I will work for anybody for for money. Yeah. You Organized know, religion. Look, we, we talked Come about him going into the hole because we said, look, see what it did to the ice. Oh, that's a good point. This is. We, we, we sent a bucket of ice down into this hole, and it's sitting up there on the surface burning. I mean, what are you made out of mostly? Water. Water. What's going to happen to a human being down there? What, what properties are uh, going on fuel. over there? Uh, yeah, they had, uh, you, know, you know, but I mean, I mean the, the Basque are, uh, as, as a race, are fearless. When the Moors invaded Spain, they refused uh -huh. to go into Basque country. Well, okay, what, what did this man say his motivation was for wanting to go into the hole? I mean, obviously... He, 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 he was just a young, stupid. headstrong... Uh, you know, you know, in, in his probably late twenties, early thirties, fellow that wanted to go into it. He said, "This is going to be a great adventure. I want to go in here. I want to see what's going on." Uh, but he wasn't thinking with his brain. Well, there are obviously a lot of people like that, Mel, because I had two of them in the first hour of the program, and they said they would love to be lowered into such a hole. Oh, and well, this one, if anything, remember the guy who wanted to go in a shark cage? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, the second or third episode. Yeah, maybe even the first one. Might have been the very first. Uh, yeah. So I remember enough about what happens in this episode. I don't remember all these. A lot of these details are coming at me by surprise. I didn't remember them. 
But one mm-hmm. needs it. That's going to be a mistake. You are, you, they're not going to, just the spoiler, uh, I'm guessing the people looking back at this will be, yeah, that'll maybe don't lower me down the hole. More attractive. Maybe. Well, we well, we uh, we determined to do, and and I'm ashamed to admit it. Oh, is that we decided to lower a sheep really to the hole, really? a living sheep. You did. Oh, here we go. The hole. We, here we, we go. had uh, a crate. You know, the sheep could fit into that. We could attach the cables to. And we're going to take the sheep, stick them, you know, stick them in the crate, and then lower them down, you know, to the 1500 foot level. That's all we have. Like the ice. Yeah. We decided that we were going to take the sheep and put them in a crate and lower them into the hole. We led the sheep to the hole and it just... Before we get to what happens to the sheep. Uh Uh-huh. Because we got to clear the decks, man. Yeah. What happens to the sheep. Uh, Yeah. We got a super chat from Jay Victor. We do have a super chat from Jay Victor. If I remember if I recall, go ahead. Well, if I recall correctly, Big Rope was a sponsor a couple of shows back. Maybe they could put bill. Very good point, Jay Victor. Rope was absolutely a sponsor of the they show. Would be, they would be perfect. I want to say four episodes ago. Yeah, mm. yeah, they'd be all over this. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Um, I feel like we should do our trivia question before. Let's we do our go- trivia question, Paul. Before we Let's get do to our trivia um... question. So there's two trivia questions left. Oh, I feel like let's just get through because because now we're getting the sheep down the hole, and it's. Do we want to just power through the two trivia questions? And, I think and then so. We're done with I think let's okay. let's do it. Okay. Um, unless you object, I have no objection because you know what, Paul? Mm-hmm. There's no is rules because there, there's no rules. All right. There's no rules, Paul. We can do whatever we want. We're the only uh, stream on YouTube. As Dave mentioned, we'll see who the winners are, but you know uh, the winners should. At the end, the leave a leave a contact. Leave a. I feel like we're all winners tonight. We are all winners, but uh, who the who the top the high score? Whoever receives the high score will be. Yeah. Everyone's a winner. In 1996, Doctor Jonathan Reed shot an alien and put it in his freezer as retaliation for what? Vivisecting <laughs> Doctor Reed's cattle, repeated and vigorous anal probes. Killing his dog with an energy weapon or attempting to abduct Dr. Reed. Real theme tonight. <laughs> Real, you know. There absolutely is, uh, yeah. Very, is I'm no, I'm not a Freudian, no, you know. <laughs> Uh, also, the, there's literally there's no metaphor in this whatsoever. This shot an alien and put him in his freezer. That's not a metaphor for nothing. That's nope. what happened. That is literally <laughs> everything here is just literally word for word. <laughs> I read something recently where somebody was like, "Yeah, so this guy is like was not a doctor, had no doctorate. All of this is they find that it's like it's all made up." <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, he uh, the the, uh, yep. the alien cut, cut his, his dog, dog in, in half, half <laughs> with some kind of crazy energy weapon. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So in my therefore, freezer. as I recall, he his first response though was to grab a stick and try uh-huh. to hit the alien with his the, yeah. the laser weapon. The, yeah, the energy weapon alien. I mean, he clocked him with a stick. Yeah. Yeah. I remember we enjoyed the first episode of that quite a bit more. The second actually gets fairly dark and depressing, yeah. and we were like, oh, this is a real downer, mm. actually. I don't want to. All right, Dave. Which of the following dedicated phone lines has not Ooh, been has featured not on an episode of Toast okay. to Toast? Toast to Toast. Go Call to if you have a true watching. ghost story. Call if you are the actual Antichrist. Call if you are an actual vampire, or call if you are an actual time traveler. So which of which these of those? Yeah, have we, you and I, Dave, you and I, in this YouTube which channel, have we not, not covered? Yeah, because all of those have been things that have been on the Art Bell show. Correct. Yes, but not all of them have been on our YouTube channel. Oh, well, that's not a meaning to do. And I think most people are probably well, all the true fans. Well, they should and hopefully then, 
Hopefully they should yeah. at least they should have been eliminate the one that we did last week. Yes, which was the hopefully Antichrist nobody line. guessed the Antichrist one because <laughs> Jesus Christ, we just did that fourteen days ago, people. Yeah. Oh, most people got this one. Most people only, got that one. Yeah, and only a couple got the Antichrist for this. So yeah. Now I feel a little bad for calling out the Antichrist people. I'm, mm, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. They might be a new viewer. We don't know. Or they're just, you know, just thought it was funny. Maybe they just thought it was funny. I mean, I've certainly done that more than once. That's right. Always go for the joke. The, uh, <laughs> what was the one where you did the trivia? I didn't know the answers and I just guessed C every single time and <laughs> right, yeah. was right like six times. Because <laughs> <laughs> computers are bad at randomness. Yeah. I want to skip to... We've had problems when I've skipped to the end before, so I'm just letting it count down. Just let it go, because, yeah. Yeah. What, we got, Dave, we, we, we can take this, the 20 seconds. If I can wait for five seconds and be patient, this mm. might be our first... We we have not had the problem. Look at this! We made it to all the way to the end of a trivia. Hey! Well, there we go in chat. And Quasi Mayo was like 10 out of 10, but pretty slow in some, but ended up being our winner tonight. Mm-hmm. All right. Congratulations. Did not expect. Congratulations. Jay Victor super chatted for two. Well, Did we'll not expect. That. Oh. Oh, but it's relevant to this. Did All not right. expect a softball question as the closer. It was a softball question for the closer. Yeah. Um, no. So, yeah. So, Quasi Mayo, if you would like a lovely toast to toast tumbler. Yes. Uh, then. Then one you, uh, of us, one uh, of us, one of us. Uh, I feel I, I I came in sixth. What is sixth in a trivia game? Yeah, my own show. That's a little embarrassing, right mm -hmm. there. How All many right. did you get right? Does it say? I can't see. The, I got uh, uh, I got eight correct. Jesus, Paul, I you were there. You were yep. there for all of them. Um. Anyhow, so yeah, leave, leave a message in the comments or send an email to paul at paulogia.com and mm -hmm. we will mm -hmm. get you hooked up with a Tumblr. Yes. a uh, Your own Toast to Toast, you will join the Tumblr Club. Club Tumblr. And uh, in the future future times, you can brag about how the you Tumblr. the trivia. Yes, next time when you go, you know, in a month from now when you get your fancy glass, mm -hmm. you can show up in chat and be like, or... You know, post a picture of you with it in appropriate hashtags in your social media. Be a whore for us. Brag. Show us off to your friends. Advertise our show for free. <laughs> I guess uh, not for free. We're sending you a glass. Brain. And I say we, but I mean Paul. Writes, I watched this chat, then time traveled to the 90s to call to call in just so I could get the question correct. Well, that's if that's how you're going to use your time travel. Using one of the normal types of time travel. Um, it has been established that, that neither Dave or I no. will invent time travel in our life. No. Because we made an agreement that we would go back to the time travel show. Yep. If we ever Call invented in. time travel. Now, just to be clear, it didn't mean if we, if we like, so, say, purchased a time machine or something like that, we weren't there obligated. also. Perhaps there is some physical limitation on time travel preventing us from doing such a thing, Paul. Oh, maybe we sure. Like maybe you can only go back, or maybe know, it's an only only go forward type time travel machine. Like, or maybe it's one of those like you can't go to a year where you're already alive. Like there can't be mm. two of you, so you got to go to like, you know, in your case, pre nineteen forty two because you're, saying, you're so saying very there's old. Still hope there's still hope yeah. that you or I might invent time travel, or experience it. Okay. I think I think the book's pretty close that neither you or I are going to invent time travel. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think we're. I think we can be honest. I'm not about even that. really. To be honest, I'm not even tinkering in the area. No. So. Yeah. Never no. really took much <laughs> physics or no. really any kind of engineering skills. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but if you need a Minecraft video? server, holy shit, man, I can set you that up like nobody's business. Got a VM, got to be great. We got uh, we got the trivia. It's all it's That's all trivia. Trivia is all done. Trivia is finished. So now we can just straight on 
tell yep. Mel's hole. We can just experience all of the details of Mel's hole in the, you know, from the depth. Out. I mean, okay, you know, we... and just because he's going to forget, they're they're gonna lower they're they're gonna lower a sheep. Into gonna the lower hole. sheep into the hole. Yep. Like every other animal. Yeah, it, but I mean, it was like totally, totally not, not happy. It was, it was not happy, and and I, you know, I have a lot of respect for animals, and and um, it, it, it's a, it's amazing what animals uh, really know. Um, and what they sent. Well, you're right about that. And so if it was uh, terrified... Of... It was terrified, so the, uh, the bass got the sheep uh, away from the hole. And, and, and again, a lot of what I'm going to say now, uh, I am uh, thoroughly ashamed of. Uh, and and uh, That's all right. Just give us the raw, he, the raw he, truth. He basically uh, stunned uh, the sheep by knocking it between the eyes. Mm. Got into the crate. Uh, you know, got the... Uh, if you're going to put me in a crate, I want to be stunned. Yeah. Whether there's a hole involved or not, if I'm going to be in a crate, just... It's super sure. weird that the shape <laughs> was freaked out about being stuffed in a box and lowered down. <laughs> Usually sheep are really cool about that kind of thing. Animals of all kinds. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. We do have a couple of super chats here. We've got a couple of super chats here, Paul. Yep. Paul, multiple super chats. Yeah, go ahead and read it. Red Fox, clever, clever name. Happy anniversary. Watching from the start, I got a feeling what comes out is more brown and smelly stuff. Could not be more wrong, Red Fox. Could not be more wrong. We're going to get there. Knee, I want a toast to toast, the toast to toast toaster bathtub toy that got real dark real quick wow do they sell uh bathtub toys in the shape of toasters that seems like a mistake that seems like i don't yeah well you know you run the merch store paul i guess i guess <laughs> Bold in your court it's i don't to know investigate to see whether if the, you want to have see a, whether uh, the good toaster. folks at teespring let you put a logo on an inflatable <laughs> toaster what do you let you do <laughs> toaster shaped bathtub toys? I feel like that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. I don't get know. Kids, get used to doing I this. Don't, yeah, I don't know if I uh, I'm uh, fully on board. Cable and line hooked up to it, so you know it was all securely attached. And uh, right. so just about when we got to the hole, the, the sheep just started making horrible noises. So uh -huh. he stunned it, but he didn't kill the sheep, okay? He just knocked it out. Yeah. And so it was live when he went in the box, and then it stirred when it got to the hole. Yeah. Anyway, we it was just making the worst god-awful noises. We were getting it about ready to let it go into the hole. Yeah. And, uh, Even though it had been hit in the head? It stirred by the time uh, we we got it crated up into the crate. There was oh enough room for it to god. lie down, Which, and I guess... Remember... It, Paul, animals do not like, like do not like coming up near these mystery oh, holes. The, this hole, yeah, that's right. It's the the yeah. area is devoid of uh, live live wildlife here. Mm -hmm. I agree, Webb. Yeah, Webb. I agree. Good point. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to look into that to see whether there's some kind of a toast to toast bottle opener. That seems like a natural. If nothing else, I might have to just contact somebody and get my own custom one mm. made up, but. That does seem good. Or, oh, man, a toasted -to toast, like, tap handle for, like, a kegerator. Ooh. Ooh. Which I also don't have. But all of those things. Or a toasted -to toast breathalyzer. That might be. Yeah. Thing Keep super chatting, doing. people. We'll see yeah. what we can get. We can get some. I we could stand up. I don't know. I don't, I'm, again, this is, not, this is not pleasant to talk about. But, uh uh, we we take take the sheep uh, and it's screaming and just the most piercing horrible ghastly noises coming out of this crate mm -hmm. until we get it right over where we're going to let it into the hole and then everything just stops dead silent. Mm -hmm. There's not a sound coming out of that box. Mm -hmm. There's movement coming out of the box. You can still tell. But no sound. There's, there's no sound anymore. Well, there's no. something about this hole and sound, isn't there? Uh, I, 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 I guess we, we we will make that assumption. And uh, so we started winching this sheet down into the hole, and uh, you can feel from the line as we're lowering it, the thing is struggling uh, 
fighting. I don't know if it's screaming down there, but we're not hearing yeah. this thing screaming. And uh, I think we got about halfway down into the hole, and uh, it was about to say 700 feet, and then the uh, any any movement that might have been coming from the uh, grade, we couldn't uh, couldn't feel it anymore. No, uh, no, we uh, couldn't feel. I'm not sure how much. 700 feet of rope that if like the the even the movement of a sheep i'm not sure you, anyway uh, uh. anyway they lowered this poor sheep 700 feet down yeah anything so i i don't know at 700 feet or so about half the line what what happened over there when we got to, uh, at, at this point here, the, the original experiment with the ice, you know, we were kind of nonchalant about it. You know, we just kind of lowered it down there. Well, with, with this one here, we were all gathered around the top of the hole there looking in, seeing Probably what's going on. Very apprehensive. You know, this, this is, uh, you know, this, this is kind of a serious business here. And when we hit the bottom, we, we felt, uh, up, up there, we felt like a vibration on the, count, the, on the, on the collar at a point in time when it was down there. And it, it, it it's kind of hard to describe. Well, what do you mean when you hit the bottom? When, when we hit the bottom of the rope, the, oh. the, the cable line uh, assembly that we had. We, you it, mean it, when it was all the way playing yeah, out? Yeah, when it got there, we felt, and, and it vibrated, or we, it felt like a vibration, and a sort of like a, a staticky electricity type kind of feeling. Does that, that make sense? Yes. That, that we could feel up there. Yeah. And, and so we, we got it down to, uh, you know, 1,500 feet, and, and we left there for about a half an hour. Mm. Uh, and then we decided to, uh, you know, bring it back up. Right, sure. So we, you know, we're hoisting this thing up here, cranking away, getting this thing up on there, and it's it's kind of it's kind of a job. So, uh, you know, we finally get up to the surface, and we uh, we got the. Can you hear my puppy? I can. Yeah, I think I need to go deal with that. So I'm going to. Uh... He seems uh, he seems upset. Yeah. So I'm going to. Should I just keep it playing, or do you want to chat with the chat? Um, I mean, we're at the uh, we're at the crux of it. We're at the nub of the. Uh... So I'll be able to still hear it, but do you want me to? Eh, that was a mediocre doggo. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we keep um, it playing or not? Just keep keep it playing. Yeah, keep, I'll it, keep playing. it playing. Get the okay. box out of there, and you know, one, the one thing we notice is there isn't any movement in the box. Okay, no, There's no box. We get the box there. And uh, mm -hmm. but the box from the outside looked pretty, pretty, uh, pretty normal. You know, it didn't look like some weird transformation had occurred or anything. Right. Well, I wanted to describe to you uh, how, how we're going to tell you about the, the ice that came up that, that didn't melt. Right. What it felt like. Mm -hmm. Oh, but stopped anyways. I don't know if Paul stopped it or what happened there. So, Dave, favorite whiskey? Good question, Nate. My favorite whiskey is Bowmore. Um, yep, Bowmore, uh, the darkest 15-year uh, rum cask finished or the 25-year wonderful question. Any other questions? Bitcores says, so about chat? Feels like that's half a question. It is my time to shine. Uh, what can I do? <laughs> Favorite virus. Um, I'm, uh, I'm quite fond of, you know, so this is now we're going to get into crazy talk because I actually did in fact, in school study viruses and some things. And, um, I was always fascinated by the HIV uh, AIDS virus and the way it performs and what it does in the body. So I would say AIDS. The HIV virus is my, in fact, my favorite virus in just in how, you know, weird question. What do you say? What's a good answer to that question? But that is, in fact, my answer to that question. Aliens versus extraterrestrial. I mean, it's got to be aliens. It's got to be aliens. Uh, it's extraterrestrials just sound so formal, you know. I'm a a pretty just come hang out with us kind of guy. We have a super chat from Mark Bernkopf. He's going to light the sheep on fire, isn't he? I don't want to give it away. 
just just wait and see when Paul comes back. Talk about how much I hate the Oilers. That is, Kip, I can talk at length about how much I hate the Oilers. So I grew, I'm from Calgary originally. I don't live in Calgary now, but I grew up as a child, went through elementary school in Calgary in the 80s. And I think it is very hard for somebody there are other sports rivalries like it the 80s oilers with wayne gretzky like the flames i lived in calgary calgary flames it's a city two hours away and hockey's a big deal in canada and we had very good hockey teams in the 80s but we played in a division with probably the greatest hockey team of all time two hours away and we had to play them 20 times a year and if we if the flames of the 80s were literally anywhere else geographically we would have been significantly more str- when i was a kid in school we would have in school, these were official school functions. Hate the Oilers days, where there would be like school rallies and people would go, and there'd always be the one kid who was from Edmonton who would just like wear his Oilers jersey to hate the Oilers days, just as like a ah, screw you, everybody else. It's it's very, very hard to describe. There's a couple like Washington, Dallas. Uh, there's a few like really classic long term Montreal Boston like rivalry cities, Calgary and Edmonton in the 80s. If you weren't there, I have absolutely watched Letter and Kenny and Shorzy, by the way. Love them both. Love Shorzy more. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Hello, are you muted? We're good. No. So apparently... Kip's got me talking about boilers. Oh, okay. Well. Oh, fuck, Kip. I would so love to sit down and have a beer with you. Someday. Something's going to happen. Someday Paul's going to tell me ahead of time. He's like, oh, I'm going to like Calgary or Vancouver for some conference or whatever. And I'm just going to go. I don't really want to attend any talks about any kind of like scriptural (laughs) whatever, blah, 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 words I don't understand. But I will go with him just to be like, I'm going to hang out with like Kip and you know whoever else, and we'll just go up for beers after you. You can have your panels of about whatever, and then we'll go. Well, ahead actually, the good news is yeah. I have uh, I have a family in both of those cities. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you never know. I might be doing yeah. But sometimes when you have like a skeptic conference or something, I'm just gonna All I'm right. just gonna show up. I'm just gonna come, and then I'll hang out like after hours, and then during the day I'll just go and like check out local historic forts or something like that. Did you cover? The uh, we already read Mark Fernkoff's. All super right. chat well, now it's but, been on screen yeah and, uh jr uh, we, pence oh we missed one well ah. we've got two more here okay I just, my uh did you did you stun the whole things the whole thing's your gone dog <laughs> yes i stunned my my puppies I, I do need to set up that's the next the next level of complexity is actually for the bella cam because bella the bella cam is, there have been multiple fine. requests in chat to see your good boy Good girl. Good girl, whatever. Fuck yep. Bella. Yep. J.R. Pence. I love Bella. I love Bella very much, everybody. I get sass about it in mm-hmm. comments sometimes about the shit I talk about Bella. <laughs> well, you're allergic to pups, so... I am allergic to pups. Me and Bella actually get along very well. So, Bella the, is very... So, here's the conundrum. I am allergic to dogs, but I actually deeply love dogs. And so, I cannot help but, like, play with and... St- give good scritches to and like let a dog chew on my arm mm. when I'm around dogs and then like my arm will get all puffy and swollen. Oh, there we go. So I just took this picture right now. Uh, Bella yeah. is very concerned because uh, there's a storm happening and so yeah. that is, there, is, is there is favorite. it lightning? Yeah. So there's lightning but there's not, so when there's thunder is when they freak out. Anyway. That's exactly it, Kip. The Flames teams in the 80s were very good. And if they were in any other division, they would be remembered as like, this was a significantly good dynasty hockey team. 
but they were right next to the goddamn fucking Oilers, the Messier. But, but I pose this to you: if yeah. not for the Oilers, well, they were building the team specifically. That to team fight wouldn't the have existed yeah. if you're, like if, if the Oilers had sucked. I yeah, contend I, that the the Flames would not have been as good. No, I I I will I won't fight you on that. You're right. Yeah. The the flame it was a deliberate. It was reaction. a cold war, and this was pre like there was no um... because this is back in the old Con Smythe days when it was much more, and you played so many division games. Yeah, and, right. and so not like, only that, but there was no salary cap. No, and the no. Oilers and the Oilers and the Flames were have teams. Yeah, you'd be so they had money. In the they had money to burn. You know, as they a lot could. of the Canadian teams were much more. They would lock up young prospects much right. earlier. Yeah. Anyway, we need to read the super chats. We got so many super chats. Where a former Christian takes a sip of coffee. Yes, that is actually a good description. Did we read J.R. Pence's? I think we missed J.R. Pence's. Uh, I had it on screen, and then we got to talk about the. But then we got, got. Reverse transcription was groundbreaking. I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means, Paul? I don't actually. Oh. Sorry, J.R. Pence. We're too stupid to understand your super chat. <laughs> um, We're just that's... a sip of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's literally every day. That is, that's out. a very good description of my live channel for sure. Mm -hmm. um, J. Victor merch idea. Toast to toast Mel's whole risque toys. Ooh. <laughs> I can get a, maybe get a sponsor with, uh, what's the, what's the one company that, uh, there's the Adam and Eve. I think that's one of the oh, companies. Yeah. There's a couple. I'm a, that familiar you do, with them. That, that you know what, Paul? YouTube. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. All we'll right. talk off channel. Yeah. And uh, and we got that one. And then we got uh, only Dave's. Timothy Harmon. Ooh, Bella Cam. Bella Cam. We would pay for that. All right. Well, if we would like well, to. Uh, Timothy Harmon put his money where his mouth is. Anybody That's else right. who wants a Bella Cam? Yep. Yeah. Okay. My new favorite feature. All right. Well, now we need to get back. To I, the I'm gonna. I flatter myself. I think I would be an excellent preacher. You know, I got it. I have officiated weddings before. I Fun feel fact. like you would do. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think actually you'd do very well. Yeah. I have a flexible relationship with the truth, which is, I think, an excellent. <laughs> uh, and I am charismatic AF. You, yeah, you get a lot of electronic. Uh oh. Equipment. Are you, you hearing that? Those uh, do not eat packets. Oh yeah, I can hear the like, you talking yeah. about the Never melt hole. The yeah, out of the packet. No, never. Oh. Well, if you take it out there and you feel the desiccant between your sell fingers, a mug, please. Kind of Oak City like Gamers, we absolutely bag. sell mugs. What we is already sell. Well, I have. A, I don't I have, have one a, here. I don't have it with me. It's upstairs. I'd go grab it. But there's toast to toast mugs you can buy today. You can go right now. Oh, Paul's running. Paul's running to grab it. Mm-hmm. Right there. That is a that is a thing that you can own, Oak City Gamers. Maybe there's a link in the description. If not, there's on my main channel for sure. I don't know. Whatever. You're you're mm -hmm. all smart. Fucking Google it. Figure it out. That's right. But you can buy those. You can buy those. Mugs. I had that sort of. Re it, 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 you try it someday, and it, all right. you'll. Uh, yeah, I've uh, always just thrown those away. Oh well, you don't eat them, obviously. No, no, no. Okay, so we, I, 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 I just struck me there that you know I'm trying to you know trying to describe this thing in the detail um, that I can, and so I, I just went back to the uh, the desiccant. Uh, sorry, but we, we I'm laughing at Michael Smith's comment because it's actually incredibly accurate. <laughs> yeah, that is the sheep is dead. in many ways like our sheep. relationship. Okay, it looks like a normal sheep over right. there. And uh, and it's dead. It's dead. There, there's no there's no sign of life. You know, you poke at it. There's nothing. They killed the uh, sheep. Nothing going on with this this sheep here. Mm -hmm. He's dead. Uh, well, I'm saying here, but that's a generic. After making horrible noises. And I don't, I, don't, I don't know from sheep. Okay, <laughs> show me a sheep. I can't tell what it is. Gotcha. Uh, me either. Okay, uh, but uh, we take a. You were talking over them. Yeah. No. No. Just the show me a sheep. I don't know what it is. It's a no. fucking sheep. It's, no, no, yeah. no, because no, because he was trying to clarify that he didn't. Yeah, know that he has, he, he's not a sheep expert. They, no, but he, he also didn't. Sheep. He didn't know the gender of the sheep. He was making a he was making a guess at the gender of the sheep. Yeah. Okay. Did it have horns? Then it's not. <laughs> it's a sheep. All right. Anyways, yeah, so he on. just didn't. He didn't know. So yeah, fair enough. Yeah. 
the box and the one of the bass lays it on the table that we have over there and he is going to dissect the sheep. Uh -huh. Now on, on the outside the sheep look yeah, just fine. Head. You know, it, the, the hair, you know, that the wool, whatever sheep has looks fine. Look, look, look like we said that the sheep... <laughs> Clear. No one is actually mistaking you at this point, Mel, for a sheep expert. <laughs> well, the hair, the wool. You know, whatever. when, they, when yeah. they cut the sheep hair? That's, you yeah. Know, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like how he looked when we sent him into the hole. Minus a bump on the head, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and then he stir stirred from that. But he started cutting into the sheep, mm -hmm. and it looked like the sheep had been cooked. It was the, cool. the flesh was hot underneath, you know, when he started cutting cutting through the sheep. Jesus. It looked like the barbecued sheep. So it made the ice. It didn't do anything to the ice. It made the ice into glass or whatever. And, but yeah, well, puts, about a third of the time into actually, like we don't actually. Maybe that's true. Maybe every maybe it's only one in one in every three sheep will get cooked from the inside convection cooked as it were well and this is where we're getting because we've been iffy about the distance and stuff we also have a super chat from timothy Harmon. okay mel makes belt buckles out of desiccant packages which are delicious you should try mm. one today asterisk do not try one today <laughs> dave is giving you bad advice those will be horrible don't put one in your mouth um Again, if you go deep enough, yeah, it will absolutely cook a sheep. I mean, I have no idea how deep oh, this right. hole is. But no, but well, they said no. Yeah. They, so they said fifteen hundred feet. So they got fifteen hundred feet was road. like before. That was the ice or something. Like no, they never. They, they said, said the same thing. They said they're fifteen hundred. So fifteen hundred feet is not sheep. deep. Yeah, when you, it hit the you, when he hit the bottom of the rope, that was when they. Yeah. That is not, uh, that is not, it wouldn't be hot enough at 1500 no. feet to cook. I mean, a, if you buried uh, it, sheet. if yeah. it was like a pork rope, like a buried pork rope thing where you would like, oh yeah, it was in there for like a day. But yeah. Well, I feel like just because he's such a good person and good friend of the show, Kip Davis is plugging what he's doing more before he goes to bed. We should throw that up there, Paul. Oh, but my chat thing is broken. Okay. Oh, well, I can read it out. There we go. I'm going to watch the morning show, then off to bed. Be sure to check out Dapper Dinosaur Stream at noon Pacific time tomorrow, where Vishanti and I will prove that Job saw sauropods and wrote about them. Oh, excellent. That's a, that's good news. It's good news. I felt like that's something that you you would want to have highlighted. I am, I am, uh, I am excited with that. And also, yeah. good night, Kip. And, uh, and I, I'm not excited that you're going to watch the morning show instead of our show, but that's fine. Yeah. We're the only stream on YouTube. What the fuck? Come we, on, man. You, well, I guarantee right. nobody's talking about plumbing any holes over there. That's what right. the hell we, have they got that so we don't what, have? They've got what? they got Jennifer Aniston, and they've got a, a Reese Witherspoon. It's streaming. You can That's watch right. it. That's right. That's exactly. You no one's posting, it literally no one's posting morning show spoilers. It's like, hey, did you know? Yeah. Hey, you know. Admiral have you watched Fromm any of it? back on, on morning show. Have you, have you watched any of it? The morning show? I've never watched yeah. a single episode. No, uh, I watched season one and two. Uh, they're excellent. Yeah, probably. Pretty much everything. Because that's Apple, right? It's Apple, yeah. It's Every, pretty excellent. much everything Apple but does. But I'm also really saying good. at the same time, yeah, you. It's not. there's no sense of urgency on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. And Brain Cramp's just making it rain with free memberships. Yeah, making it rain. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So... The sheep is the sheep cooked. was dead. Came back the sheep is, cooked. Is cooked, cooked, and Martin's cooked. disgusted. Oh my! Now, now, now these bass guys, they're they're pretty good at butchering a sheep there, and they know their way around a sheep, and so they uh, pretty much uh, can butcher a and and they know what to expect when you open up a sheep, right? You know, so you know we we, we got the sheep on this uh, uh, table that we you know just eat that, and, uh, uh, you know this guy is cutting the sheep open here and. Uh, uh, he, he gets it so he's, he can look inside and see the internal organs like he's going to eviscerate the sheep. Right. Except they're not what we expected. What do you mean? It looks like there was gel in the, the cavity there. And something that looked like this huge tumor and uh. almost taking up the entire length of the, uh, the body cavity. Oh, no. I mean, it was, it's pretty hideous. 
I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I'm, I'm getting. You know, I'm getting kind of sick. I, I, I get kind of sick thinking about this thing too. But I was getting kind of sick when I was there. So I was kind of. I wasn't as close to all of this as I wanted. You know, would want to be if I was a scientific observer. But there's this huge tumor taking up most of the where the internal organs would be, the, the, uh, so forth, uh, the heart, the lungs, with whatever parts the sheep comes with, they weren't there. And what are these Basque guys who are doing this saying at this point? Well, well, well they're, they, you know, some of them are muttering plenty of expletives over here, uh -huh. and uh, you know, and they're, they're you know they're freaked out there, and uh, I you know I remember saying, see, I told you, you didn't want to go into that hole. You know, I that's, mean, that's right. And, I mean, and the two guys who volunteered my first hour are probably rethinking it right now, too. And, and, well, if they want to collect on some uh, life insurance, fine, go for it. But, that's uh, what one of them said, yeah. Uh, anyway, so we, we got we got this gel, and, and, and the guy's is, guy is good with a knife here, and he kind of is able to get the tumor out so of anyway, the thing. We got the gel. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's, it's not a tumor. It's not a tumor. Yeah. I say it's about as big as the sheep's cavity. I don't know, two feet long. Who's your daddy the, the, and who the tumor work was for? almost it taking like up the, the entire inside of yeah. the. Oh, ugh. okay. So you got this tumor, and 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 we could detect, we could see that the tumor had some movement to it. What? Yes. What? It had movement. More like a three more. Am I right? To it, and I, I don't want, I'm going to describe it like a heart beating. Uh. There's not a beating of a heart, uh. just like a pulsing from this tumor. Uh -huh. yeah. A pulsing mm -hmm. tumor. Oh okay. my God, Mel. So We're straight we up in the, the fucking point. David Lynch territory here now. Yep, this is yeah. Uh huh. So yeah, what you? you so Paul. Yes, Dave. If you're ever in a situation like this for any reason, yes. I'm just going to give you some advice. Uh. Set the sheep on fire. <laughs> just as much fire. Just throw wood on gasoline. More fire. Just you never know. fire Actually, and if you fire. Tried it, it was, so yeah. we put the ice. When the ice came out of the hole, they yeah. put that on fire, and it just burned for four months. I don't know. Or maybe just roll the sheep back down. So if you ever pull something out of a hole, and it's yeah. like got a Ooh. pulsing heartbeat-like tumor. Pustule, tumor, organism, organic egg. Also inside. jelly somehow, yep. I've seen aliens. Just fucking fire. Fire mm -hmm. and back in wherever it came from. Just tip it over the edge. That's yep. it. That's the best thing. If yep. that's not an option, fire. Yep. Lots of fire. Just back yep. down the hole and you're like, whew, that, yep. uh, that, that's, that was messed up. <laughs> Job all done. What was that? Don't know. Yep. Back down the hole. You, did, were all our scientific curiosities satiated? No. But, yeah. but you know, all alive. All, I'm gonna go home and have some French fries and sleep well. But knowing that sheep is down the bottom of that, whatever Guess that what, hole Dave? is. Guess what they, uh, that's not what they do. Mm. Mm. No, it never is. Mm. It never is. Boomer out yeah. there, and uh, you know, we got, he's how you get on, on... You want Cthulhu's, Paul? Because this is how you get Cthulhu's. <laughs> this is how you get Cthulhu's. That's right. <laughs> uh, um, mm. uh, J.R. Pence, thank you for the super chat for two dollars. Appreciate you. you. Sheep yes. mail from the other side. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Trying to cut it open is like really a tough uh, uh, thing to cut into. But he was finally able to get into it. Yeah. And. Uh, Boy, I'm going to tell you here. He opens it up there, and inside this tumor is what it appeared to be a fetal yeah. seal. Like, you know, like... A fetal a, what? Seal, like a a, 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 a pinniped, a, a, a thing that lives in the ocean that yes. balances balls on his nose. Yes. It's about... Oh, seal. Seal, yeah. Seal, seal. Okay, fetal seal. You know, a pinnipet. 18 inches oh. long. You know, it's got the flippers on it. And it looks like a little seal. Oh, you know, it looks God. just like your, your, basically your little seal. Except oh. it had what, and, and I, I don't know, I don't want people to, to freak out, but it had what looked to me like human eyes. Ah. Oh. Like, like, you know, a human being. You yeah. know, to be know fair, eyes look like. seals have very human looking eyes. So, they I do mean, not. They have black eyes. Well, it depends on the seal. No, it does not. 
Hang on. Are you talking about the, you talking the, the singer? <laughs> Look, just before you're kissed by a rose, you look All up right. with your human eyes, your Fair. very human ish eyes, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. And actually, here, here are the here are the image when you look up for seals. Yeah, this, this, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Just like you, me, my mom, your mom, everybody. Right. Those are just human eyes. So I love how the things... second picture is actually. <laughs> well, that's how <laughs> yeah. And there's a whole bunch of others. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. so many things <laughs> I can tell you so much. Uh, quick question, Paul. Can you name another Seal song? <laughs> oh, wait. Kiss for Rose. Yeah. Mm, no. Although I, I had his... I literally bought the next album, whatever it was. But you can't remember anything from it now? <laughs> no. Yeah, um, fair enough. Also, I don't think you can name... The, the greater disparity between the quality of a song and the quality of a movie. That like so a song that's in a movie where the song is that much better than the movie that it's in. I am an immortal. I have inside me blood of kings. No, no, because that is one of the greatest movies of all time. I guess that's true. That is true. I I I re I redact my statement. Yeah. So I there's I a couple I'm... really good examples. Like if you really stop and think about it, though, there's some like very good songs that are in like truly. Oh, horrible. I'm sure that's true. But but Kiss from a Rose in being in which I forget which Batman Forever Batman Forever it's the one, isn't it? it the one with Tommy Lee Jones and uh, Jim Carrey? That's which is Batman, Batman Forever, Forever, which is funnily the yeah, third Batman movie Forever. and not the fourth movie, which yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Batman and Robin is the fourth movie, even though Robin is introduced in the right. third movie, which they called Batman Forever. Feel like just uh, that was back when um, uh, what's it? Schumacher took over. Although, it, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Over. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts actually about the yeah, Batman. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It was in that one. I'm not yeah, going to get into. But look, uh, we are. We are. We are. Look, a sheep has died. A sheep has. This been is Bymon Sci-Fi Con. Yeah, no, look, we need so, to be uh, this we're here for this yeah. moment now. Paul, I need you a to human, bring me in. Don't let me get off on my pop a culture. Human eyed pendants. Dave, they cut open a tumor and inside was a fetal seal Pinniped. with human eyes. Pinniped with human eyes, as all seals have, as oh, we yeah. discussed. No. Not all seals. Some seals. You oh hmm, okay. <laughs> Hashtag not all seals. <laughs> Not my seal. <laughs> the dog eyes look like. Oh yeah. I don't know what seal I look like, but I know what uh, human might be my eyes favorite show like. we've sure ever done. Do. <laughs> and this thing looks like it had uh, human eyes, and the thing was alive, but it was connected to the tumor, like with this umbilical cord. Holy mackerel, Mel! And we could see the seal moving his eyes, and it was. And I'm calling it a seal, okay? But I have no idea what the heck this thing is, okay? I'm calling it a seal. I but think we're all pretty clear, eyes, Mel. That this is not a goddamn <laughs> fucking seal. That this is some kind of extra dimensional horror show. This is. Yeah. Uh, this is a Cronenberg situation going on here. Yeah. Um, this uh, is like, yeah, the fly. Um, against all <laughs> odds, the theme song is much better than the movie. I don't, I, I can't remember it. But now I'm going to Google. Well, well not right you're coming now. back to me is against the odds. Is that the song? And that's what I got to take. Take a look at me now. I don't remember it at all. But I do not remember. The, I, did, I had no idea that was a movie. So, apparently it was a movie. Fair enough. It was a sexy Vogue. Time. Here's a fun trivia fact. Although it wasn't used in the movie, Vogue is from Madonna's soundtrack album from the Dick Tracy movie. Oh, well, that would be... That would be... That would be a, a contender for sure. Yep. Well done, chat. Well done, chat. Flippers right. are moving. I need. We need to get back to the to the to the the Cronenberg fly seal. Yeah, this crazy seal creature, creature umbilical cord that's alive and trying desperately to Human open eyes. a gate to yep. the outer dark. 
Yeah. It's the 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 hole has made a being, Dave. Mm-hmm. The hole has made something. Yeah. Still, Anybody who's writing Lovecraft knows there. Uh, and then so you notice, back and down I the hole. that it seemed to be studying us. It seemed to be looking at us. That that was the feeling I got. It seemed to be regarding us while while we were looking at it. So that's the feeling I got off of this seal. And then this thing separated from the tumor without our assistance. We were thought, well, maybe we will cut this thing free. Right there on the table. It did right there, and it moved about a little on the table. Yeah. You know, so we're 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 all standing back at that point because this thing is loose. You know, I'll be way back. And uh, and you know, we're watching this seal, and again, it, it, that's the only way I could describe it because it looked like a seal to me. She went on. Right. And and then I felt, uh, uh, well, I just felt I was in a, the, the presence of something extraordinary, something beyond extraordinary, something like. I, I don't know. It, 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 I'm not, not a religious man, but I felt in that category of having a religious thing there. Where this was just such a stunning. I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I experienced this, I would be, you know, like, okay, well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this supernatural really, maybe, this, maybe this is a pretty good time to pray. <laughs> I put well, a sheep down a hole. It came up. <laughs> it has some kind of crazy seal, chest burster, fucking thing going on. Um, it's maybe it's time. To, I'll I'll sing some hymns. I'll, well, I'll go least, in. Uh, even on some hymns, I very least I'm thinking. Well, maybe there's some things about the universe that I don't understand. No, this is a pretty good time. Yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> this is uh, so it it cut its own umbilical cord somehow. Mm-hmm. And uh, now it's just studying them. We got a couple super chats, Paul. Yeah, I'm guessing these are about songs. They are both about songs. I don't uh, know this never song. Gonna... Do you know this song? This is a, this is a seal song. Uh, I think it's just called Crazy, if I remember. We're never going to survive. Let's go a little crazy. Crazy all the people walking through my head. One of them's got a gun to shoot the other one. I'd sing it, but I don't remember the tune, and I'm drunk. All right, fair enough. Uh, but, but that no. is a seal song. Yeah. All the songs from Xandu were better than the movie. That is accurate. Yeah. Mm, hold on. That was the uh, Gutty Event Super Chat. S- yep. Slack Slackback. Back. Well done. Who I can't recall ever super. Well, but it would say it would be the first. So, but anyway. No, Slackback Slack back is not one of our usual Super Chatters. So, thank you for the. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Slackback. Thanks and for welcome, being here. Welcome us. back, Slackback. I don't thank you for bringing up Xanadu in the chat <laughs> of this movie. That's uh, which I think is spelt with an X, if I remember right, not a Z, right? Xanadu. I might be wrong. I might be super wrong about that. We got a hum, you know, we got a homunculus. We got, we got, we got something weird going. Yeah. Thing to witness. Well, something that far from our understanding would appear yeah. to be magic or religion or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure. Yeah. So, what did the, what God's name happen to this thing? Well, we, we we left it there, and it began to you know it just kind of looked at us there, and uh, you we know, left uh, it there. To... <laughs> well, just and it looked at us. Mm-hmm. One of the babies looked at you. <laughs> <laughs> Ask suggest yeah. that we kill it, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just kind of club it, and unfortunately, and. Uh, but, uh, you know... Uh, is that what they did? No, they basically cooler heads prevailed. The thing was moving around on a table, and it finally moved. Wait, where did they get the table? I mean, you know, they had a table there. That's fine. Whatever. The, no, Paul's been listening to this for two, three hours now, and he's been fine with it all. But all of a sudden, the the, the alien mutant is on a table, and that, I got to pause it, because I got a problem. Where did they get... <laughs> How could they possibly get a table? <laughs> J.R. Pence says, I'll never look at a turducken the same again. <laughs> never look at your name. Yeah. We stuffed Have you ever seen a... Um, inside a tumor, inside a sheep. It's, oh, it's like called a Turkathulu or Cthulhu in or something. It's a turkey stuffed with an octopus with a crab, so it has like crab legs and octopus <laughs> tentacles coming out of it. I'll, uh... There you go, Paul. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a oh, link. Oh, no, I got, I got, I got it here. Did you find it? 
Yeah. What, what is yeah, this? Yeah, right there, that very what, first picture. What kind of monstrosity is... <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just, just the most horrifying thing you could ever have on your... Oof. Plus I'm there on Twitter. Go. Plus I'm on Twitter now, so that's extra gross. Oh no, it's X Paul. Mm, yeah, clearly. <laughs> clearly. Mm -hmm. the, the, everybody uses it in common parlance. Whatever. <laughs> we I'm not gonna talk about that stupidity right nope. now. To the edge of the table. Yeah. You know, I was kinda like struggling, but it got to the edge of the table. Yeah. And it looked like it was going to fall off. Right. So I go up I go up to it at this point because I'm just like out of my head with I don't know what I'm in the in the presence of. And it looked directly at me when I got up to it and it seemed you know, it just seemed to have a contact with me. And I got this compelling feeling to pick it up and place it on the ground. And I did that. I took this thing and I put it on the ground by the table. Yeah. My hands were slimy from this, the seal. It had like this goo that was not only in the cavity, but also inside the tumor. And I'm just calling it a tumor because I have no vocabulary for this. Right. And I just moved my hands past, past my face before I decided to wipe them off on, on the rag at the table there. Right. And it smelled like ozone. Like ozone, ozone, like. ozone, of course I do, yes. That's what it smelled like when, when I, because I thought it would be some like sort of weird organic-y smell. Yeah. You know, some sort of like disgusting, or, you know, I, you know I, I, I just thought it would smell disgusting. It smelled like ozone. Okay. So this thing is lying on, on the ground and we're all looking at this thing here and it's like looking at each of us in turn. In other words, intelligently. Yes, yes. We, we, we must have been there just absolutely transfixed by this, and I'll call it a creature now, for like two hours. Just we and were... what was it doing during... No, they weren't standing in it for two hours. Someone did something. Nope, they're just standing there looking at the seal. For the length of time, the running time of a feature-length movie. Mm -hmm. yep. Just looking at the seal. And it's looking at them. Mm -hmm. Whispering secrets. <laughs> It was two hours. I mean, it, it, studying each one of us. It so wasn't moving around that much. Well, just its head, because we had gathered a, a, a oh, this cowardly, but a safe distance away from it, but not too safe, you know. So, so we we could easily see it, and they could easily it's see us. Prudent more than point, cowardly, but even the bravest bass were like, you know, kind of freaked out. <laughs> I, I'd have been long gone, Mel. Well, uh, I, again, the bass are great. What what happened? Well, you know, we, we got I got this this the seal, and he's you know he's kind of grinding, waddles around a little bit in the direction of the hole, and then he's just sort of <laughs> watching us some more, and we're sort of kind of at a safe distance, but we we kind of encroach upon a little bit there, and I'm telling I'm telling the bass, hey, you're the big brave bass here, you know, don't be afraid of this thing here. I'm just so this is 2001, right or uh, wasn't yeah. it 2002? Maybe 2002. So definitely one of them would have had a cell phone that could take a picture. Uh, in the, the... Yeah, like... It, 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 Backlands in Nevada? What? This is in Nevada. Basque country in Nevada. Oh, uh, well, sure. Okay, maybe the Basque didn't have a... They just had good old flip phones. Phones didn't have screens. No, but flip phones, flip phones could take pictures. Well, it depends on the flip phone. No. No. I had, I had a fancy Nokia. I feel like if you're going to experiment dropping a seal down a hole, though, you would just have a camera. You might just there. bring a camera, yeah. You, yeah. You, you, had to, you had to get a, cra a cage and a sheep and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Should anyone bring a camera for our experiment? I would 100% be drop kicking that seal down that hole, though, just <laughs> or grabbing a stick and poking it because I'm not touching it. Just, yeah. Back down the hole with you. All of this. All of this back Over down the hole. Yeah, you might even yeah. do it in a friendly voice. Off yeah. you go back to the hole. Off you go. Back home. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Crazy human eyed steel tumor baby. Thanks. Thanks for showing up. Hope you enjoyed our dimension. No, never come back. Guy here just, uh, so, you know, we, we, we did. We, we went up to it there and it just looked at us here. And, and the look that it was giving us was the only way I can describe it. It was like the most compassionate look that I'd ever seen from, from any face. Oh, the, t the tumor mm -hmm. seal is taking pity on the rest of you. Oh, yeah. you sad, sad. That's how they trick you. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just the, the way the eyes were looking and and feeling this, and and so some amount of time elapsed, and and the the, the, the little seal there starts to waddle again towards the hole, and I get this feeling that it wants to go up on 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 the ledge on the on the, the collar. Right. So I pick it up in my hands and I set it right right there on there. It, it moves around a little bit, and then we're at this point we're pretty comfortable with this thing. I am. And, and Are my, we? My, my comp- <laughs> we know. Also, yeah, it's just it seems like you're you're very close to just being able to do the Dave plan of tipping it over. Yeah. Return to the <laughs> hole. At this point, we're pretty comfortable with this <laughs> alien monstrosity. <laughs> came out of a sheep that came out of a sheep we cut open and there was a pulsating flesh cocoon inside we cut that open and this thing was inside but you know what we're pretty cool really like skinner so we actually have that in common which is nice and you know the she is the seal human baby's pretty cool also not so bad it keeps whispering to me in forgotten tongues and it's telling me the dark secrets. <laughs> and I think this is, this is pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. That's there are, are, are pretty, pretty comfortable with it. I mean, we're not like freaked out anymore like we were. And maybe it's just, you know, the, we're over the shock or maybe we are in shock. But that look that was giving us, it didn't, didn't seem like an evil thing or a horrible thing. It seemed like... I'm sure you were in some state of shock. Yeah. So it, Here's it, the it thing about evil, Paul. Then, yep. It never seems evil. Yeah. If evil was just like, oh shit, that's evil, you know, it'd be real easy. You could avoid it. You could avoid it. Mm-hmm. Hitler seemed like he was making a lot of sense to the people he was talking to at the time, right? Like, I bet that everything. Uh, I bet that forbidden, they able to, that forbidden they able to road to hell. Delicious. Paul. Yep. Yep. It moves around. I don't know how. Maybe an hour. He's on uh, he it is on the on ledge. Collar. If you don't know the gender of the sheep, you don't know the gender of the seal mutant. Maybe an hour. It's fucking around on the edge of this collar. I feel like that's probably not. You maybe need a watch. I don't yeah, I feel like Mel's not good at time. No, for two hours it was just sitting beside it, and then a whole hour it was just. Yeah, it doesn't seem. Yeah. It actually nodded at us. It, it made like a slow nod. And he turned around and went back into the hole. At this point, we were close to it, so we watched it go all the way down as far as we could see. And we didn't have high-powered lights or anything, so it, it no, no sound, nothing like that. It just it, into the hole, and that was it. it. Into the hole, and so. Yeah. It, it, we, we were all just just moved, just just drained. I, I'm drained telling you. So this is like the end of ET. Yeah. Where's that AI art for the thumbnail, Paul? Mm. Well, horrible actually, tumor seal baby. No, so I remembered that there was a tumor seal baby, yeah. and I thought about it. You thought hard about it, but try. But then I was like, no, that's like if I was a if I was a, back in my movie days, you don't give away the big thing. So I just put the. That's why there's a sheep on the somewhere. Thumbnail. It's like. So somewhere there's a darkest dimension where you put your crazy tumor, ba- the tumor baby. That is correct. Thumbnail. On the thumbnail of this, yes. And I had my first version of the organized religion sponsorship ad. That's right. <laughs> which was quite a bit more favorable to organized religion than what I actually read. So, someday uh, I'll read it for you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, because it, much, it is such a more and, just and poor religion. I was like, I don't know if everyone's going to get this joke. Yeah. Thing to go through. You realize it? It's, it sounds like an unbelievable uh, tale from Alien or something. I mean, it, it sounds. Aren't do, you, Charlotte? Do you realize this sounds unbelievable, <laughs> or do you think? Do you think this sounds normal? Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> That's well, how you get I, I don't know what it sounds like. You know, my 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 my. Uh, all, all I can do now it's is to, to relay it, yep. and then and then and then just try to stand back from it. All right, question for you, Mel. Uh, does anybody have any photographs of this hole? We we I I Good went question. up there. It was only the there for three hours. I <laughs> <laughs> Someone could have gone home. Yeah, walked home. Someone could have gone to the home. goddamn store and <laughs> bought right. a camera. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. All right, we got some super Sorry. chats. We got super chats. Savage Cobra, the cursorial angiosperm super chats. This is how you get seal thulu cultists. Seal thulu. Yeah, it's how we got seal thulu cultists. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seal thulu in his dark tomb lies I dreaming. I like this one. Good job, knee. <laughs> yeah. Today, seal tan. <laughs> Yeet. So this is what I'm saying. This would have been five minutes into this scenario. Yep. You cut it open and just be... I would have immediately, when I cut it open and this thing looks at me with those weird hue knives, it's like, and nope, yep. over the edge. And ultimately, no difference. <laughs> nothing happened. They didn't learn anything. This three hours of staring yeah. contest, they didn't learn nothing. If I ever pull anything out of a hole, Paul, mm -hmm. and it's a pulsing organic cocoon, mm -hmm. and you cut it open, A, I wouldn't cut it open. That would immediately be the end. Back in the hole, <laughs> but let's just say, for whatever argument's sake, you somebody who's there cuts this thing open. Yeah, and there's said, the hey, I, I think my watch is in there. Any, can you cut it open? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, look! There's some kind of crazy animal creature <laughs> with human eyes. Yep. I, you know, <laughs> if you try to fight me, you're going in the hole too. We're all. <laughs> also, and all this going happening while well, you're right. That's right. You have an you have a bottomless hole. Yeah. Right beside Clearly, you. You're also the thing. All of you, this is all going in the hole. Everything is going in the hole. Everything I can see within I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's real anymore. It's all going in the hole. Yep. After that, everything's fire. After the fire, more in the hole. And then maybe I'm shooting myself at the end of this because I don't even know exactly. if I can be trusted anymore. Everything. Fire, hole for everything. This whole situation, exterminatus, <laughs> nuclear bomb. Yep. That's what needed here. And I'm getting Not back on the three bus hours of watching this thing fuck around on the ground outside and then just hang around on the collar. And then it nods at me and then jumps in the hole. No, no, no. Mel, no. I'm going back to San Francisco and I'm going to sing Willie Nelson songs. Off we mm -hmm. go. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is why you don't have back the teeth anymore. Through the hole. I basically camped at that property. Right. I didn't come and go. No one came and go. We had what we had over there. Uh, and so we we didn't bring photographs. I per personally I I didn't want to you know I you know I thought thought to myself look this would be great we get this all on 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 film on on video whatever right, right. but I I did not want to encroach upon what they had you know and and if they came to me and said uh, look 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 Mel why, why don't we go go to town go home get our stuff you know and, and try to video you know fine I would I would have said that but I was not going to broach the subject with them. You know, I mean, I, I, I did. You know, I, I, I mean, to me, it was an enormous privilege to go where I. I know we're yeah. all standing here looking at the the seal baby. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Would anyone be concerned if I like snapped a photo? Oh, I don't want to presume. I don't want to. This is, this is Basque be... Country, Nevada. <laughs> I don't want to impose. I don't want to be that guy. That every time, be like, hey, maybe we should take a picture of this. <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah. dude, whoa, it's not cool. We're not cool, man. Not We're all cool. just here looking at the seal. Yeah. Oh, you're harshing, harshing the whole mellow. <laughs> you're harshing my vibe, man. <laughs> Seal's nodding. Look. You're. Can we all be cool? Well, Maybe throw the crazy afterbirth tumor <laughs> shell into the hole, though. That's pretty gross. And I wonder whatever. If they, and I wonder the, if the guy who was there who was like, can we put some weed down the hole and see what happens? I wonder if this is like... <laughs> <laughs> is this encouraging my, to that person? No, yeah, we definitely got to put weed. <laughs> Never mind. It's probably fine. <laughs> and you or... Know, so it's, it's probably actually... You know what? I changed my mind. Here's a crazy oh. fan theory, Dave. You know how they have fan theories? It's like you twist something. Yeah. Oh. I want to hear your fan theory. What if, Dave, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. did put marijuana down the hole? Yeah, devil's lettuce down the hole. And it came back up. And none of this part happened. Right. All of this is just the result of what happens when you put marijuana down the hole. And then what if it. it's not marijuana, it's peyote mm. and other powerful hallucinogens that you've right. put down the hole 
and brought up and just and that's yeah. how you see interdimensional seal tumor babies <laughs> seal sheep tumor yep i feel like maybe this tumor baby was also was it in pain it maybe was just in pain. I was like, why are you watching me for three yeah. hours? Kill me. None of you. you none of you have the cojones <laughs> to do what needs to be done here. Yes. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into this hole. <laughs> Hoping to die. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for nothing, assholes. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for dipping a sheep into another dimension and fucking around. I didn't want to be here. Mm -mm. You made me do this. You yeah. made me do this. You created a life of agony that lasted mm -hmm. three hours. Yeah. Every breath is torture. <laughs> How dare you? Web, Web has writes. super chatted, Paul. Mm -hmm. It made the eraser head baby <laughs> into the hole. See, this is what I'm saying. Web gets it. Yeah. In the hole. Just the like... Hole. Three hours, fuck that nonsense. Three <laughs> seconds. You see this? Nope. Just that's it. Yep. Just no. Just no. Just back your brain. Where, just nope. Back to where you came from. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Cool. Goodbye. Well, who wants a beer? That's <laughs> yeah, time. I think experiments are good for the day. I think we're done. Yeah. With experiments. I think we're. I think we're good. So we're all agreed. We're going to put a, the biggest rock we can find over top of this and. We're done forever. Don't let the Treasury <laughs> Department know. <laughs> TC. Wait, did that seal just take my dime? <laughs> God damn it, seal. <laughs> All right. TC uh, writes. This is why you don't get a coffee table. Just winds up with alien tumor seals flopping around, cluttering it up, and telepathically manipulating you. It's one of the dangers. It's one of the I dangers mean, of having a coffee table. I feel like that's, you know, statistically the odds are low unless your coffee table is over top of some kind of bottomless, like adjacent one of the many bottomless pits you come <laughs> across right. in your life. <laughs> every, yeah, every time you're, in, every time you're in a jam, you come across another magical hole. Yeah. That's true, Michael. It wasn't a seal. It was a sea lion, whatever. He just did some kind of pinniped, to be fair, mm. with human eyes. Seal's easier to say, though, and is also a uh, a wonderful musician. So That's we're good. gonna we're gonna keep saying seal because you know what, Michael? There are no rules. We can do whatever we want. Come on at that Understood. point, are you likely to go back to the hole? Yeah. You're yeah. going to. I will. I, uh, uh, I I will let you know that we, we at first we we decided we thought we would bury the the sheep's carcass and 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 the uh, uh, the tumor. Yeah. We still had that, and we and we we decided it was just best to take the whole thing and put them in, put everything back into the hole where it all came from. Yeah. So I just you know, we just let it let it be. Ago. We had a, a tarp on the uh, we just dumped the whole everything back into the hole where it came from. I, I didn't know mm -hmm. what else to do. We, we, again, we thought about burying it, and it just didn't. Unfortunately, oh. none of them ate it. Like, it's not like, hey, well, yeah. let's just have some lamb. Could be worse. Hole. Exactly. Exactly, Paul. So it could have been worse. <laughs> this is, yeah, that's that's your worst case scenario. Or, like, imagine if they're like, hey, cooked lamb, but, like, before the, they even saw, like, the jelly inside. They're just like, mm, you ever cooked lamb? I'm gonna try some of this. I will say, lamb is one of my absolute favorite things. Is it in the world? Oh, I think it's. I, I could take it or leave it. Good lamb. Oh my god, it's mm. so good, it's so good. And I feel bad because it's like this is a little baby animal. Because mm. mutton is disgusting, but lamb, mm. so good. Like, there's a reason you just smother lamb in mint jelly, and it's because. Right. It's like the same as how you cook liver with like a bunch of bacon and onions and mm -hmm. put like Worcestershire sauce and kombucha. Right. It's like what you're doing is just completely masking the go. Mutton is like you put mint jelly, which I don't know if you've ever had mint jelly. I have, yeah. Well, yeah, it's like it's like one of the strongest things they really get. It's like chutney and mint jelly, where like what you're doing is masking the taste of this greasy, disgusting meat. But lamb, oh mm. so good. So good. It's sad that like a baby sheep has to die to provide this delicious meal, but you know, yeah, lamb chops. Well, at least they didn't eat this one. 
Yeah. <laughs> See, because that's how you get brain worms. <laughs> that's right. how you get that. Yeah, that's how the invasion starts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's that's how the yeah we get the lampocalypse, the whatever all based. So, so here's the thing. So, so Mel is on the thing. So just so the audience understands, I cut 40 minutes, 4 0, 40 minutes off the top yeah. where he was recapping previous whole adventures. Yeah. With no new information whatsoever, just entirely recapping old. old. So in the back of Mel's mind, he knows I got the, the climax of the story is. <laughs> climax. And there's more to the, it's not done, but we're, but we're getting no. at some point there's going to be a seal mutant tumor baby that the hole yeah. made. Yeah. But I'm going to regale you with my story about my packet of dimes and how it made a, it. They, they took a, the treasury department took my, took my, I paused project. it, Paul, mm -hmm. an alternative view that I don't. I don't believe this, but I'm just throwing it out there as, okay. you know, no bad idea. We're brainstorming. Um, that Mel didn't know that he would be talking about a tumor, sheep, seal, pinniped baby because he is making this up as he goes That's along. <laughs> and this is just an idea that occurred to him while he was talking. And so, you know, it's just the, it's just a, a thing that kind of came up and he's like, he just keeps kind of one upping himself. He's just yes. Anding it just total improv. <laughs> this is just the improv. Here, here, yeah. yes, and. So he's just yes. Anding himself. He's just constantly yes. Anding. And every time arts like what this, he's like, Oh yeah, that happened. And not only that, and then arts like, was it this? He's like, uh huh. It was that. <laughs> and also this, and arts like really this. Mm hmm. And also, okay. There was a tumor inside it, Art. I'm going to tell you. Now, I don't believe that's true because all of this is a, a real fact. These are things right. that happened. So, you know, this is essentially a documentary. Because there is, but, a, there, is a, 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 there is another option, of course, is that it's fictional, but he did have a plan of where the story was going. Yeah. Also, maybe Mel's just a really bad storyteller. So... It's interesting. So he's a, t I do not think he's a good storyteller, mm -hmm. but if this is fiction in the, mm -hmm. in the weird, let's just imagine a day of a world where this isn't true. And some of yeah. the, he's made some of these details up. Um, he, he is imaginative and also like maybe should be working for somebody coming up with ideas. But here's a fun fact, Paul. Yes, yeah, Steve. I was in my local board game store today. Okay. A story that you were personally familiar with. Yes, I am aware. And mentioned that I was doing this YouTube show tonight oh, okay. and mentioned what I was talking to one of my friends who's one of the owners of the store, but there was it was very busy at the mm -hmm. store. And just like, oh, we're it's like part four of the Mel's whole thing. And three people were like, You're talking about Mel's hole? You've had four I'm like, yeah. And they all knew, like none of them had any clue about our YouTube, right? Whatever shenanigans we're up to here, but they were all Art Bell fans mm. and were like intimately familiar with Mel's Hole. Okay, just random people. I mean, it's in a board game store, so you're skewing demographics mm -hmm. a little bit, but still, we're like, oh. Where have you gotten to the point where blah blah blah? Have you done blah blah blah? Right? And I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the this will be like the fourth appearance, and he's already yeah. gone to Australia and stuff. They were all right on board. Who knows? Some of them might be watching because I gave them all links to our show. Because <laughs> nice. Paul, I'm always whoring you out. But it was uh <laughs> and I also phrase it in that way, always. <laughs> That's right. Every, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. People, people know this story. The uh, the Mel's whole like people who are into this. yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's, yeah. yeah. I uh, and just I want to let everyone in the audience know that. <laughs> that Sorry, this, I'm laughing uh, at Timothy Harmon super know. chat. I'll let we'll get to that first. So yeah. yes, yeah, so <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Timothy. Too. 
aren't made belt buckles out of sheep tubers. But apparently. we missed Jay Victor's super chat previously. Oh, yeah, we missed uh, the previously on. Yeah. Oh, oh, we, we got there? so enthralled with uh, with our own with our own uh, our, the sound of our own voices. As anyone who's ever had to return something knows, taking it out is much easier than putting it in. Paul, any comments? No comments. <laughs> That's I, What are your I, thoughts I, about Dave Victor's Super Chat? I, I refrain from commenting. <laughs> Coward. Mm. All right. Well, I, but, you know, and as a, I'll just say that putting it in is more fun. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. Um, but, Paul, how yeah. can I miss you if you don't go away? You got to take it out to put it back in, right? <laughs> um, there, just so everyone knows, this is not the last appearance of Mel on the Art Bell show. There is no, there is a part five. So there is a part five. We have one more yet. Yep. Anyway, I feel let's, like we got to we got to sort of the tumor baby keep it in the back pocket. We for still a got bit. we got to we got to wrap up what's happening with the tumor baby. Yeah, I don't know. It just didn't seem right that I, I thought Ooh. it was. So that's what we did. Uh, I want, I want to tell you something that is, is I believe, related to, oh. to this experience. Michael Smith has a, a pitch for you. Podcast idea for Paul. You should start a call-in podcast like The Line, but instead of shitty arguments for Jesus, they pitch you shitty movie ideas. Mm. That's um, probably okay. too close to real life. Yeah, maybe, maybe also, uh, I feel like what you want to do is p people who think they, it's probably more fun, just like the, just like the, uh, religious callers. It's more yeah. fun if they believe that it's true and good. So you want people to actually pitch what they think are good movie ideas. That's true. Do you remember the, uh, the YouTube video we did where it was like Starcraft, uh, Star Wars movie oh, ideas? How we, we were going to, like, yeah, it was going to be five, five ways to. Yeah. The one, only one I remember is Rebel Base, and it was about like this <laughs> Calvary right, chick who was like was a, a bass player in a band. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> bass. And there was a whole, and we kept doing, yeah. A bit. yeah. Well, that's a stupid idea, but here's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, good times. You know what? You better, the Michael Smith idea is good, but I think just you and me pitching movie ideas at each other mm. and then just keep like one upping would be a better. That is, we, we did that yeah. once, so yeah. We did do that once, and it's, it was one of my favorite YouTube videos we ever did. All of my favorite YouTube videos we've done have like 4,000 views. None of the, nothing we ever, that I loved ever. Uh, although I did introduce two of my friends in the city this last week to the nice guys. Oh, okay. And both of them were like, holy shit, this movie's so good. I'm like, this movie is so good, and nobody knows it and go. Anyways. Another uh, super do, chat. We have another super chat, yep. Yahweh's cool with late insertions. He'll kill you for pulling out early. That is true. That is that is biblical. <laughs> especially, the, we yeah. know for sure, especially if you are sleeping with your, uh, if you're sleeping with your dead brother's wife, especially, that's a big problem. You Does Yahweh have anything to say about <laughs> pounding on metal? <laughs> that's lining Yahweh your is hole. silent. On, uh, Strangely, your, on no strong opinions Weather one way or the other. Weather. So I guess <laughs> do whatever the fuck you want. If you want to have a hollow <laughs> mellow tube in your hole, people I'll have to consult Kip Davis on this one. But to my best of my knowledge, Kip Bray Claude does not have any strong stances. Yeah, it's possible, possible in the Dead Sea Scrolls that they had something there. Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of you know of of, of various you know law. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not specifically in the Old Testament mm -hmm. that came after. And, yeah, it yeah, came in so. like the Mishnah and the Sanhedrin. There was different. Yeah, so I'd, I'd have to ask an actual mm -hmm. scholar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The uh, the stance on various butt plug related. <laughs> <laughs> Inquiring <laughs> mind, want to know, Paul? This is for science. <laughs> Look, you're gonna pound on my whole tube. <laughs> I'm going to make a sound. That's all I'm saying. This is the best show we've ever done. <laughs> I'm uh -huh. going. 
I hope you don't die to hurt him, Oh, I'm so sorry. This was a six, you know, like the kind that does he have six oh. months to live, but, you know, they, they're just telling you that. Uh, you know, that there's, you know, like not, nothing they can do about it, but it was very fast, fast, fast growing. And one of the reasons I came back here was to see the same doctor because I started feeling a lot better. And my last examination with the... Wait, so, sorry, we missed that. Yeah, I didn't quite catch. I'm pretty drunk right now. I All didn't right. really catch what he said there. So Mel <laughs> had, when Mel went out there. Tyler, Michael, it's too late. I'm, I'm rewinding. Sorry. When Mel went yeah. out there, he had cancer. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. And now, and now he doesn't. Now he doesn't. Well, that's significant. Okay. Yep. We, again, we thought about burying it, <laughs> and it just didn't. I don't know. It just didn't seem right. Really I, I thought it would really do what we did. <laughs> Uh, I, want, I want to tell you something that is, is I believe, so proud. related to, to this so experience. Proud. All right. And that is prior to going to Nevada, <coughs> this was in late August, I was diagnosed with a particularly lethal form of esophageal cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. This was a six, you know, like the kind that does he have six months to live, but, you know, they, they're just telling you that. Uh, you know, that there's, you know, like not, nothing they can do about it, but it was very very fast, fast, fast growing. And one of the reasons I came back here was to see the same doctor because I started feeling a lot better. And my last examination with the doctor finds me cancer free. I can't explain it. Then you could document this, right? Because he had the, yes, yes, he could the they had hole. whatever stuff diagnosing uh, 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 the cancer. And I went back to the doctor and they could find no evidence of any cancer. Is it your feeling that your uh, uh, proximity to the hole um, or something about the hole changed this? I think it was the seal. I think it was the seal. The seal. The seal. I described this thing as this huge tumor. tumor and that's seal, what baby. I had. But I described it as a tumor because that was the that's only vocabulary right. I had. There to could this. be documentable evidence is like you were diagnosed with cancer. There's that's medical right. records showing that. You're strangely, inexplicably cancer free. Right. There's right where, like, we're at the point where we're giving you six months to live to, well, complete remission, cancer free. Yep. Good job. Whatever seal baby you were, you know, hanging out with. But I suspect the government's going to show up and steal those medical <laughs> records. Those rascally mm. Secret Service Treasury not, agents. No, it'll be, yeah, it'll be the Treasury. I'll show up Those scamps. <laughs> Private with. Gotcha. I want to highlight two Paul. Where we're going. We have Philip Greening Jackson. Good morning from Bulgaria. That's the best of my knowledge. Our first. I, uh, I put that one Bulgaria. up there. Yeah. Good morning from. That's uh, that's far away from where I am. It is very far away. I hear it's beautiful, beautiful country in that uh, part of the world, though. Anyways, this, this, well, that's right, you did, and 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 I smelled the ozone fr from it, and and it just the look that it gave me, I, there was something going on. I didn't, I, I and I can't say. Look, I was dealing with the right. zeal, telepathically was, you know, took his cancer back so down the hole. Again, Paul. Oh. Yes, Dave. I don't personally believe this. That's because you're dead inside. But okay. But, wow, okay, got real judgy there real quick. But if this was the kind of thing somebody was just making up as they went along, okay. and yes, that Hypothetically. Ending, hypothetically. Not, you know, Mel, obviously, but somebody obviously, else. Somebody with like alternative Mel. motives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just by the end is like, oh, also, by the way, it cured my cancer. Because mm -hmm. you, in some cases, you would think, wow, you would really lead with that. Like that's you're you're a hundred percent just bearing the lead here, Mel. You're you've got the crazy seal tumor baby showed up, sprayed ozone at me, looked at me, cancer gone, jumped back in the hole. That should be step one, not gonna talk 
about these goddamn dimes and whatever belt buckle I had for an hour. Well, an hour. Just oh, also by the way, I had cancer, but now I don't anymore. Right. So, but Dave, you you think you know what you're talking about? I do because... think I know. No, I'm just suggesting you know that this was <clears throat> would be potentially a uh, well a scruple. But Paul, what's they just um, you, so what's the one rule of an action movie, Dave? Um, cast Jason Statham. <laughs> well, that's a good rule. No, the 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 one rule in an action movie is you can do anything you want uh -huh. as long as you set it up. Right. Um. So, you you keep that in mind as we listen. Okay. You've been complaining about the dimes, but I've been complaining about the dimes. Is this where the steel's gonna show up and be like, I'm gonna need I need 30 cents? <laughs> you um, better have what's this? A 1944 dime? Get this <laughs> fucking shit out of my face, Mel. This is garbage. <clears throat> so we have a uh, a member chat from Brian. From Brian. <clears throat> Who's been a member for 17 months, Paul. Longer than this show has been on mm, the air. That's right. So this is like one of your true blues. All right. Yeah. I slept through most of Mel's hole. With that's Brian. sad. Would but you... I've got good news for you, Brian. Uh, luckily, all of all of these, you, you can just go back. It's all up there on the YouTube. If you ask nicely, the good folks at YouTube will let you listen to it again. Yeah. But hopefully not the first episode soon because... No, but this episode. This episode but this episode you definitely can. And yes. also well worth your time. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta Timothy has figured line. out my favorite form of joke. <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> buckle is made out of cancer. There's no joke like a running joke, <laughs> is what I always say. <laughs> oh. We appreciate you, Timothy. Woo! How how are you feeling, Paul? I want to get to the I want to get to the punchline now. So we, we let's got, keep uh, going. Push through. We get, let's we do this. Eight, I think we got eight minutes left here. I'm gonna try and keep my mouth shut. What I can say is that I had this feeling of such incredible compassion from this seal that, that, that ultimately went back into the, uh, the hole. We, we just said, you know, that, that was it. And what was the conversation like after all this was over, Mel, uh, between the Basques and the Native Americans and yourself? Okay. And... okay. Well, well, first of all, the, the Basque that I were with, they, they, were, they were young guys, okay? And, uh, you, you know, I, I think before this kind of your kind of shipless sort of characters, you know, partiers and, and mm. all of that. And they were like just profoundly moved. I mean, they were just, uh, had, had stuff going on in their mind after that, that, you know, they had been to another place, another time, another, every, anything. Their, their reality had been all changed. Now I had the opportunity before I left Nevada to speak, uh, right before I left, you know, I went went back in, in to civilization and spoke with a Basque elder. Yes. And this this is this was the elderly fellow that I was referring to that told me some of the history of that. That he was in there, you know, for uh, you know he remembered it from being a young man, and he described it to me and all of this stuff here. And uh, we we had uh, just an because his his thing was he he himself would go there to that area for spiritual connection. There was something very spiritual, very primal that was going on. He, he was a tough guy to to talk to in some ways because he, he was more schooled in Basque than he was in English. But he got English out out enough for me to uh, understand. And so we we we, we talked. Actually, a great length uh, about uh, the meaning of this. Um, we did have some Fun of the... Uh, 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 Someone once told me that Basque is like Spanish if Spanish is being explained to you by a deaf person. <laughs> Apparently, it's wow. a very weird and hard to pronounce and like has a really weird kind of slurry accent and like 
at the risk of sounding me, you know how when you get that kind of like sound of deaf mm -hmm. people yep. speaking and they're like, yeah, that's what Basque is. It's like if you had that for Spanish, which I don't speak Spanish, but like Basque is that accent, that effect on Spanish is what. Interesting. Although I, I Googled it while we were going. There is, in fact, a apparently a several hundred year old strong Basque contingent in northern Nevada that is like, yep, there has been a Basque community there See? that's been. You this know, is a confirmable detail, so all the story is true. Yeah, so absolutely. So this is, I, I take it all back. Uh, That's cancer the way the baby. Bible works. Jerusalem yep. exists, therefore the Bible is true. I don't know if you know this, Paul, but documents mm -hmm. are either 100% true or 100% false. That is, that is I have, I have learned this. It is my understanding, yes. So if, so you, if you can verify can... any fact of a document, that That's means right. that every fact of the document is true. You can prove any fact of a document false. All of it. Garbage. Throw it out. Nonsense. It's a... That was one, probably one of the great innovations in, in the world of history. And, you know... Yeah. When I, yeah. When I was taking history classes at university, that was like the... Definitely. Yeah. You know, uh, that was like not, not like 101, but 110. Right. History 110. They're like, oh, so, so by the way, just so you know... All of these things we're looking at are either 100% true or 100% false. So, yeah. So if you're reading an account of the Battle of Agincourt, it's, uh, you know, if you can if you can prove any part of it, well, sure. fuck, you know, this guy's everything's true. It's all true. I think it's weird they the haven't native. got that in the law. <laughs> you know, courtroom testimony. They mm. check every fact. That's right. It's pedantic. I assume it's so the lawyers can pad their... Oh, probably. Probably. You know, whole system's corrupt, man. American people that I was uh, worth. Oh, did we? I, I don't know if we read the, read the super chat. From we me. did miss super chat from me. Yeah. Mel never questioned why Basque clothes were lead. Because mm. they're dental assistants. <laughs> That's right. Why are you Famous. all standing behind that, that, that line, that perimeter chalk that you've complained? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. You go ahead and enjoy the warmth of that metal. That metal. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Oppenheimer, Paul? Yep. That was a good movie, eh? Yeah, it was a good movie. I really liked it. I really liked it, too. That, that particular thing. This is kind I've of like a party sort of atmosphere. I've not seen there. You know, we were drinking what they like to drink and, you know, and eating the good bass food and all of that. And, every, it was, you know, it was, a good, it was a good experience there to kind of uh, decompress from all of this and so uh, uh, but he could not relate to me any experience like what we had except he knew he, he almost expected what it was that I was telling him you know, he, I mean he just totally firmly completely believed what it was that I was telling him and he, it, there was no surprise to him at all in, in this thing here. I got this, like, you know, really old bass guy there, and he's he's just taking all this in stride and nodding, and, you know, you know. So he knows there's... What if yep. he's just, like, humoring a crazy person? <laughs> I mean, I'm just... I don't think that's the case. But, like, I've had some... You know, conversations at like, say, for example, downtown bus stops, mm. where I'm just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yep, absolutely, yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my bus. I got to get on it right now. That's Good right. luck with the gremlins. <laughs> you know, yep. That I definitely see along with you. I definitely yeah. see those. Yep. Mm -hmm. I hope you get that. You know, Procter and Gamble chip out of your brain sometime soon. Yeah. We got a couple Jay, super chats, Paul. We, got, we do. We got Jay Victor. Jay Victor. Fun fact. Basque is an isolate language, not related to any other known language. Well, there we go. A little entomology fact for you there. I did not. This is news to me. Etymology, not entomology. Etymology. Yeah. yeah. And Timothy Harmon. Timothy Rex. Harmon. What if some parts of a document are true and some false? Well, Except, Timothy, that does that's impossible. I would so, love for you to show me an example of that because as far yeah. as I know, it's never happened. Scholars have have demonstrated that is it literally impossible. Mm -hmm. So, you know. 
just you know we don't want to out you here but clearly you're not a yeah it's it's a little i was gonna say it's a little embarrassing frankly that you would yeah. say such a thing like that but yeah it's okay you've been a long time supporter of the show so we're not gonna we love you if kip davis was still you. here he would he would be telling you that like historical yeah. documents are either 100 who is the name of the yahoo on your jonathan channel McClatchy? Who was this, dr was dr name? jonathan mcclatchy Dr. Mm -hmm. Jonathan McClatchy, mm -hmm. one of your YouTube channels I've actually watched, where I was just increasingly <laughs> fascinated and horrified. I believe you sent me a link, and you're like, you have to watch this mm. video. Um, And you're like, yeah. And I was like, as I kept watching, I'm just like, no. Like, this guy, he was like that dumbass in the ball cap, wasn't he? And yep. just like, That's correct. This, I'm like, this, he can't. He can't be doubling down on this. It's like he is. He is a hundred percent just yep. doubling down on this completely unsupportable, just the stupidest. Did you know that that? Uh, Why would you pick this hill to die on? This is the stupidest thing in the world. Sometimes the grass is green, so uh, Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I'm like. You know, I feel what you know, whatever. I mm -hmm. guess I feel like you can make at least a cogent argument <laughs> for creationism or whatever without picking this weird, historical yeah. <laughs> table, everything that every any literally any sane human would be like, yep. what? But what if people <laughs> lie sometimes about something like it's literally something everybody has experienced in their life. Anybody who has ever talked to a four-year-old right. will tell you that they will be tell you something that is half true and half it's like, yes, I brushed my teeth and put my toys away. It's like I can see your toys on the floor. I watched you brush your teeth. That part's true. Mm -hmm. All of your toys are still here. This clearly is not. You're just bald faced lying to me. When we're, both of us are looking at your toys on the floor right now, <laughs> we're both in the room with your toys on the floor, and you're looking me straight in the eye with a dead pan face, telling me you put your toys away. Anybody who has dealt with children has experienced what I am describing right now, or even coworkers, or even coworkers, <laughs> or any human being yeah. ever, because yeah. that's who we are, you know, for better or for worse, love it or hate it. That's human nature. We'll just. And sometimes we believe it. Humans oh, sure. are the best at being like, this is probably what happened to me. <laughs> right? <It's> like, <laughs> but you you rewind the videotape and look and be like, nah, you just got drunk and you just you just fell down. No dudes jumped the bar and there was that's all that happened there. And you bruised your face. Anyways, that Anyways. guy is a super good scholar, and that was an excellent video, and you should watch Paul's main channel. Uh, Timothy Harmon. Oh, Timothy wrote, I am embarrassed. Yeah, Timothy, you should be. I'm embarrassed for not realizing the... Uh, yeah, not realizing the insightful uh, history. Yeah. That, that was a... And by the way, that was a, a gentleman with a PhD in biology teaching us all about how to do history, so that was cool, too. Yes, yeah. 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 Off we go. Which also a, a field famously uh, where we figured great. everything out in That's like nineteen twenty and just have never mm -hmm. corrected it since. We got it, nailed it. And we, we see everything it. that's there. Yeah. Normity there, and uh, my my goal is to to go back. I am I have agreed uh, to work with the people I was working with 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 the with the herbs and 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 uh, uh, live amongst them and spend some time with. Uh, the, the tribal members and uh, and and some time with the Basque and 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 spend it and are you going to do anything else with the hole itself with with the one in Nevada yes well I'm at this point I don't know what we're going to do you know I come back I'm I'm you know I'm I'm overjoyed that I'm cancer free uh, I felt I felt so good after that experience that I knew something happened to my body so I uh, was glad to get back and and have it confirmed that the doctor said yes uh, but I, I do plan to go back. I do plan to study it. I, I, I hope to be a better human being. 
uh, about this and not send innocent animals into it or, or, or what have you. I, that, that to me, I guess I... Oh, Mel, I, I none of the animals are innocent. I believe that I allowed that to happen, but uh, I did. That's what they want you to do. That's what they want you to do. Well, I appreciate your telling the story straight out this way. Uh, that's the only way to do it. That's the, the only way to do it. And, 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 and you, you know, I, you, you know, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not selling a book. Obviously. I, 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 I don't have a newsletter. Right. There are no Mel's Hole t-shirts, Mel's Hole. Not that you produced uh, anyone. Wow. I think there are now. Nothing that I have done. There, there are no Mel's Hole diaper pails or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, I mean, to me. <laughs> Mel's Hole diaper pail. Who thought that one up? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you know, they will commercialize everything in the world. And, yeah, and I true. have no part of this. This has been it just an extraordinary ride for me, okay? It has been like nothing I could have ever imagined in anyone's life. To go where I've been, to be where I was, to go up, to go down, to be or, in the presence of such... like something you definitely could have imagined <laughs> and are imagining right now while you spin your lies, you liar. Although, in a way, like I, I actually have my own argument for... Like people say, how do you know that there are other minds in the universe? Like, so, you know, sometimes you get down your deep philosophical whatever rabbit holes. Uh, and I feel like a good evidence that there are other minds in the universe beyond my own. Right. Is like complex music. For okay. example, it's kind of like I have tried to write good music. Yeah. I've tried my hardest and can't. Mm. But yet I can hear other good music exists. So I just feel like that's pretty good evidence for me that other minds exist and are doing stuff. That's fair. Yeah. That it's like there, there's things that are happening that are beyond your ken, as the Scots would say. Yeah. But it's like... Yep. Yeah. Or is that just... Your mind is fractured, and there's parts that can well, do this. So that's not. Yeah, so it's not foolproof, right? It's not. But I'm just. Yeah. I just say it's pretty good. It's not. It's not definitive proof, but it's like pretty good evidence. But Occam's razor. Yeah. 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 Because. Because I have tried. You know, I'm not. I'm not good at writing music. Yeah. Nor I. Yeah. Nor I. Poetry also. I. I do not have the the the, the gift mm. of poetry. I'm much much better at prose. Let me, uh, my, my super chatty thing is broken. Super there chat from Sonic Shroom. There you go, Paul. Read that one. Or I, I can. Mel's whole fleshlights. Yep. Yep. That would have been a. That would have been a natural. Yep. There you go. A little merch for your store, buddy. Make some money. <laughs> but, you know, I don't want Mel coming. We have to find out what happens to him in part five, whether he's going to be, you know, is he out there trying to Web, see? I don't think this... I am just... Okay, so I want to make it very clear. I'm not suggesting this isn't true. Mm. In the interest of scholarly discussion, I'm just presenting other viewpoints. The show is other... more interesting with a devil's advocate. Exactly. Playing devil's advocate. That's yeah. all I'm doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, like you need every serial killer needs a defense attorney. I'm just here. You know, we all know this. This is true. This all really happened. That Mel had cancer, and this tumor seal baby yeah. looked at him and farted <laughs> ozone, and he's cured. And he cured his cancer. That's right. He cured his cancer. This is this is something that happened. <laughs> but I'm just getting ahead. This is what we call in in the biz controlling spin, controlling narrative, mm. right? Like I'm getting ahead of the story. I'm presenting out there the alternative so that we can dissect it and get a part of it before somebody else gets a chance to present it as incontrovertible fact. But, you know, so don't for a second think that I don't believe every single word that Mel is saying as gospel truth. Because it is. This is this is and, a man. You know, yes. to, to clasp it. Give him in your my hole. hand, he put something in my hand when we were leave, when he was well, leaving. I went I went too far. I would try to move it ahead a little bit just because I want to get to the punchline. Right, right. At this point, 
and, and I just have a little bit of what I have that happened in my Nevada experience left, but I, I know we're running out of time. So I'm going to be going back probably mid-March, mid-February, mid-March, somewhere in that timeline, and then I'm going to go up there for a period of time. I'll probably give you uh, uh, another contact when I get back to some sort of civilization, probably from Nevada, but I probably will get in touch with you again. Okay. Uh, by all means, Mel, please try and see if they will allow you, I mean, without identifying the area, just to get some kind just of... want like a photo? Some kind of photographic evidence, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm going to be afraid that people are going to be scouring that terror server now that I get that out there. Well, they probably will. Uh, I want to. I want to. I want to I, I bring the, the final thing because we were talking about the uh, uh, the, the, the Basque elder that I was talking to, and it was a very profound experience for me to talk with him. And uh, though he was not that much older than me, I felt that he was a great deal older than me. Wiser. Beyond beyond that, so I know uh, I can respect that. But we were. Sitting, you know, there and talking well into the night, drinking that good Basque uh, drink that they like to drink and all that good stuff. Yeah. And he got tired. He was going to retire for the night. And he took my hand, you know, to, to clasp it. And in my hand, he put something in my hand when we were leave, when he was leaving. Yes. And he closed my hand. Yes. And he just told me, put that away. So he said, put that away. So I just, I, you know, put it in my pocket and sat around talking with his family. And uh, someone said, aren't you going to look at what, you know, the great, great grandfather gave you? Uh-huh. And I said, oh, okay. And so I take, take it out of my pocket, and the 1943 Roosevelt dime. They told me he had found a similar packet of Roosevelt dimes. Oh, my God. Up there in Nevada, Chinese red envelope. And they said, that, and I said to him, I said, you know how valuable this thing is? I said, you, you know what this would sell at a, a coin auction? They said, no, you have to have it. You need to have this. Do you have it now? I have it. I'm, it's in my hand as we speak. How about a photograph of that, Mel? If I can scan a 1943 dime, yeah. you will have it. Uh, or you got somebody who's got a really good quality a of digital it. camera, go to the macro uh, setting and take a very close photograph close, of close it. Up. But can you do that? I will do everything I can to do that. I, you, know I my, you know my email address, right? Uh, yes, we, we, we can do that. And... Uh, but that's what he left me with. And he said to me that it was Wait, very, alert. very... You don't, we don't get to see a photo of the 1943 Roosevelt die. <laughs> Maria Fort, or they told me, because they re finished the rest of it, told me this is something I had to have. Now, I hadn't told them anything. In fact, outside the fellow in Ellensburg, no one else knew about the, the dimes and, and the, the red envelope. <laughs> But he found oh, oh, one out there, and he had it for years. I think he had it since the 40s, to be honest with you, late 1943. You know, Mel, all I can tell you is we are out of time. This oh. was one hell of a story. I, I'm, I'm drenched. Uh, I, you know, I can tell. I can hear it in your voice. Uh, Mel, thank you for being here tonight. Thanks for catching us up on what was and what is. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, take care, my friend, and I really mean take care. I will. Good night. Good night, Art. Oh my! He's the worst storyteller. <laughs> yes. So, well, so he thought he was so freaking clever. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna spend twelve minutes up the top of the story talking about my stupid, <coughs> talking about my buckles and my dimes. Yeah. Because if he just started the thing with, you know what, Art? I just want you to know that, like a few months ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. I'm gonna update you later, but you know, that's just I just want you to know that. And yeah. then you bring it around to the, and the and the seal cured my cancer. Then you got boom. That is the great ending to the story that makes sense. You bookended it. But no, I'm going to tack on unrelated dimes. Yeah, yeah. And un, but I'm going to bring it all around. I no, I didn't waste your time talking about the dimes. Boom. Almost like that was clearly the thing that he came into the show. Right. Exactly. Devil's advocate, don't believe this. Came into the show with like I got this dime fact to bookend it, start yep. in the end. Yep. But Art's not really into this. So we're gonna go with this. So we're gonna make up, you know, the tumor seal baby. Yep. Also it cured my cancer. <laughs> Anyways, this other guy also had this 1943 Rosemont. <laughs>
Go back to the wait. Go back to the part about how your cancer's cured. No, no, no. I want to get to the dimes. Uh, this, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, so that was Mel's whole part four. That was Mel's whole part. So four. I don't think any of us expected when we first had it was just it was at first Dave it was just a hole. It just had, a hole. It actually in the first episode, as I recall, actually had no uh, the. It had the resurrected dog, so that's I guess that's a big deal. The black uh -huh. light part hadn't happened. Like, a lot of the stuff hadn't happened in that first episode. In the very first episode, no. Yeah. So I feel like I'm apt in saying this is the... Uh, this is similar to the Fast Fast and the Furious, where it starts... Oh, you're absolutely a, right. It's it's a grounded right. story. And now... Where by the first, the first Fast and Furious, people are like, they're just kind of stealing cars and going <laughs> and by the ad... Yeah. Vin Diesel is literally catching flying cars with his hands. They, they go to them space on the ground. in one of them. I hear. I haven't seen it. Not yet. even the last one. Like it gets. That's the <laughs> second last one. They go to space yeah. in a car, yeah. uh, and yeah. it gets crazier from that. Like that's not mm. the most crazy thing. That's yeah. just yeah. Anyway, so there's one more Mel's hole. Mel's hole five. There's only one more. It's going to be the end of an era. Yeah. So we'll we'll hold off on that one. But we wanted to. Our special anniversary night. We wanted to share that with you. So I hope everyone yeah. enjoyed. Um, Dave, are we wrapping yeah. this one up with a joke? Oh, we better. Do you have a Do you have a shorter joke than the four hours we've just been that we just did? Okay. Mm -hmm. I I'll be honest with you. I had a longer joke kind of prepped because it's our anniversary and it's been a while since I've done a long joke. I see. But because we've gone almost four and a half hours. Yep. I will, out of consideration for you, Thank my you. dear friend, my bosom brother, yep, brother from another mother, Paul. Yes, Steve. What does the sixth sense have in common with Titanic? What does the sixth sense? Yeah, have in famous M Night Shyamalan Titanic. movie. Titanic. Uh, I don't know, Dave. What does the sixth sense? I see dead people. <laughs> you like that? I do like, like that. that. That's yeah. pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Uh, oh, my goodness. All right. Well, Yes, Dave. Well, I've had. I'm looking at my count here. I've had seven beers and yeah, yeah, we're, and three ounces good. of bourbon. Mm. It's probably time to go to bed. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on this year, and I, I, I'm hoping we have a whole. We have many years to come. Yes, but uh, well, we appreciate well, we we appreciate you in the chat. We while Dave and I enjoy hanging out together, mm -hmm. it is much more special that it is hanging yes. out with all of you. You are awesomeness amplifiers. Being here amplifies the awesomeness. And you, and uh, yeah, you elevate and you add humor and all the things. So we appreciate like a you so much, group, right? Exponentially. Exactly. All right. All right. So thank you so much. Try not to get blown away, friend. I will do my best. Okay. Later. Good night. And that's the end of our show. And now's where I wait to watch me give my signal so that I know when to end the stream. Boop, boop.